I'll go right into that brown color I made from the brown was made from the sap green and a lizard and crimson. See, think about the basic shape of the old barn. Got to have a place for the cow to go at night. He may get scared out here. Might be an old hoot owl out here that makes noises. And scary. Oh, shoot, when I was a kid, I used to camp out in the, late at night and the old owl would make a big old noise. I was ready to call my mother and go home. But as I got older, I had the opportunity to learn what, what those creatures were and why those noises were made. I tell you what, before the series is over, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a big old owl. I like owls. I'm going to show you a great horned owl that I had the pleasure of meeting. I think we have some video with him on there. I'm just going to get him up here for you. Take a little bright red, a little of that brown we made, a little bit of white into it. Don't overmix it. See that color? It's not overmixed. Now, when we cut our little roll of paint off, all those little designs are still in the paint. Now we can go up here, doop, doop, and just begin putting some color in. I'm going to make that a little bit brighter, a little more white into it so it shows up for you. That's better. Now I'm just going to let the knife sort of bounce. I don't want this just to be solid. I like old buildings in my paintings, but it's up to you. If you want them to look newer, be a little more careful with them. I like it to look like about half of it's blowed away and it's about to fall down. The old farmer that lived out here, he didn't, he didn't take too good a care of it. He, he had some bad days there. See there? Now over here, almost nothing. Almost nothing. Tell you what, we'll get a little more of that brown. This farmer is like me, he needs more room. Let's give him a shed out here. There. Give him a little shed. Put some sides on it. Back to our little roof color. See how easy it is? Wished it was that easy to actually build a shed. I, I used to be a carpenter years ago. My father was a carpenter, and he, and he taught me that trade. And I tell you what, it isn't that easy to make a shed on, on a barn. Now then, we can come right in here and just do a barnectomy. Sort of figure out where we think everything should live. Work on our perspective. See there? Now we need a door. We're going to have old cow living in there. We need a door. There it is. Now bossy can get in and go out. We can take and make just the indication of a few old boards that live right along here. There, just by touching. Come across a little bit of light color on the knife. I sort of outline that door a little bit so it stands out. You can see it better. But that's a pretty good looking old raggedy barn out there. We need a we need a little path. We'll take a little of that brown and white. Let's just put a little path in here. There. A little path so, so there's a way to get in and out. Just a little path. Comes right out. A little highlight on it. Not much. Not much. I'm going to keep it pretty dark. Now maybe in our world, shoot, if we got a cow here, we need to con contain her somehow. There. We'll put a little fence right up here. Maybe the fence goes right about there. Maybe it comes right up here. I don't know. Okay. If our... Light's coming from this direction, and the old barn indicates it is. We'll highlight a little bit on that side of the fence. See there? Just a little highlight. Now you can take just the heel or the back of the knife and just cut right through there, either direction, and make the indication of some wire on there. It'll scratch through and just let a little canvas show. We'll put three strands of wire on our fence. We got a big cow in here, we don't want her getting out. Sometimes it's neat to take a little bit of, I use a little bright red, put just a little top on those little devils. Because normally when you cut fence post, when you cut the tree down to make a fence post, you paint the ends of it to keep it from deteriorating. There, so we outline. We'll take a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Now we can begin blocking it in. There, there's a nice roof, and maybe it comes over to about there. There we are. All we're doing is blocking in color. You don't have to worry at this point. Don't 
have to even be concerned with it. A little bit on this side. Don't want him to be left out. There we are. Now then, I'm going to take a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of bright red, touch of white in there. Just make a sort of a dirty red color, and we'll come right down here. And just put the indication of an old roof here. There it is. Now then, let's take, let's take, we'll use a little dark sienna, some white, some yellow ochre in it. It's always a, it's always a tendency to say yellow okra, but okra is what you eat in your soup, so I won't say that. Now leave this color marbled like this with all different things, and we just take off a little roll of paint. We don't need much. Now then, let's begin grabbing this. Just, let's just put in, and I'm pushing very firmly, very firmly, allowing all those little background colors to mix in with it too. Straight down, straight down. Now on the other side, I'm going to take that same color and add a little more of the titanium white to it. I want it to be a little lighter, but the same basic color. All right, once again, our little roll of paint. Let's go right out here. And we'll just lay in something like this. I'm mashing very hard once again, allowing it to mix with those colors that are underneath. Very hard, getting mean with it, tough with it. There, we'll wipe the knife. Keep right on rubbing. There we go. Very nice. You get all those effects just automatically. Make this a nice straight edge down this side. Pull it right down, zoom. This edge here to be a little bit lighter so it stands apart. And we'll come right down. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take a color that's a little bit darker and very, very little of it, almost none. And let's go up here and I'm just going to touch and let the knife just sort of bounce around just at random. You might even find the small knife works better for getting in these areas. Just sort of let it bounce around. See, so it just gives an indication of some little distant things that are happening. We're not looking for a lot of detail here. There. But it'll give that impression that, shoot, maybe it's even made out of old stones all put together. But just let it bounce. There. Okay. See how that, it really, really helps create that image, that illusion. And painting is nothing but illusions. All right, grab the small knife. Let's go up here. I'll take dark sienna, dark sienna, dark sienna, and white. I want it quite dark. Our little roll of paint, once again. Maybe right in here, we got a little window. Soup, like that. Shoot, maybe there's another one over here. I don't know. Wherever you want them. Take a little dark paint. Outline that a little bit, not a lot, just enough to give an indication. There. Now we got dark paint on there, some nice dark Van Dyke Brown. Maybe we'll put a little door. There he is. Okay. And we can come back with a lighter color. And we just sort of outline that door so it stands out good. There we are. Now then, doubt. I just want to show you how. What you put in there is your business. All right, brown. Just plain old Van Dyke brown. A little, little dark sienna in it sometime. I sort of mix them up all the time, so you get a variation. But don't over mix them. Leave them, even though you can't see it, it's so dark. Leave them sort of marbled. Then we go back with a little white and some highlight colors, dark sienna, white, and brown. Van Dyke Brown. When you go back and it picks that up, it'll be marbled. It just won't be one old dull color. See there? Just barely touched. Just like, just like you were putting snow on the mountain. That's all you're doing. Okay, on the side over here, 
Add a little more brown. I want it darker over here. So just barely can see there's anything happening there. Much darker. There. I think we need a door. Today I'm going to put a door right there. Take a little touch of the brown. Put some indications like that in there. Just to make it look like an old cabin living out here. We need a roof or this poor man is going to freeze to death. We'll give him a roof for his cabin. Like that. There we go. Just put it right on there. Over here we need a little bit. Lives right out there. Something like that. All right. Got a little too much white right there, so I just lift it off. See, then we put that right back. Once again, we don't make mistakes. Anything that happens here, we can live with it. We can make it work. Okay. Okay. Tell you what. Let's build. Let's build a little building or two back here, and maybe I'm gonna start with a little bit of Van Dyke brown. A little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Cut a little bit out with a knife. And let's decide where our first building will be. Maybe we'll have several little buildings right here and go with the roof. We'll put the roof up. Zoop. That easy. Give it another side to the roof. Zoop. And all we'll do is fill in the color first. All I'm doing is just putting in some brown. Then we'll come back and highlight. Need the dark in order to show light. And maybe, maybe, maybe there's a taller building right here. We just sort of lay in some basic shapes right now for where we're going to have the buildings. We're really not worried about what they're going to look like. We're just laying in our brown color. And then we can play with it. Okay. Now, let's put some things up here on the roof. I'll take some brown, some white. Mix your color up. Now I'm going to take a, just pull across and get a small roll of paint on the knife. There you can see it very well. Just a small roll of paint right on the edge. Okay. Now we can come right here and we can begin adding some highlights. Now there's numerous ways you can put this on to make all kinds of effects. You can just sort of let it bounce along like this. Just let it tap, touch, and bounce along, make it look old. Maybe we'll make it look old. I like old buildings. And a little bit of highlight right there, a little light striking. A little bit going off in that direction. Okay, now we, from the bushes, it looks like a light's coming from the left. So let's take and make the left side a little brighter. I'll take some, some burn umber and put a small amount of permanent red into it. Burn number with a little permanent red, a little bit of white. Okay, get a little roll of paint. Let's go right up here and very lightly just pull it down just to give the impression. Now to that same color, I'll mix up some Van Dyke Brown. It's the same color, only I'm using brown to make it darker. Same color with brown in it. It's much darker. Now I'll put that, since the light's coming from here, this side needs to be brighter. So right here, I'll use a different color that's darker. Just like so. And that sort of separates them. Okay, now you gotta make some decisions. Are there windows in this building? If there are, I'll just use the small edge of the knife and we'll just put some little indications. Now you can put whatever you want in here. This could be a barn or a house or just want to show you how you can make all these little buildings. We'll just take the point of the knife and sort of outline these little windows, make them stand out. Okay, let's do the next one. And we'll do the roof. Come right on down through that one. See there? We don't care. Just Cut off what you don't want. There. Okay. 
Okay. Now I'll take a lighter color. And once again, highlight the edge so it stands out. A little bit right there. Maybe just a touch down there. Okay. Now. Now we can put a side here. That easy. And then our darker color. We can put a front on it. Shoot, who knows? Maybe. Maybe there's a big door right there. Big door. We don't know. I don't even know for sure what kind of buildings these are. I think they're just cute. Maybe we can show some planks. Just cut right through the paint. There we go. Trim up the edges like we want them. And maybe, let's get crazy. Maybe whoever built this was having a good day. A good day and he Maybe he put another little building that comes out this way. Okay, there's a roof on it. We'll use a small edge of the knife, and put the other side on. Okay, a little higher in the front. There we are. Good. Other side of the building. A little bit of highlight. Make that stand out. And I'm using the small edge of the knife. So often we avoid it, and it's, it's just like the big one, only it's small. It does super things. Use it. Okay, now we need to put some dark right here, like that. And a little bit of the lighter color in the front. There. Now, we just got buildings <laughs> everywhere. All righty. Well, I got this dark color on here. Let's put some land in here. We need a little bit of land. Right along, there it is. We have to make decisions where it is, where it goes. And this is your world, so you have to make these big decisions. Okay. Some over in here. I'm gonna use a little bit of the magic white. Pull it out very flat, cut across it. And let's go up here and just drop in some little water lines. Just here and there. There we go. There. And you're just absolutely cutting into the canvas. Just act like you're trying to cut a hole in it. Canvas is tough. Don't worry about it. You know, they, they make tents out of it. It's strong. Chances are you're not going to cut a hole in it. You'd really have to, whew, you'd have to get violent to cut a hole in it. I don't want to be around if you're doing that. There we go. Okay. We got some buildings and some. Now then, I can finish up my water lines and we'll have this side finished. Just here and there, drop in a little happy water line. Okay, we can take a clean point of the knife, scrape in a few little trunks here and there, wherever we want them. Make some. Or you can use your liner brush if you'd like and draw them in using different colors. I'm lazy, I just, I just take the point of the knife and drop a few in. Looks good. Okay, I'll take some white. Let's put a roof on there. Need a roof. Now here's a little trick, so you can come down that edge, get all your lines nice and straight, and then when you pull this down, then you'll have a beautiful straight edge. Sneaky, huh? There we go. Now we need a little bit of snow on the other side of the roof over here, just like that. Get into some Van Dyke Brown. There we are. See there, we're putting in, all we're doing is blocking in some color. There, just blocking it in. Now we'll take some dark sienna, some white. Very gently, very gently. Just pull straight down. Make us some nice boards there. Add a little Van Dyke brown to that and darken it down a little more. There. Now we can 
just whack off the bottom, get it the way we want it. You know what? Maybe, I'll tell you what. Let's go right up in here. Excuse my arm just a second. Hope you can see that. I'm gonna put some little things like that. Then we go right up here on the top, a little, little bit of white. Maybe we'll just take and turn this into a little church that lives out here. Put a little steeple right up there. And it's all covered with snow. Boy, it's really cold out here. There, the snow laying all up around there. Now, maybe, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Maybe they're getting ready for a service and they've turned, they've turned the lights on here. They've got the lights burning in the windows. So let's just scrape out the indication of some happy little windows. I'm going to take a little bit of cad yellow. Just put in the indication of a little light coming through those windows. There. People are going to be arriving pretty soon. Cold day. Cold day. Mm. Okay. Mm. Take some Van Dyke Brown, and we'll do this back eave back here. Pull it straight across. Straight across. See? Like so. Now we need, now we need, let's put some paint in here. And all we're doing is just laying in the base color, the under color. We'll come back later and highlight it and put shape in. Right now, we're just, just laying in base color. If you like buildings, in our third series, we devoted nearly the whole series to showing you how to make all kinds of beautiful little buildings. So I think you'll enjoy it. There, now we put the other side of the roof on and straighten it up wherever you want it. And if it gets too long somewhere, you can take your knife and cut it off, or you have unlimited power on this canvas. See? If you want a chalet, then we'll just zoop, cut it off. Now then we need, I'll tell you what, let's take a little permanent red, a little Van Dyke Brown, mix it together. Permanent red, Van Dyke Brown. And I'll use a small edge of the knife. And let's put a, I'll tell you what, let's put a few little shingles on this. Maybe they come right here. Touch, just lift upward. Touch. And lift. To start at the bottom, we'll work up. And it's just a super easy little way to make all kinds of little shingles. Come right on up like that. Let them go wherever you want them, wherever. And I'm going to take a little brown and white. A little brown and white. And we'll put there. Just pull it down. Let that paint break. No pressure. No pressure, no pressure at all, barely touch. And I'll go back with some straight Van Dyke Brown. We'll lay in some shadows, see? How you can just play this back and forth and create all kind of illusions. And we need a, we need a little door in here so you can have a way to get into your house. Just pull it across with Van Dyke Brown. Take a little bit of color and go around the door. Maybe, maybe, maybe in this little chalet, maybe there's a window that lives right there. There, just Van Dyke Brown. Maybe there's one up top here and one there. And we can take a little color and go around these. There, see how easy that is? And maybe there's boards. If you want the illusion of boards, just take the point of the knife and cut right down through the paint and it'll make it look like this house is made out of little boards. Okay, a little bit of white, and we'll put a little there. Boy, that'll make it stand out so you can see it good. And there's our little chalet, all finished. Some Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of dark sienna, and let's go right up here and begin blocking that in. All we're doing is just filling in color here. We're just putting in some dark background color. We could really care less. We're not committed yet. 
We can still change our mind. We can do anything that we want to do here. See? Now, need some sides on this. Maybe this will be an old barn. Whatever you want it to be. Whatever you want it to be. Just make a decision. Put it in. Over here. Zoom. Got to make those little noises or it doesn't work. Let's have a red roof on there. We'll take some bright red, a little touch of dark sienna, so it's not real bright. It can get so bright it hurts your eyes. <laughs> Cut off a little roll of paint right out on the edge of the knife. There it is. Now, just take and touch. Just sort of let it bounce. Bloop, 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 bloop. Right down top of that old building. See there? Just sort of let it bounce. Now, if you want your building to be newer, you can just pull it. I want this one to be sort of rough and ragged. And it's had a hard life. Maybe on the other side. You can see the least little touch of red over there. Now then, let's take, we'll use some yellow ochre, dark sienna, grab some titanium white, pull it out very flat. And once again, we cut across and get our little roll of paint. Now then, let's come right down here, touch, no pressure at all, no pressure. Just let the knife glide on there. Just let it glide. It'll slide right down there, and it makes it makes the impression of very old wood. Put a little dark right there on the shadow up underneath these eaves. There we go. Mm, that easy. Boy, I wish it was that easy to really build a house. Let's put a let's put a door in there. If this is going to be a barn, we need a big door. And. The color that I used on the front, I'm going to use the same color, only I've added some Van Dyke brown to darken it because I want this side to be much darker. There. Now, if it doesn't stand out enough, take a little bit of the light color and just come right back in there where they come together. See? And you can, that way it'll separate it. Mm. Well, that's a mean looking old building. A little bit of brown on the knife. You can go in here, put the indication, a few boards. Doop, 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 doop. Now we can come back. There, straighten the old door out. We can come back and do a barnectomy. We're just going to whack him off on the bottom here and get him like we want him. So I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white on the knife and just sort of outline this door a little bit so it stands out good. There we go. Now, now then, take Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna in it, just mix them together. Pull the paint out very flat. Get a small roll of paint right out on the edge of the blade. Okay. Now then, let's go right in here. Zoom. Got to make those little noises. All we're doing here is just blocking in color. There we go. Just block it in. Like so. Now then, let's take some red and some little yellow ochre and grab some white. We want this to really stay marbled. Get our little roll of paint. Okay, now then, let's just go right along here. Just barely touch. Just let it bounce across. We're gonna make all kinds of beautiful little things happen here. Just all kinds of things. Right out here in this edge. A little brighter. There. Look at that. Mm. Now, on the other side, on the other side, this will be a little darker. Not as much light's gonna hit here. But the same basic thing, just let it tap. I want this to look old and there we go. There we go. Maybe, tell you what, let's put some snow up here on the roof. And we're just gonna let this snow bounce along like it's old snow up here. So it's thick. It's thick. Now just gently pull right across that. It'll look like you can look through it. Make some very nice effects. Very thick, though. Sometimes we paint very thin, other times very, very thick. Maybe this old cabin, yeah, let's have a little shed right here. What the heck? A little bit of brown, just like we did the other one. Some of our nice highlight colors, tap those in. Darker over here. 
Okay, a little white up here. Just like so. Okay, now we can come in here and we just do our old cabinectomy. And this is where you get your perspective right. Just bring everything together, get all that color off the canvas. Go into the, yeah, let's go into the Van Dyke Brown Dark Sienna mixed together. Put a little crimson in there too, just now then decide. There he is. See? I'm putting the dark in first because I'm going to have snow on his roof. So just decide basically where the roof line is. This is both browns with a little crimson in it. Not much, just a little crimson. Just want to warm the brown up even more. There. I don't want this painting to be too cold. Had to put your coat on to look at it. Something like that. All we're looking for is a very basic little shape. All right. Tell you what, let's get crazy. <laughs> let's make, let's turn our little house into a log cabin. You want to do that? Okay, we'll put some little doers across this way for the top. There. I lived in Alaska for a long time. They're some of the most gorgeous log cabins there I've ever seen in my life. You wouldn't think they were log cabins. They look like castles made out of logs. Whew. Beautiful, beautiful. And Anchorage is a couple that you have to see to believe. Now, here, we're going to have logs going the other way. And all we'll do is first put in a little light area. Don't worry about it. There, see? Pay attention to the angle. That's probably the most important thing. Because we're looking at what's called a three-quarter view of the cabin. We see both the front and the side. So you have to play with angles. They're important here. There. Now the other side maybe is not as much light, so I'll add some brown to it. And we'll put the indication of a few little things over here, too. There. Something about like that. That's all we need. That'll give us what we're looking for. Maybe, tell you what, let's get crazy. Let me get the small knife. That one's too big. Maybe we'll have a window. I always do cabins early in my paintings where the, there's nobody home. So let's put the indication maybe somebody's home. Take a little of that yellow, cad yellow, a little white. And we'll just put some light in the window here. Of course, maybe the lights are on and nobody's home. There. I've been accused of having that disease myself. But that's okay. Artists are expected to be a little different. And I take full advantage of it. There. All right, we'll just put some little window panes in there. That easy. That easy. We need, we need a roof. Because right now, right now, this old fellow is probably getting cold. Now, one of the easiest ways here is to sort of outline it. See, and then you come down. Just come right on down. Once again, the angles are very important. Very important. There. All right. All right, I think we're in business there. Now we need a little snow on the other side to show that it's deep. It's very deep. Now you can make it very smooth. I like to leave it rough sometime because snow begins to decay on you. There. Tell you what. You don't get crazy? Let's do it. Maybe, maybe this little carpenter that built this was industrious and maybe he put a porch on it. So we pull out a little of that color just to get rid of that brown. Then we'll come back in here, a little white. Got to put a little snow out here on the porch too. If it's snowing on the roof, it's snowing on the porch. Something like that. There, let me just wipe the knife off. Take a little brown, Let's put about the same basic thing out here. Need a little place to set the rocking chair. All right, let's put a, just a few little posts to hold the roof up, something like that. Take a little color, just come along the edge here, just sort of clean the edge up, bring it all together. 
Shoot, we do a cabinectomy here to get our angles right. We're coming along pretty good. And the old knife. One more thing I'll put in here. Take a little bit of brown. Maybe in our world there lives, maybe there's what remains of an old fence right here. Something about like it. And we need a rail that goes across the old fence. And here comes another one. About like that. We can take a, let me wipe the knife. We can take a little bit of white and just go right above it. So it looks like there's some snow laying on the fence too. There, see there? There it is. There it is. You can do that. Maybe a little snow up here on the top of that post too. All right. Van Dyke Brown. Just a little Van Dyke Brown. Pull it out very flat. Our little roll of paint, as we always have. And let's go right up in here and we'll make the back eave of the house first. Just bloop, like that. Now we're going to mix Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna together. And zoop. There. If you don't make those little noises, so it won't work. <laughs> there we go. And over here, we'll put just a little bit right in there. Like that. Just a tiny little bit. And let me clean off the old knife. Maybe there's a little snow up here on our roof. Just pull it like that. Just like that. See there? That's all there is to it. And we can put a little bit over here on the other side. There. Just a little roof. Now put a little bit of dark right underneath here. If we're going to have a little, a little shed out here, we need a little dark to show the division in there. Looks like I got a little bit of brown in that roof. That's the only thing worse than yellow snow. <laughs> All right. I'll just go right over the top of it, and we'll take that right out. See there? We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Now then, if we're going to have a little shed, certainly there will be a little bit of snow on its roof, too. Back to our brown, and we can just fill that in. All we're doing right now is just blocking in a little bit of color. That's all we're trying to do. Now I'm going to take a touch of yellow ochre, a little dark sienna. We just sort of mix them together, about like that. We don't want to over mix them. I'm going to cut across, and once again, our little roll of paint. And it might be better here to use the small knife. Just touch and barely let it graze. That's all. In fact, let me grab the small knife. It'll sneak in these little places so much better. Like that. Now, I'm going to darken that color. It's the same color, just darker. And put a little bit over there. And back to our Van Dyke Brown. And let's just make the indication of some old boards in here. Just by touching a little bit of brown to that. Makes it look very old and very weathered. You know, like me. There. Then we come back with our knife. Decide where everything is. And we just do what I call a cabinectomy. And you can work out your perspective and bring it all together that easy. There. Now, let's take, I get a lot of letters that say I've never put chimneys on my little cabin. So let's put a little chimney right there. You can just use a small edge of the knife and a little brown and giving him a little chimney. I don't want him to freeze to death either. We locked him in there. Least we can do is give him a chimney. <laughs> there. We'll take a little titanium white and just touch it and let it slide. Just let it break right across there. Just let it slide. See there? Not much though. Just a little. And let it break. But it's important to break. I just want it to look like little things laying back in there. Take a little brown, make the back edge, zoop, zoop, like so, come straight down, gives us a front, we'll just use that same blue, white color, put a little highlight on there, there, 
Just a little highlight. Okay, little door. Got to have a place to get around. Zoop. There. And that's super simple little cabin. Maybe there's maybe there's a light on the window. Zoop. Little yellow. The cad yellow. Put a little window in there. Zoop. Little one over here. Zoop. Now there's somebody at home. Somebody's at home. Maybe they got dinner cooking. We don't know. Okay, a little bit of titanium white. Put a little snow on the roof. A little bit on the other side. And that just gives us a very simple little cabin we back here. Okay, that'll give us enough paint removal so we can get this to stick. And we'll put in a little Van Dyke brown first of all. Then we can begin just putting in the front of this barn. Maybe this is old farmers like me. He's not he's not too good at keeping keeping things up. Not not real keen on that maintenance stuff. <laughs> I let mine sort of get behind. I don't have a barn, but I let my maintenance get behind. There. And then we take a little bit of dark sienna, a little titanium white, mix it together, and leave it marble. Cut off our little roll of paint. Then we can go right up here. No pressure. Just allow that to just sort of graze it. Just allow it to graze it. Slide right down like that. Now, I'm going to use some white with some of the blue and black in it and very carefully come down chew. Get. Mm. And just begin putting in the basic shape for our roof. Over and down. Then over on this side, of course we have to have a little snow showing over there. There we go. Just like so, maybe, tell you what, shoot, while we got that going, let's get crazy. Maybe there's a little shed out here. Hmm. So all you have to do is just come right in there, put in a little white, go back to our brown, come underneath. See how you can add on to buildings? It's that easy. That easy. You can do anything on this canvas. And I can, any old thing. And just get a little bit of paint, cut across, get that little roll of paint right out on the edge of the knife. There you go. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe our little house lives. Shoot, right, right there, right there. We'll do the back eave. There we are. And let's do, let's do the front of the house. Zoop, zoop. There we go. straighten out this edge. Now there's numerous ways to make houses. This is just one. And maybe, maybe in your world, there isn't a house back here. And I just want to show you also how to make a little house in the woods if, if you want one. You may not want a house in your painting. And this is a beautiful painting without a house. So if there's no house in your world, don't put one in your painting. Maybe he's like me, he ran out of room. We'll have to give him a shed. I like to make little sheds on the houses, little storage areas, or maybe it's where his chicken lives. You know, chickens need a house too. We'll put a little shed right there. And bring it down. Okay. Okay. Now then let's let's do some play. I'll take some white, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, a little burn umber into it. White, Van Dyke brown, a little burn umber. There, just mix it up. And this we're not going to mix too much. We want this to be marbly, and we'll just cut across it. Okay? Now, here we go. Barely, barely touching. Barely touching. Oh, just barely touch. Let it just gently, gently, gently slide across there. You want that paint to break. Make it look old. Now we'll take the same color and add a little more white to it. Because we said our light was coming from the left, so the front of the cabin would be a little bit brighter than the side. Same color with white added to it. 
See, now that stands out better. It's the same color, just a different value. And maybe out here there's a, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna add a small amount of blue to that to cast it into a little shadow. Just a little bit right in here. Once a little bit of color on that. That's gonna end up being a little shed. Okay, maybe, maybe, tell you what, maybe there's some little shingles. We'll take some permanent red, a little Van Dyke brown. Let's put a few little shingles here, or just indications of shingles. Da 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 da. Drop them in, drop them in. Just come right across, do it in layers. So the, the top is covered by the bottom of the one above it. Just like when you put real shingles on. That's all there is to it. Now we need, let's put a little highlight just so it separates this. Just a little bit of highlight right down the edge. Isn't that a cute little cabin out there in the woods? I need a door, gotta have a door. Can't get in our cabin, the door lives right there. And around the door, we need a little bit of light so the door stands out. on there. That'll make it stand out. Oh yeah, that's much better against that dark canvas. Just a little indication. Maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe there's, maybe there's a couple of windows over here. There's one. There's one. Looks like two big eyes looking at you. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and put there and make it look maybe like it's a little light shining across some glass in the window. Maybe there's a little glass out here. A little Straightening up. Give them a little highlight around the window so it stands out. If you want boards, all you gotta do is cut through this. And make it look just like little boards. Your cabin, so you do whatever you want. Okay, now we need now we need a little path. Let's get up to this cabin. So I'll go back into the brown and the burn umber, just sort of mix together. And 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 here, right there comes a little path, and this little path just, yeah, just wanders wherever you want it. Let it wander, let it play. Van Dyke Brown, burn number. And let it get darker, darker, darker. We don't care where it goes. Now we can take a little brown and white and barely, barely touch. Got a few little indications. Looks like looks like there's a little blue in it too. A little thalo blue. It's brown, white, little thalo blue. Barely touch. Darker, darker over here. Okay. Oh, maybe we'll do a maybe there's a small building back here. And we'll start with some Van Dyke brown. A little roll of paint on the knife. And let's go right up here. Maybe there's a maybe there's a happy little building right here. A little shed or something. We'll put it in first and and we'll come back and do a big old barn. One of my best friends was telling me about a saying they have here in Indiana. They talk about the barn built the house, and I didn't understand that at first. And you can look at the size of the house and the barn and see how, how well the, the old farmer is doing. If he's doing real well, and he's got a big barn and big house. Now we need some, put a front on that old building. Just, this is just Van Dyke Brown. And all you're doing is just, just laying in base color right now. You could really care less. This is strictly, strictly just base color. And then we'll come back and begin adding detail. Okay, now then, we gotta make some big decisions. Some big decisions. Take Van Dyke Brown, and we'll put some permanent red into it like so, and just blend that together. Now, cut across it, and let's go right up here, and we'll just put, this is old wood. I like old wood. Very rarely do I paint new buildings. I like old buildings. Now, this is where you begin making all those decisions and bringing all this together. You also have to decide where's your light coming from. 
Where is your light coming from in your world? Maybe today we'll have it coming from the left, so the front of the buildings will be lit. So I'm going to take the same color, add a little white to it, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. So now we've got Van Dyke Brown, a little yellow ochre, a little white, and a little permanent red. Let's go back up here. Now, touch very lightly, very lightly. Oh, very lightly, just barely caressing the canvas. And that's enough. That's enough. Now I'm going to take some blue and Prussian. Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown. Mix those together. Make a very dark color. Should look black. And right under this eave here, I want a little bit of dark. And under this eave, a little dark. And you just barely lay this on, too, like so. Then I'll just take a clean knife and touch that and lightly pull down. And it creates a shadow under these overhangs. That easy. Okay. Now we need some need some roof up here. I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown, permanent red. Let's go right up here. And we'll just start over in that eve. And maybe come over on this eve. Just, some, just sort of outline it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All I'm going to do here is just sort of touch, let the paint. Just let the paint be pulled off onto the canvas. Canvas will pull off what it wants, give you back what's left. There we go. Old, old roof. There's shingles missing and shingles broke. Looks like me, it's had a hard life. There, okay. Now we need a, we need a door in this building. There we go, just come across. Maybe it's like that. This is just the dark color. We don't care what color it is, as long as it's dark. Maybe, maybe this building was, maybe it was made out of boards. So I'll just take a small amount of white, cut across it, and we'll put some indication of some little boards here and there. This is your building, so you have to make these decisions. And just a few little indications over here. I don't want too many over here. Just like so. And a little bit around the door where the light's striking, make it stand out. Yeah, that simple. We got a happy little building. Now then, I'm gonna mix up Van Dyke Brown, permanent red, and Prussian blue. And we'll just mix them all together here. And we're gonna use quite a bit of this, so I'll mix up a pretty good sized pile. There we go. Just like that. And I wipe my knife here on just, just paper towels or clean rag, whatever you have here in Indiana. Seal barns, and they have, I don't really know what they are, but they have sticks or poles that sort of project up. Maybe there's one in right there. This is where they hook their antenna so they can pick up our show. <laughs> A little bit of highlight. Now, we said the light was coming from the left, so it'll be on that side. There we go. And that's just a little brown and white. And we'll put the least little bit right there, like that. What color do we want the roof? Let's use some brown and some white. We'll put a little bit of blue into that. And we'll lighten that down into a couple of values. There we go. Very nice. Go up here. Let's start up here on the roof. Now, when you're doing buildings, when you're looking at a three-quarter view, and it's a three-quarter view if you can see the front and the side of the building. That's a three-quarter view. One of the big things to remember, the back of this building has to be a little tiny bit lower than the front. That's so, so important, so important, and it's one of the easiest things to overlook. Try to remember that. People will look at your painting and they might not understand what's wrong, but they'll say something's wrong with that painting. And they may not understand what, but their mind will tell them something's wrong with it. And that's usually all it is, is that little angle. And it's such a simple little thing that we, we have a tendency to overlook it sometimes. 
Okay. Now, right here, it, it bends. It's a big old bend in the roof, and it comes down like that. Just like it go down. Angles are very, very important. There we go. Just like so. Okay, now then. Let's pick up some of this brown that we made. This is Van Dyke brown, permanent red, a little Prussian blue. And let's begin putting in some overhangs. Barns need overhangs too. There. See, that's so, that's so the cow has a place to stand when it's raining so he won't get wet. There we go. Bring us right on down. And here, once again, all we're doing now is just Laying in dark color. You need the dark in order for the light to show. You need the dark. Painting is a great deal like life. You need a little dark in your life so that you know when the good stuff happens. There. And we've all had that, and we'll all continue to have it. That's what makes it all worthwhile. And the very fact that you're aware of it is enough reason to be overjoyed that, you, that you're alive and can experience it. Just think if you were a stone, you'd never get to enjoy anything. This, we're so fortunate. There, well, we're building us a fantastic barn here. Big old barn. Now we need to put some highlights on this barn. Permanent red, permanent red, and right into some Van Dyke brown. We'll make this a nice reddish color brown. Wanna, we'll do a red looking barn here. Touch, very lightly, very lightly. Caress the canvas, caress it. There we go, just caress it. Okay, now over here, this side's gonna be darker, so we can use the same color and add more brown to it. Brown is your duller. It makes, it makes colors much duller. Okay, now then, touch, and just pull down. Let the paint break. Just let it break. Look at that, it looks like old wood already and you haven't already done a thing. It's unbelievable what you can do. Now then, just like in the other one, we need some shadows. So I'll use a little bit of this dark, that was Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown. Just like so. Just lay it on first. So it mix up a little more. Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown. And right into this overhang here. We need that dark, it sort of sets everything off. It makes it look so much better. Now, clean my knife, touch. Just pull it down a little bit. Don't wanna kill it all. There. Now maybe, 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 maybe there's right across here. We'll touch again with a dark color, and I'm gonna grab that and pull down. Just pull straight down. So it looks like there's a division there. Now we'll go right into a little bit of light color, and we'll put some happy little boards right in there. And all I'm doing is just cutting right through a little bit of color on the knife just to give an indication of some old barn boards. If you can find an old barn in your neighborhood that the farmer didn't want anymore, these old boards make some of the most beautiful, beautiful picture frames you've ever seen. Try it. And they're easy to make. Okay, now we need, we need a place up here so that the old farmer could pull his hay up and put it up in there. Okay, and have a big door. This is just blue and brown, just a dark color. Big door, big door. And then around the edge of the door, a little bit of light strikes. Makes that door stand out. We'll put a little bit right around here too, just to make it stand out a little. Okay, we'll have 
some little indication of some boards here. Don't want it to be left out. There we go. Just drop them in. There. Now, if this doesn't stand apart enough, take a little dark color, because there needs to be a division between the front and the side. Take a little dark color and put in there. There. And that'll help separate it. Just like so. Okay. I think we're ready to play a little more now. Okay, now we can put our fence in. There it comes, maybe here. And let's play some games today. Maybe this fence goes up there and then over. I'm just doing this so you can see how you make a fence move all around. Da -da 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 -da. Be brave, be brave. Drop them in, drop them in. Maybe it comes right down like that. Okay, let's put one more little one right there so it goes right on out of sight. Now we need to highlight these. So I'll take some white and a little bit of light brown. And all I'm going to do is just, just touch, just touch, so you have a little, little bit of highlight on these posts. Do, 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 do. There we are. Now we need some rails. So we'll just use the same old brown color. And all I'm going to do is just touch. And this old farmer, he's like me. He just picked up whatever happened to be laying around, and he made him a fence out of it. Now here, we want it to go uphill. See? Loop. Bloop. See how you can bend fences right around your painting? And fences help add a lot of depth and a lot of perspective to your painting. Use them. And they're fun, they're easy. And, of course, we're not interested in those happy bucks. But if you ever want to sell a painting, fence adds a lot of interest. Okay, maybe, maybe, I'll tell you what, maybe there was a little fence right over here. So just a quick little indication like that. And in here, I'm just going to rub. Let's let that color rub so it looks like a little path. And we're just, we're just mixing all the colors on the canvas. Maybe, 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 maybe this was where the horsey lived right here. And so the fence comes right on up. And you just let your fence go wherever you want it to go. But as it gets closer to you, it needs to get bigger and these posts need to get a little bit farther apart and just let them get closer and bigger and stronger. That's where this old knife is so fantastic. It really makes beautiful, beautiful fences. Okay, a little highlight on these fences. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I'm just using a little brown and white, touch of blue in it. Just barely, barely touching. And don't want to cover up all the dark. Just a little. Now, while I've got that color on the knife, I'm going to add the tiniest little bit of highlight here and there on these little rails. And you could also, also make these rails using your liner brush. That'd work. Tell you what, a little top on those. I'm just using a little touch of permanent red here. Do, 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 do. There we go. Now we're back to our brown, and we'll put some rails coming right up through here. Touch, touch. There they go. Just, as I say, this old farmer, he just used whatever he could find laying around, limbs and sticks and trees that fell down in his backyard. You use what nature gives you, and nature gives you everything you need. See there, there it comes. And when you're at home, maybe you want three rails on your fence, or four, or, or maybe half of them's fell off. You have to make these decisions. And that's what makes it fun. It's because it's your world. You create what you want. Now then, a little highlight up here on these rails. But you can see how this little fence adds a lot of depth to the painting changes your whole perspective and it's really a lot of fun gives you a lot of practice with this almighty knife so for that let's take some van dyke brown pull it out very flat and we take the old knife cut across so we have a little roll of paint right out on the edge of the knife there you can see it good 
Now maybe our little cabin, maybe it lives, maybe it lives right there. We'll paint the back eave first, just like so. Paint the other side of the roof. Zoom. There we are. See how easy that is? Now if you don't make those little noises, though, it, it won't work for you. Got to make those little noises. Doop. There we are. One right down here. And one right along here. Now that is a nice way of blocking in your basic shape for your little cabin. And you're not committed yet. You could still change that little rascal any way that you want to. Maybe it's got a roof on it. That's a use of brown and white, a little bit of black in there. We'll make sort of a dirty gray color. Just leave your color marble like that. We don't want to over mix it. Once again, our little roll of paint. It's most important how you load this knife. Now then, just touch and get nervous here. Let it go boop, 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 boop. See there? And it makes beautiful little shapes on your house. And you can just let it just bounce right along through there. It looks like little shingles you can see far off in there. Maybe a little bit out here on the other side. You can see a little touch there. Now they don't get the small knife. That small knife is fantastic for sneaking into little places. We'll take some dark sienna, a little white, mix them together, but not over mix them. Maybe we'll put a touch of Van Dyke brown there too. Oh, I like that. That's nice. See, you got beautiful colors happening right there. And when you pick up that little roll of paint, those same colors are right there in that roll of paint. Now then, touch and just pull it down. Barely, barely grazing. Barely grazing. Look at that. See? And that's simple. You can paint the front of your little house, your little cabin. Now for the side over here, not as much light will hit that. So we'll add some more Van Dyke Brown. We'll make it darker. Cut off a roll of paint. Same way. And, 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 loop right there. We'll put a little bit on the side. See there? You can do that. It's easy. We make painting easy. We show you how to do it. The only thing you have to add is imagination. There we are. Make it look like there's some little boards in there. Okay. Now we need a door. Let's put a door. We'll take straight Van Dyke brown. Maybe this little door right there. Just come across with some brown. See? You can make your door as big or as small as you want it. Okay, take a little touch of the white. That'll just sort of highlight the edges of it so you can see it. There, right around like so. Shoot, maybe there's a little window in there. Who knows? We'll take a little blue, little touch of blue. Least little touch of white in it. Little, we use a small edge of the knife. And maybe, bloop, there. That's enough to give the indication that there's a little window in there. Sometimes, maybe, we just want to make this edge stand out a little. So I'll add a little light color right along this edge so it'll stand out there. And you can see it better. And let's take some Van Dyke Brown. And we'll do this back eave back here. There. Just drop that right in. While I have that on there, zip. we'll go ahead and put in the front. Boy, I sure wish houses were this easy to build. Son of a gun. My father was a carpenter, contractor, did carpenter work. And I spent half my life learning how to, how to work with wood. There we go. And I can tell you that houses aren't this easy to build, for real. Okay? Now, I want a nice straight edge back here, so just take a little of the white and lay in your basic line there. And then when you come down, you'll have a beautiful straight line without any problem. That's sneaky, huh? There we go. Okay, now, the other side of this little house would have some snow laying over there. Drop that in. Okay, we'll use that color we made the tree out of. That was a nice color. I'm gonna add some more yellow ochre to it. So it's dark sienna, yellow ochre. Put a little cad yellow into it too, what the heck. Don't overmix, leave it sort of marbled and cut off a little roll of paint. 
I'll go back up here and maybe just touch and give a little sidewards pull. Just give it a little pull. There. Okay. There, touch. Give a little pull. Add a little titanium white. I want to brighten that up so it shows a little better. In your world, you make it any way you want it. There we go. I want this to look like old boards. Now on the side over here, I'm going to add a lot of Van Dyke brown to that. Because over here, it should be much darker. Not as much light's going to strike. Now we can do a cabinectomy. Decide where you want this cabin to live. Just take your knife and cut it off. This is the way you clean up your cabin, work on your perspective, get everything together. Grab the little knife. A little touch of brown will put a window right there. Zoop, that easy. Hope you can see that. There's a little window there. I tell you what, maybe over here there's a little shed. We'll just scratch out a little area for the top. Come back in here. Put a little snow out there. Like that. Come right back with some brown. And we can just lay in the front of the shed. There's the side. Take a little bit of our color. Lay in a few little happy boards here. This is just a tiny shed. And we'll cut it off here in just a second. See there? Now decide where you want it. And do a, as I said earlier, you just do a cabinectomy. There. And let's put a door right there. That easy. Now we have a little door. Take a little paint, go around the door so it stands out. And we're in business. Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. Today, let's do something a little bit different. Today, I'm gonna start with a canvas that's just, it's dry, it doesn't have any magic white on it. So, I'll have them graphically run all the colors across your screen that you need to do this painting, and let's get started. I'm gonna start today with a two and a half inch brush. I'm gonna put a little paint thinner on it and go right into some burnt umber. Very thin paint and just a small, small amount. And I'm just gonna put a little wash up here on the canvas. This is just burn umber. And just wash the canvas. Just applying a small, small amount of color. Okay. There we are. Now I'm really scrubbing that paint into the fabric. Okay, take a tiny bit more of the thinner, and I'm gonna go right, right into a little bit of phthalo blue. Didn't clean the brush. Didn't clean the brush. Takes very little of this blue. It's a very strong color. And we'll just throw a little happy wash up here. And by wash, I mean a paint is so thin it's it's almost like water. This will dry in just a couple of minutes. It'll dry even faster here in the studio because we have all the, the lights on the canvas at home. You might want to give it a few minutes to dry a little bit so it's not so runny. But, very thin, very light. Okay. And that gives us a little background color. That easy. There we go. All right. Let's lay the brush down, and today, let's have some fun with a knife. I'm gonna go right in here and get some titanium white. And let's, let's just start playing like, maybe there's some little cloud shapes that just sort of float around in the sky up here. And this old knife will do fantastic things. Fantastic things, but you gotta turn it loose and let it go. Gotta let it go. Be, be brave with it. See, now it's picking up that color underneath. And you can make all kinds of beautiful little cloud effects just using the knife, just using the knife. Maybe it goes right on off the canvas there. This is your sky, so you, you put things where you want them. Let them happen. Let them happen. And when you're painting with a knife, normally you probably use a little more paint than you normally do because it's, it's thicker on the canvas. It has texture when it's dry. It makes a beautiful, beautiful effect, though. Now, just clean that knife off. And we can just rub this a little bit. 
and it picks up the undercolor and just blends the bottom of these clouds right in. All the beautiful blues and browns that we've got there. And there we go. See how easy you can make a, a sky just, just using a knife. You don't have to have all them big fancy brushes. All you need is a nice, nice knife, a little practice, and have some fun. Now, maybe, maybe in, under this beautiful little sky here, maybe there's a happy little mountain. I'll take some Van Dyke Brown. And I'll take some Prussian Blue, good strong dark blue. A little bit of alizarin crimson. Just mix them together here. Put a little white in there. Okay, so we got blue, brown, a little crimson, and a small amount of white. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There it is. I knew there was a big old mountain lived up here somewhere. You just have to sort of find him, decide where he's at, and drop him in. That's all there is to it. And when these paintings are, are dry, they look, they look a great deal like traditional paintings, where you would take washes and glazes and all those good things. And these paintings will give you that feeling. Okay, now we'll just rub that right in like that. Just rub it. Because we want this mountain to be a little bit lighter down toward the horizon. So we'll rub it, let it pick up that color that's underneath. Any excess paint you can just scrape off. All you're looking for is that dark, dark value in the canvas. There we go. Got some little bumps and things in there. All righty, now we put some, let's put some highlights on this mountain. Let's take, I'll tell you what, take some white, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Just a very, very small amount. We don't want to set this mountain on fire. I just want to warm it up a little bit. And it's also a little easier for you to see at home. And maybe there's a, maybe there's a little light that plays right down through here. Just let it strike the canvas. Just like so, wherever you think light would strike. Let it play and have fun. Okay, a little bit, yep, right there. There it is. There it is. A little bit right there. Just let all these things happen. Let them flow right out of your mind. They're there. They're there. Come right down. Down, down to some of this color and let it pick up. Blend together. Okay, now I'm going to take some white, a little bit of Prussian blue mixed into it. And we'll make a little shadow type color. And we'll go in here and just here and there we'll put some indications of a few shadows. I don't want to cover up all that dark. Just here and there. A few little shadowy things happening. I want this painting to be very soft and very quiet when it's done. Okay, maybe there's a little light strikes right out here on that peak. It's your mountain. You let light strike wherever you want it. And that's where we want it, right there. There we go. A little shadow right in there. Shadow. Just, just let those little shadows just play and fall in there. Okay, clean the knife again. There we go. See, just blend that together so it makes it look nice and misty. See how easy you can just bring that together. I'm really pushing quite hard here. I want to blend that so that it's misty. Okay, tell you what, let's have a, let's we'll have a happy little foothill back here. And for that, I'll use a little brown, a little sap green. Let's put some white in it. So we got some brown, some sap green, some white. And I'm going to put to into that, we'll just put a little bit of this blue. Just a little blue. Maybe this is thalo blue. There, that's about what I'm looking for. Okay, 
Let's go right up here. <clears throat> Maybe there's a happy little foothill that lives right here. And first we'll just, still just using the knife. We'll just use a knife today and show you what can be done. See there? Just drop in. Just a little indication of a little foothill back here. And then you want it to be very soft at the bottom. That you need that little misty area. That's your separator. That separates everything. Now I'm gonna just keep using that same color. Maybe I'll add a small amount of blue to it. Make it a little bit more into the blue issue. Let's go right over here. Maybe there's a, yep, there is. I see it. It's another little bit that comes right down. And this is a little darker, it's a little closer to you, so it stands out a little more. See, I'm just pushing this up here and there to make it look like little trees, far, far away. And as things get closer to you, you want, you want to have more and more detail in them. Add a little white so I can create some mist down here at the bottom. And as things get closer, you begin making out color. You can see, you can see all kinds of little colors as things get closer. So if you wanted to begin showing the least, least little amount of color, I'll add a tiniest little bit of cad yellow here and there. Tiniest, tiniest little bit. Just want to put an indication here and there. Don't want to overdo. Just a little. It's too far away yet. Don't want a lot of detail in it. Still too far away. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Shoot. I'm going to add a little more brown to that. Same color, a little brown. See, and you just keep making these colors darker as you come closer. And maybe, there it is. There it is. Come up that little hill. See, and you can make as many of these little hills as you want. Just decide how many hills are in your world. And drop them in, drop them in. You can do anything. Kinds of depth in the painting using nothing but a little knife. Still same old color. A lot of rubbing. That rubbing makes it very smooth. It'll, when this is done, it'll look almost like it was done with a brush. It'll be so smooth. I hope. I hope. That's what we're shooting for anyway. And it takes a lot of this blending and rubbing. And you can spend hours and hours on these. They're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's a good painting to do when you're not in a hurry and you just, just want to have some fun. A little more color right in there. Now, I want to lighten this a little, so I'll add a small amount of white and blend it. put a little bit of blue, a little thalo blue into my yellow ochre. Makes a nice green, but it's not so bright and shiny, it's a dull green. Let's go back up here. And maybe you're beginning to make out detail in here. Little, little things are starting to happen. And you can vary these colors. If it's not bright enough, you can add a little yellow. Make it as bright or as dull as you want it. Just let these colors play through there. Here and there. And this is an excellent painting to do to, if you have a lot of paint left on your palette, because you can just use any old color that you have and put all these things together and just make beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paintings. And it, <laughs> you really make friends with your knife. You'll get to know that thing just like an extension of your hand. And that's when the fun really starts. 
Okay, maybe let me go back and get a little Prussian blue, a little Van Dyke brown, put a little white into it, a little sap green. Yeah, it's more brown there. Now then. Now then, let's go up to the canvas, maybe right in here. Maybe there'll be some water. So we need some, we need a little bit of dark into here to show a reflection. So we just rub some dark in here. Just rub it in. Some over here. I don't want to kill totally all of that, but most of it. Let a little bit of that thin area show through. There. Okay, that'll give us some dark. And onto that, we can add light. So I'll take some white and a little bit of a alizarin crimson. We'll get pretty here. There we go, just a nice pinkish glow. And let's go right up in here and just lay a little of that here and there. Just let it play and have fun. All these little colors just happen. Let's go over here. Pushing very hard right there, very hard. Now, I'm gonna go into some white and a little bit of, let's go into some phthalo blue. White, phthalo blue. Cut across, let's go up here. Now we can begin just laying some little watery looks right on there, just come across. Now these little lines that you're putting in, they need to be straight. If they're not straight, it's not gonna look like water. Really need to be straight. There. Just keep going back and forth. Keep them straight. Can't say that enough. We can just play this back and forth. And pick up color, let little things happen. See? Touch, come across, and bring all this together very lightly. Very, very lightly. There. That probably sounds loud, but remember this canvas is dry. This is a dry canvas. Normally we're working with a canvas that's wet, and so you don't hear all that. The, the knife would just glide across there. And I've got a little Van Dyke brown, a little burnt umber mixed here. And we'll just put some little areas right here to make it look like where the land comes down into the water. And I'm just touching the canvas. Just touching. This just sort of separates everything. Maybe a few little happy bushes right along in here. Some of the different yellows. Okay. Clean the old knife off. Maybe, maybe. Take some blue and some brown. A little sap green. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, right in here. Maybe there's a little peninsula that comes out here. So we just lay in a basic shape. Very dark. Very dark. There. Maybe 
Scoopy. Maybe. Right underneath, there's a little color in the water. And some of that dark underneath. Create the illusion of a reflection. You need a reflection in there to set it down into the water. And take some little blue and some white. Just let that go across and that easy, that easy, gives it the impression of water. Let me just pile up a lot of, this is just all the dark colors that are laying around my palette. Let me just pick them up. Maybe there's a, right here, there it is. There's a happy little tree that lives right there. We just, little evergreen, let's just start right up here. There he goes. Just work it back and forth. See there? See there? The evergreens are fun to make with this. And maybe, maybe, maybe there's another little tree that lives here. It's a good way to close in this corner. We'll just make it a little tree. And it's also a good way to use up any, any old paint you got left on your palette. There, we'll just come right around like that. What the heck? Let's bring this right on around. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. And it's just Van Dyke brown and a little Prussian blue, lizard crimson, just all your dark colors. Let's just, just throw all your dark colors in here. Sap green. Here we're just trying to fill up the rest of the canvas with nice dark color. And these paintings are they're really a joy to do. They're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. As I say, these are the type of paintings I like to spend hours and hours and hours on. These are mood paintings. If you're in a good mood, oh, you can paint some of the most beautiful, delicate things. If you're in a bad mood, if you just had an argument or somebody kicked you, these are ones you can really take out your hostilities on. Strong, strong paintings. And we've used nothing, nothing but a knife. Except we used that two and a half inch brush just to put on some wash to give it some undercolor. And some of that color is, is playing through this. You still can see it. So you have areas that are very thick with paint, areas that are very thin. It makes a beautiful, beautiful composition. Maybe, now I got a small amount of white. So I'm gonna just take a little white and just begin rubbing it in here. See, let all these little things just happen. Just let them happen. We'll get some sap green and rub a little green in there. A little green, a little brown, a little white. Just play these colors back and forth, back and forth. I want to keep this very, very dark in front. Maybe our light's coming from the right. Maybe right here on this tree, there's a little light striking out here on these leaves. I don't want a bunch of color. I want to keep it dark. Just, just mess. So there's a little highlight, a little highlight. A little light, maybe it's striking right here. Hmm, isn't that something? Maybe there's a little land coming down. Whatever, whatever. Put a little highlight here and there. You don't want too much. Okay, okay. All kinds of little grassy things happening. You just see little touches here and there. Don't really see a lot happening. Okay, let's go over here. Maybe there's one that lives right there and comes right hang down. Yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cat yellow. Then I'm just mixing them all together on the knife and just letting them happen. Just whatever, whatever. Let the canvas do the work. little beautiful things. And this is such a fun painting. I really hope you try it. I really do. I think you'll be, you'll be very satisfied with it. You send me a letter and, and thank me for giving you this. And I'd like to hear from you. Don't get to answer all of them, but I I certainly, certainly do read every single letter it comes in.
everyone. Okay, see, play with color here. Don't let this get too light. I want this to stay very dark. So it helps create the illusion of distance. Let's go back to the other side over here and we'll put a few little happy things in here. Let them go. Just like so. See, and every so often clean your knife and you can just gently, gently bring all this together. Very light. If it's too bright for you, rub it. There's so much dark on the canvas, it'll pick it up and make all kinds of beautiful things happen. You can darken it just by rubbing it, blending it all together. As I say, this is a super, super painting to use up any paint that you have left on your palette. Super, super painting for that. It teaches you to love color and to play with it. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to go back and Clean up that edge a little bit. Make it look like maybe just a little water line here and there. Just here and there. And by golly, I think we just about got us a painting going. stick here it lives. You just take your knife. Sticks are easy to make with a knife. And you just drop in a happy little little twig. Don't want it too bright. I don't want it to stand up too much. I want it to be very quiet and subdued just back here hiding in the dark. There he goes. So it's like so. Give him a little arm. And the least least little touch of highlight so he stands out. This is just a light color. It looks like it has a little blue. And I'm really not looking for a specific color. This is just stuff that's left over on the palette. Okay? And we can just blend him in, let him go. And I think that'll give you a good idea of how you can do a painting using nothing but your almighty knife. So on behalf of all of you, you have to get a little crazy. Let's take a little bit of that white and get a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife there. Let's go up in here. And maybe we'll just make the indication just by doing this. That's all you have to do. Just like this. Just enough so that it separates. And we can begin putting little things like that. And if you do, if you just rub that very hard and keep it pretty level, when this is all done, it'll look like, well, watch, it'll look like there's a little, maybe a little river back here somewhere, but it's far away. We don't want a lot of detail in it. Far, far away. Just something like that. And we'll come along and we'll put something in the foreground. But maybe there's some little rapids back here that it's slowly running over. And it's just to give an indication too far away to have a lot of detail in it. All right. We don't know where it goes back here. Don't know that we even care. Doesn't matter in our world. Something about like that. Okay, sleeping on the dirt. So let's come right up in here and let's build us a little, maybe this little house there. We'll just scrape us out a basic shape. Something like so. I want it right in front of these trees. We'll take a little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna mixed together, and let's just paint us in a quick little house. This is just a happy little house up here on the hill. Like that. There. Gives us a nice roof. Gotta have a roof to keep the water out. There we go. Something like that. Now, when you do yours, maybe you want to have a house that's different. Maybe you don't want to have a house. Maybe you want to have a two-story house. You can do that. Anything that you want to do. Painting gives one almost total freedom, at least on this piece of canvas. A little brown and white. 
no pressure. Whew. I want this to be sort of an old raggedy house. There. As we mentioned earlier, doing stories and stuff. Maybe there's a trapper that lived here and he went down to the river one day to check his beaver trap. And maybe he fell in. Who knows? Now we could do a cabinectomy. In other words, just cut it off. Get it the way we want it. Better have a door in our cabin. It's easier to get in and out if you got a door. It's hard climbing through the window sometimes. There we go. Take a little dark color. Put the indication of a few boards and stuff on there if you want them. And you could have made a log, ca log cabin just as easy. Let's take a little red, a little white, a little dark sand in it. Let's see, maybe, yeah, why not? Maybe this got a little red roof on there. It's not in too good a shape either. Not in too good a shape. The little shingles about fell off. It's got some holes in it. Yeah, a few little highlights right up here on top where the sun's really zinging across the top. A few little duders down the side here. So it stands out. There. Then we can take the knife and work on our perspective here a little bit. See here? You can just cut it off wherever you want it. Just like so. And we need a roof on that cabin. So we'll take some of the titanium white. We'll use a knife. Let's go right up here and lay in a little snow-covered roof. That simple. Just let it work right down. And you could take, clean this edge up, make it nice and smooth. Let it overhang a little bit. Then grab it and pull. See how easy it is to make a happy little cabin? Put a little snow on this side, I can. Now the least, least little touch of the thalo blue, I want to make it look like there's an edge on here. A little blue over here. It's thalo blue with white. Tiniest, tiniest little amount. Alrighty, I'll tell you what let's do. Take the Van Dyke Brown, pull it out very flat, cut across and get just the smallest little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Now then, right along here, we'll just touch and make the indication of all kind of little boards, old weathered boards. There we go. Do -do 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 -do. See? And you can put as many boards in your cabin as you want. Put some out here. So, then we could take our liner brush, junk saver. So maybe he had to build him a little shed that lives right there. Here's the side, like so. Got to put a roof on his shed. Don't want him, don't want his shed to get full of snow. There, just a happy little roof. Touch some highlight out here. It's barely touching. And we need we need some boards on that too. Okay, then we once again can cut it off. Like that. Tell you what, let's do. Let's just put let's put in a window right here. There's one. And there's one. Looks like two big eyes. We'll take a little bit of cad yellow, and we'll just make the indication that maybe somebody's home and the lights are on. There. That easy. Let's build a little mountain. I'm going to take some Prussian blue and alizarin crimson. Proportionately, much more crimson than blue. Much more. The blue's many, many times stronger. Now, if you want to see what color you got, put a little white out there. See? That's very, very blue. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more crimson to that. There, I want it more into the lavender, the reddish lavender. All right, that looks better already. Okay, clean off my knife. Let's build us a little mountain. A little paint on the knife, just come right up in here and you have to make a decision. Where in your world does your mountain live? 
there he is. There he is. Maybe there's a bump here. See? I just let him go. Just look around and see what kind of mountains are in your area. And if you live in an area where there's no mountains, you certainly, certainly can leave the mountains out. And you still have a beautiful painting. I get letters from people sometimes and they say, oh, you do too many mountains. The next letter I open, say, you don't do enough mountains. So I really try to please the majority of people, but if you don't want a mountain in your world, then leave it out. The painting is still complete without a mountain. There we are. You know, every, every day I get letters from fantastic people all over the country who are doing some of the most beautiful paintings. And I love to see them. Every once in a while we put them on a board and we show them on TV. So if you have time, take a, take a photograph of the painting you're doing. Send it in. Let me, let me take a look-see at the kind of work that you're doing from watching the show. There. To see what you're doing, that really makes a lot of hard work worthwhile. It's great. It is fantastic. There, I'm going to take titanium white and put the least little touch of the bright red in it. Least little touch. Just want to give it a touch of a pinkish glow. Pull it out as flat as you can get it. Go straight down. Cut across and get that little roll of paint. Okay. Now then, let's take and just sparkle some color right over this little mountain. Look at that. Look at that. Let it go. There. See, by not overmixing your paint, you get those spots that are a little bit pinker. Some are a little whiter. People think you work forever trying to get that. And it's one of those happy accidents. You don't really have to do a thing except let it go. There. Maybe, maybe back here. Yep, you knew there was a little, little touch there. Take some white, a little thalo blue, mix it together. There. All right. Now then, we'll use that for our shadow color. Once again, pull it out very flat, cut across, and get our little roll of paint. Okay, put this shadow in. Soop. No pressure. No pressure. Look there. Just let it slide right down the mountain. No pressure. Barely caressing the canvas. See, we'll put some of the shadows in. Then we'll come back, pick up some more of the highlight color, and now we can begin putting in all kinds of little bumps and crevices and, you know, all those little things that make your mountain interesting. And wherever you want them. Look at that. You can put them wherever. If you, if you learn to do mountains, it'll teach you to use this knife. I don't know of any single thing that you can do that will do more to teach you control of the knife than making mountains. There. I'm using the little knife here because it sort of sneaks into those small areas much better. Put in a few shadows. Now, some people like to put the shadows in first and then the highlights. Some don't. Whichever way works for you, that's the right way. And that's all that counts. Okay, need a little shadow here, too. You were going to let me just sneak on by without putting one in, then I'd have been in trouble. To give it a touch of pink. There, okay, cut across it. Let's go right up here. Now then, let's put in a happy little water line back here. Just act like you're trying to literally cut a hole right through the canvas. little bit of a touch of pink just adds a little warmth to it just a little warmth to it if you want a little ripple go right out here there <laughs> if you want a little ripple when I was in the military I had a friend that had a lot of ripple so there we go we won't, we won't talk about that 
All right. Let's have some fun. Shoot, let's see here. We'll take some blue and some crimson. Gonna make a, a dark lavender color. Clean off the knife. Back to my liquid white. And we'll put a little bit of a water line and like a little snow laying out here in the water. Maybe this is winter. Make a nice warm winter scene. Tell you what, let's take some dark sienna, a little white in it. I'm just going to mix it a little, cut off our little roll of paint. And I'm going right up here and into these trees. I want to put the indication here and there of a little trunk. There. Just here and there, because you don't see the entire trunk. You have leaves and sticks and twigs that are in the foreground to cover up the trunk. Give it a little sideways pull. Make it look round. Okay, now then, let me get some blue and white. And we'll just add a few highlights on these trees, too. There we go. Just like so. See there? Just a few. I don't want to lose that darkness. That severe contrast is what really makes these little rascals stand out over here. Don't want him left out. We'll put some on this side. There we go. A little bit more. Right in there. All right. Now then, I'm going to take a one-inch brush, dip it into liquid white, get a little touch of the crimson, go right into titanium white, load a lot of color into the brush. Let's go up in here, and let's just put the indication of some happy little bushes here and there. There we are. Look at them sparkle. There. Work in layers. Always work in layers. Maybe down here. Ooh, look at those. Okay, a little touch more of the liquid white. If you have trouble making the paint stick, add a little more liquid white. It thins it and allows it to come off your brush. There's a very gentle pressure here. Very gentle. It's hard to believe, you know, with the completion of this series. There's, oh my gosh, we're getting 160, 70, 80 shows now. And if, if you haven't had the opportunity to see them all, and you'd like to, give your local station a call. Let them know what you'd like to see, because they're available to them. If they want them, we'll certainly get them to them. There. And there are some beautiful paintings that maybe you haven't seen yet. Take our knife. Just scrape in a few sticks and twigs here and there, mostly in the dark areas, though. There we are. Okay. Little touch of water line right along here. Look at that. And we have a finished painting. That's all there is to it. Hope you've been with you. Got an idea. Maybe back here. Let's just do this. Maybe there's a little cabin back here. See here? Watch how easy you can do this on these canvases. I just scrape out a basic shape and that removes that excess paint. Okay, now we'll take a little brown, make the back edge, zoop, zoop, like so. Come straight down. Gives us a front. We'll just use that same blue white color. A little highlight on there. Just a little highlight. Okay, little door. Got to have a place to get around. Zoop. There. And that's super simple little cabin. Maybe there's maybe there's a light on the window. Zoop. Little yellow. Little cad yellow. Put a little window in there. Zoop. Little one over here. Zoop. Now there's somebody at home. Somebody's at home. Maybe they got dinner cooking. We don't know. Okay, a little bit of titanium white. Put a little snow on the roof. A little bit on the other side. Tell you what, maybe this is a little old farm something that's setting out here. And maybe back in here, the old farmer has his, has his barn. Once again, I think I'll just scrape out a basic shape. 
like so. Bloop, boom. Very, very basic. Now this is much closer to you, so it's perspective-wise, it's going to look much bigger. Much, much bigger. Okay, that'll give us enough paint removal so we can get this to stick. And we'll put in a little Van Dyke brown first of all. Then we can begin just putting in the front of this barn. Maybe this is old farmers like me. He's not he's not too good at keeping keeping things up. Not not real keen on that maintenance stuff. <laughs> I let mine sort of get behind. I don't have a barn, but I let my maintenance get behind. There. And then we take a little bit of dark sienna, a little titanium white, mix it together, and leave it marble. Cut off our little roll of paint. Then we can go right up here. No pressure. Just allow that to just sort of graze it. Just allow it to graze it. Slide right down like that. Now, I'm going to use some white with some of the blue and black in it, and very carefully come down, chew, get, boom. And just begin putting in the basic shape for our roof. Over and down. Then over on this side, of course, we have to have a little snow showing over there. There we go. Just like so. Maybe, tell you what, shoot, while we got that going, let's get crazy. Maybe there's a little shed out here. Hmm. So all you have to do is just come right in there, put in a little white, go back to our brown, come underneath. See how you can add on to buildings? It's that easy. That easy. You can do anything on this canvas. And I can't. Any old thing. highlight color. And if you wanted to show a little indication over here, it'd be very little. It'd be too dark to show much of anything. Very, very dark. Very dark. Okay. Now we'll make it look like old boards. Just take a little dark sienna. Go like so. Create the illusion of boards. A little bit over here. And we need a door. You gotta have a place for the old cow to get in. Maybe the door is right there, like so. And we can just make out a little edge on that door. There we are. Outline it a little bit so it shows up. Shoot, we're in business now. We can come right along here, do a baronectomy, <laughs> cut it off wherever we want it. Okay, maybe the little house lives does now, right there. There it is. See? Paint that little back eave first. I'll tell you what. We'll put a front on him. A little front. Front on the other side. See, just sort of in your mind think, think what a house looks like. And he needs a little side over here, too. Boy. All right. Now then. Take a little white and a little brown. Pull it out very flat, get us a little roll of paint. And let's, let's put the least little touch of highlight on there. Barely touching, barely touching. Just caress the canvas. Okay, now. See, we can see that the light's coming from here. So this side's gonna be brighter, this one over here. This one's gonna be almost dark, almost pure brown. Don't worry about too much color over on that side. Boy, that <laughs> the guy that lives in there is freezing because there is no roof on his house. Let's give him a roof. Let's give him a roof. There we go. Just that easy. Now he's got a half a roof. Let's feel sorry for him and give him the other half. Don't want him to freeze. Okay, a little snow on the other side. Just sort of bring all that together. Isn't that easy? We got a little cabin. Need a door. Don't want him to get locked in there and can't get out all winter. There, you got a little door. Take a little white. Go around the edges. 
there and make that rascal stand out. I'm gonna take the small knife now. We'll put a little window right there, just a little blue and white, just to give the indication of a happy little window. Okay, we're on a chimney. We use a small edge of the small knife again. Put a little chimney. Take a little, tiniest little touch of the bright red. Excuse my arm there. Maybe he don't have his fireplace lit. A little snow laying up here on his chimney. There we go. That easy. Let's take, I'll use the old knife here. Let's just put a quick little indication here of a little tree trunk in there. Doop, doop, doop. Like that. A few little limbs here and there. A little brown and white. A little highlight. Just a tiny touch of highlight. You take just a pointed knife. Look at there. Scrape through and make all kinds of little doers in there. Little limbs and stems and twigs. It's just that easy. Okay. Now then, let's find. Let's find. Now then, I tell you what, let's use the knife. Maybe there's what remains. There is an old fence right here. There's a post. Put one there. Tell you what, three. Three looks better. A little bit of brown and white for some highlight. Doop, doop. There we go. Maybe there's still one old, one old post that's hanging across there. There. Now then, I'm gonna take the knife and a little bit of white, a little brown. Let's put a little touch of highlight on this tree. There, just barely touch. Give it a little pull. Just let the paint grab. This is a thick, thick paint. So it'll grab and hang on. There, maybe this one comes right down in front. I cut. See there? You can just make all the trees. One of those. Let's we'll start here with some Van Dyke Brown. Cut us off a little bit. There, see it's right out on the edge of that knife. There you can see it real good. Okay, let's go up here. Let's start with the back eave of that cabin. We'll give him a little back eave, like so. Now this may not be an exact duplicate of the painting that you see animated, because you can never go back and do a, a painting that's exact. But it'll show you how that painting was done. And you can do your own at home. See, need to sign. Now then, let me grab some white. This is just straight titanium white touch. And give him a happy little roof. Don't want him to freeze to death. Gotta give him a roof. There. And sometimes, you'll find it's easier to scrape out the basic shape. And it helps remove some of that loose paint that's underneath. Put a little snow on the other side right down there. Take a little bit of the dark sienna and some white. And let's put, let's put some highlights on these boards. Just some highlights. Mm. Makes it look like old, old wood. A little bit of brown. I'll give him a door. And we can take just the point of the knife and create the illusion of some old slabs here. This, this cabin's made with old boards. A little bit of blue and white. And we just put the indication of a little window right there. Doing right now is just looking for a very basic shape. Very basic shape. And we can take a little bit of the browns and white. This is dark sienna and white. And let's just put the indication of some nice little highlights here. Just here and there. Just here and there. Like so. Okay, well I got the old knife going here. A few little fences posts we had, I think, in that one. A little white. Like so. I'm gonna take the And we're gonna have some mountains today, we decided. So let's take some black, we'll use a little depression blue, some Van Dyke brown, lizard crimson, whatever. Good dark color with sort of a blue base to it. 
blue or lavender base. Pull it out very flat, cut across, get our little roll of paint. And let's come right up in here, maybe right there. Just make a decision where you think the old mountains would live in your world. Decide where the peaks are and all the valleys. It's what makes painting so much fun. Is you get to control your world. Boy, this is this is pure raw power here. When I go home, all I can do is, you know, the only power I have is over the garbage. I, that's mine. It waits for me, and I get to take it out. But on this canvas, I can do anything. I can move mountains, trees. I can even move rivers here. And so can you. I spent half my life in the military. And to, I would play soldier all day. Then at night, I would come home. And this painting was a way of fighting. Everybody sees nature through different eyes. And painting is a way of putting your expression on canvas. So enjoy it. Let's take some titanium white. Shoot, let's, let's have some good fun today. Pull it out flat, cut across, get our little roll of paint as usual. Now we can go up in here and let's begin laying in some little highlights. Let that knife just sort of bounce and wiggle and jiggle. Just have fun. Think where little things would live, where you want little peaks and valleys. You need a little home for the mountain goats. Choom. There. There's all kind of little creatures that live up in here. And just have a good time. Okay. See? There. But just let it flow. No pressure here. Absolutely no pressure. And in your mind, just think nothing's touching the canvas but that little roll of paint. The knife is not even touching. If you let the knife touch, then you, as Steve, my son, says, you, you mush the paint. That means you flatten it out and squish it. Steve and I have been known to make up words sometimes, so. That's, that's one that he's made up and uses. But people understand what he's saying when he teaches. And he travels all over the country teaching. God, he teaches literally thousands of people the joy of painting. There. So if he gets to your area, go see him. Hassle him a little bit. He does a lot of demonstrations, and you'll find him, you'll find him to be a joy to be with. OK, a little of the phthalo blue and white. Just a little roll of paint on the knife. And let's just lay in the indication here and there of some little shadow areas. We don't want a whole bunch of color there. Just, just where you think you'd be a happy little shadow living. There. Maybe. Right here. Choom, there he goes. Let's bring this one distinctly through. That'll push that first one back. Sneaky, huh? And just a little touch over in here. Now, sometimes it's fun to come back after you've done this, and let's just mm, let's break that up. But now you can see a shadow through there. And little things like that will make your painting special. But you need to put a shadow back here. Every highlight needs its own shadow. And if you don't give it its own shadow, it just won't play with you. It'll go home. I hear over and over when people say they're having trouble. We always nearly trace it back to the fact that their paint is thin. And you really, you really have to have a very firm paint to be able to paint wet on wet or layer on top of layers. There we go. Let's take a little, we'll just use that mountain color. I've added a little Van Dyke brown, put a little white in it, a little touch of the sap green, not much, just a little, oh, a little more of the white in there. A little bit more of the white. There, that's sort of a nice grayish brown color. Quite pleasant. Okay, let me wipe the old knife. Let's grab us a. Sometimes, watch here, let's have some fun. Take a little of that same mountain color. Maybe right in here, come right in here. There's a, just a little stone, or maybe a little part of the mountain that lives right in here. Watch there, just put that dark in, just like you did to make the, the big mountain up here. This is a baby mountain. If you take care of it, treat it well, it'll grow up and be a big mountain like its big brother right above it. Okay, back to our little bit of the white. I'm gonna add the least little touch of Van Dyke Brown in the white. I wanna dull it down some down here. Just the least little touch, least little touch. Once again, least little touch and just let this sort of play. Let that knife just bounce though. 
want this to look like rough, rough places. Mean there. They'll get right in there. That's what my dog said, and he set down the sandpaper. He said, rough. There. All right. That live in the front of that, and that'll help push it back. You can also, I'm going to dull that same, take a little brown, phthalo blue and white, and make a little shadow color. But I want it duller than the one up high. Just put the indication here and there of a little shadow that lives back in there. I have to have a little shadow in there, too. Now, let's clean this off a little spot. Even with a palette this big, I run out of room sometimes. That's what happens when you paint with big brushes and big knives. Let's take some black, some Prussian blue. I'm gonna put some phthalo green in there. Maybe a little brown and crimson. What the heck? Just a little bit of everything. Good dark color. Okay, let me wipe off the old knife. Maybe, hmm. Let's take some Van Dyke brown, get crazy. Maybe in our world there's a nice little stone that lives right in here. This is gonna be the bank. It's gotta be a place to hold all this nice greenery up so it doesn't fall over in the water and make a big splash. Might be a little beaver or something lives here and scare him to death. We don't want to do that. Hope you enjoy seeing my little creatures. I am so crazy about some of these little rascals. I have, I have one that we call Squirrely Girly Brown and she's a mess. Well that little squirrel something else. She's just about ready to turn loose. She's full grown now. She's been with me for Oh, I guess eight or nine months. She is, she is something else. And she hides nuts all over my house. The other day I went fishing with a friend and I went to put on my fishing shoes and uh, there was a pecan in the toe. You ever, you ever put your shoe on and somebody's put something in the end of it? Certainly get your attention. Let's take a little white, a little bit of the dark sienna. Let's just go up here and just touch and bounce. And we're just going to put the indication of some nice little things that are happening right along in here. But leave a dark area underneath, and I'll show you why in a minute. Let's do the other side while we got this going. Leave a dark area underneath, because we want to want this to be deep, have height to it. Okay, we'll wipe the knife, and we'll, get, we'll grab just the base of that and pull a little tiny bit of that color down using the small edge of the knife. Or sometimes I just use a small knife, depending on how you feel at that moment. But it'll create the illusion that this is thick. It's not just coming out there. And you sort of change the angles now and then. Something like so. Let's put a little water line. For that, we'll use a liquid white. Pull it out very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across, okay? And we can go right up in here. And we can just drop in just a little water line. Just a happy little water line that lives back in here somewhere. We don't know where it is. Don't know that we even care. Just let your imagination take you anywhere you want to go. A lot of times I start a painting and have nothing in mind but the time of day and the time of year. And from that, you can paint some fantastic little scenes. Don't worry about it. You don't always have to have a perfect vision in your mind of what it is you're going to paint. Imagination is it's, it's like any other muscle in your body, or like a muscle in your body. The more you practice, the better it becomes. Take some black Prussian blue. I'm gonna put some phthalo green in there. I like phthalo green. Mix them together, cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go up in here. And we'll take this, and we'll just put the indication here, a little bit of soil, some dirt, some kind. So we've gotta have a place that this is a little island for all this to sit on. See there? So all there is to it. Okay. All right, we gotta figure out the Van Dyke Brown. And let's have us a little path. We had to walk all through these bushes, the mosquitoes would get us, so. Let's have us a little path that we can walk back in here and catch that big old trout or bass, whatever it is that lives in here. There, take a little bit of, let's find some white, little dark sienna, mix it together, make a little highlight color, just barely touchy, barely, let it graze, let it graze, that easy, that easy, about like so, okay, there, 
making little sticks and twigs, take your knife, just a clean, clean knife, and you can reach up in here and just scrape right through the paint. See, and that'll make all kinds of little sticks. And let's come down here and we'll make a few more in here, wherever. You decide where they live. Sometimes these old evergreens here have old dead limbs hanging off of them. And you can do that just with a little flick of the knife. I want to come back with a knife, take some pure titanium white, and I want a bright area right up in here. So I'm just going to take that titanium white, and as my son Steve says, we're just going to smoosh it right into the canvas, like that, okay? Like the sun's maybe behind that old dark cloud there. So we're just going to smoosh it right in there, just really press it in there. As I say, you better get out your heavy coat. Let's take Prussian blue, midnight black, put some alizarin crimson in it, maybe even a little Van Dyke, good dark color, predominantly blue though. Pull it out as flat as you can get it, cut across, get a little roll of paint, goes right on the edge of the knife, and our world, maybe, yep, we'll just put us a big old mountain lizard right up here. Just decide where you think it should live and drop it in. And the only thing that we're worried about in this particular mountain is the top. We could care less what's happening below it. Just that nice edge is all we're looking for. Take a two inch brush, grab it, and pull it. Because we have liquid white on the canvas, we can move this color. There, see, this, whoop, let it go. Make a big old mountain that just lives right in there like that. Come back with our titanium white. Pull it out as flat as we can get it, cut across, and we have a little roll of paint. And we just go right in there. And with that, let's put some nice highlights on this mountain. Big old snow-covered mountain. Whew. I lived in Alaska for almost a dozen years, and we saw a lot of this kind of scenery. Gorgeous place, absolutely gorgeous. There we go, we'll take some white, a little Prussian blue, mix it together. And with that, we'll make a nice little shadow color, just blue and white. There, good coal color. Cut off our little roll of paint again. Then we go up here, touch, no pressure. Just let it flow. Grab, now we're gonna push that little peak back, go right through it. See how it pushed it right in the background? There, no pressure though. You want the paint to break like that, to have those little holes in it. That's what makes it so pretty. Makes it actually look like something's happening in there. A little white, let's break up that straight edge. It bothers me that it's so straight. There, we'll come right in here. Put a little shadow under him. Shoot, we got a little mountain going right there. Today, let's have a little fun. Let's, let's do two ranges of mountains, just to show you how you can put one mountain in front of another. Maybe over here we have a, a huge mountain, wherever you want it. Big, strong old mountain. Maybe there's a bump there. Something about like that. See, you have to make these big decisions in your world. Where does all these things live? You decide. And then just drop them in. That's what's so fantastic about this style of painting. You get an idea in your mind, and before it escapes, you can just put it in. Back to our titanium white. We'll put some highlights right out in here. There it is. See, wherever you want them. There, maybe right in here. See, there's one. Here comes one. Just let it flow right on through. Just make big decisions. Drop it in. You have unlimited power here. Because you know you can do anything that you believe you can do. Anything that you believe you can do. There we go. Right up into here. Shoot, look at that. Big old strong mountain. There. Just wherever. Something about like that. Mm. I love mountains. I think they're one of the most fun things there is to paint. And of course, none of us are interested in selling paintings, but if you are, it still seems to be the thing that sells better than anything else. 
It's just great big old mountains. People love them. They fit in almost any decor. Don't think there's anybody that doesn't like mountains. Well, maybe there is. There we are. Just bring it right on down. And here and there and there and here you can go and figure out where you want a little little projection to be. Put a little shadow behind liquid white, cut across it. And we'll go right up in here. And just put in a little, a little tiny, little tiny water line lives right there. This is just a light area between the two darks. It sort of separates. It also looks like little places where snow's laying out in the water. There. There we go. That nice. Maybe there's a big old thing out in here. Whatever. It's up to you. Up to you. All right, let's have some fun. <laughs> Time to get crazy. Let's mix up some Prussian blue, some black, crimson. Whew, a lot of color there, dark. It should look black. But it has a blue base to it. I'll even put a little brown and keep it dull there. Let me wipe off the old knife. Got a little blue and white here. Since this is such a cold looking painting, I'm going to just use that color to make the indication of a few little trunks here and there. Normally we'd use brown, but I want this painting to stay cold, real cold. There. Uh, let's take another. Let's see. Let's take a little bit of white. Come right back in here. Put the indication of a little bit of snow under here. Just a little snow. Gotta have something for all this to sit on. It's just sort of hanging out here in the lake right now, or stream, river, whatever it is house out here because I'd, I'd like to live in a place like this. So take your knife, scrape out a basic shape. That just removes excess paint. We'll take a little of the Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna mixed together. We'll put the back roof in first, back eave, like that. That's all there is to it. And we'll put the front in. And all we're doing here is just blocking in color. It doesn't much matter. You could do this any old way you wanted to. Just blocking in color. Then we take some little white, a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown, mix them together so they're marbled. Cut across and very lightly. Barely touch. Just like you're putting snow on the mountain. Barely touch. Just touch it. Pull. Maybe a little more over here so it shows up. Oh, that's nice. That's so nice. Take a little dark color. Just make it look like old boards. <laughs> little of Van Dyke. Got a little door. A little touch of light color. Sort of outline it so we know where the door is at. Shoot. Now all we need is the other half the roof so he doesn't freeze. So we'll take a little bit of the titanium white. Just put it on right there. Ooh, like that. Now we need a little over here. So it looks like the snow's deep on, his, on the roof up here. Okay, now we'll just take a little touch of snow, put it right down here, wherever, right on across. See there? But pay attention to angles. You want that to flow. Because chances are, if there's water out here, it's in a recessed area. Normally, water always is in this recessed area. So, something like so. A little bit of the liquid white. Put a water line into here. Something about like that. I like these kind of paintings. I say they'll give you a lot of practice with the old knife. And that's what you need. That's what you need. A few little sticks over here. Just scrape right through the paint. Let the canvas show through. Prussian blue, midnight black, crimson, maybe a little brown in there too, a little Van Dyke. Blue, black, crimson, and a little brown. Pull it out as flat as you can get it, cut across, get a little roll of paint. Should live right on the end of your knife. And with that, let's go up in here, 
Maybe our big mountain's gonna live right here. Let's touch. Where do we want it to go? Let's, let's make a wild mountain today. Shoot, if you've painted with me before, you know I love mountains. They're a lot of fun. And they're easy to do in this technique. Very, very easy to do. Mountains and, and maybe reflections are the two things that work the best. Or maybe they're just my favorites. See, if something's your favorite, then you, then you think it works the best. So, let's see, maybe, I tell you what, let's get crazy. Put a bump over here too. That ought to be enough to keep us busy. Scrape off all the excess. Just really get in there and scrape it off. See, most of that pink went away, but there's gonna be a little bit that shows in several places. As flat as we can get it. Really get in there and get tough. Cut across, get our little roll of paint once again. See, pull it out, cross, little roll of paint. With that, we have to make some big decisions here. Maybe in, in our world, this old mountain comes right down like that. I don't know. You decide. But no pressure, absolutely no pressure on the knife. Just in your mind, pretend that only the paint is touching. The blade of the knife is not even touching the canvas. Nothing is touching except the paint. There. All right. Today I'm having this highlight come from the left side. It's up to you. You may want to change it and put it on the other side. In your world, you can put it anywhere that you want it. Anywhere. Let's mix up some shadow. For that, we'll use a little, well, we'll use a little Prussian blue and white. Maybe put a little black in it to dull it. I want it too bright, hurt your eyes, have to wear sunglasses. There, maybe a little, little bit darker. Ooh, that's getting right now. Gets good, you know when it's right. You can sort of look at it and tell. Our little roll of paint. And let's just put in the indication here and there of a few little shadow areas. Just a few little things. There. <clears throat> I like to do these, they're so much fun. Now, if anybody can paint mountains in this technique, it's probably my son, Steve. Why, well, son of a gun is the best mountain painter in the country. Whew. He makes me look bad sometimes. His mountains are so good. So good. But that just means I'm proud of him. There. Because he's painted, he's painted since he was about 12 years old. And he's a good example of of what can be done, even at a young age. There, we'll pull that right over in there. Reach up in there, pull a little bit of that down. Just sort of work these together until they're like you want them. When I said we was gonna do a big mountain, I wasn't kidding, was I? Maybe there's a shadow comes right across over here. I don't know, maybe, maybe a little lights. Just, you, you make the decision. You decide where you think lights zinging through here. Comes. Just barely, barely, barely touching the canvas. I, can, I can't say that enough. I want that to look rounded. So you just use those kind of strokes to make it look that way. Just think what it would look like. I want to look like it's coming over in front. Sneaky, huh? There's one right there. Back to the white. I'm just going back and forth between white and the shadow color. Maybe there's a bump that lives out here. Wherever. Doesn't much matter. In your world, you can put this anywhere that you want it. There we go. See, just let these things happen. This old knife will do wonderful, wonderful things for you. You can do entire scenes using absolutely nothing but the knife. It's a little, it's a little slower, but the effect is beautiful. It is beautiful some of the earlier series. I think we did a couple of those. Our actual painting time here is less than 25 minutes. And there is no editing. If you've painted with me before, you know what you see is what actually happened. We don't edit. These are filmed live time. There we go. So if we make a boo-boo, it's right here. But that's all right, because we don't make mistakes in our world. There. 
We don't even know where that goes. Don't know that we even care. Pull that a little lower. Now, we got us a big mountain here. Let's have some fun. I think I want a house there. You know me. I always want to live in these scenes after I paint them. So I'm going to put a little cabin right there, a little house. Now, every once in a while I get a letter from somebody and they'll say, Oh, I love that scene until you put that house in there. I didn't like the house. If you don't want a house in your world, leave it out. I just want to show you how. What you put in there is your business. All right, brown. Just plain old Van Dyke brown. A little, little dark sand in it sometimes. I sort of mix them up all the time, so you get a variation. But don't over mix them. Leave them, even though you can't see it, it's so dark. Leave them sort of marbled. Then we go back with a little white and some highlight colors, dark sienna, white, brown, Van Dyke brown. When you go back and it picks that up, it'll be marbled. It just won't be one old dull color. See there? Just barely touched. Just like, just like you were putting snow on the mountain. That's all you're doing. Okay, on the side over here, add a little more brown. I want it darker over here. Just barely can see there's anything happening there. Much darker. There. I think we need a door. Today I'm going to put a door right there. Take a little touch of the brown. Put some indications like that in there. Just to make it look like an old cabin living out here. We need a roof. Or this poor man is going to freeze to death. We'll give him a roof for his cabin. Like that. There we go. Just put it right on there. Over here, we need a little bit. It is right out there. Something like that. All right. Oh, got a little too much white right there, so I just lift it off. See? Then we put that right back. Once again, we don't make mistakes. Anything that happens here, we can live with it. We can make it work. Let's have some fun. Maybe today, let's do a mountain. Let's do a mountain. We'll take some black and some blue, take a little alizarin crimson, and some Van Dyke brown. Just mainly a good dark color. Good dark color. Pull the paint out flat, cut across it so we have our little roll of paint right out of the edge of the knife. Now then, you have to make a big decision. Where does your mountain live? In your world, you decide. Maybe there's a peak there. Get a little more paint. Maybe this comes up. See? And just push very firmly and put your mountain in wherever you want it. Wherever you want it. That's exactly where it should be. Okay, there we go. And we just let this wander right on off. Scrape off all the excess paint. Just get in there. And Get tough with it. You're not going over titanium white. I'm going to reach over here and get the least little touch of the black and put in it, just so it grays it down a little bit, makes it a little bit grayish. Pull it out as flat as you can get it. Just, oh, get tough with it. Cut across, and we have our little roll of paint once again. And with that, now then we can begin deciding where light would shine through there. Just let the light come through and bounce and play and have fun wherever you want it. There we go, no pressure, absolutely no pressure. So you touch, just let it come on down. Now, if, if mountains in your area are a different shape, change them. All I want to do is show you how to make a mountain. I know this is not the shape of the mountain everywhere, but if you can make one mountain, you can make a million mountains. And maybe, 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 maybe in your area there isn't any mountains, then leave it out if that's the way you want your world to be. I like mountains because they teach you how to use these knives. And if you learn to use these knives, oh, you're in business. I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of Prussian blue, just a small amount, it's very strong. Reach over here and get the least little touch of dark sienna and just mix it marbly. And I've got the small knife here. Let me wipe it off so you can see. Okay, now cut across. And you get that, there we go, get that little roll of paint. And there's a multitude of colors happening there, the same as there is here. Now then, let's put some shadows in here. Just touch, 
no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Let it just glide right down the side of this. Right down the side, let all those little colors just happen. Maybe, maybe they don't all show up. But in here, if you're looking close up, you can see all those different colors. The same as they were in the paint, now they're on the mountain. See, just put in your basic shape here. Pull it down, pull it down. There, now then. See this peak here? He needs his own individual little shadow. And that way he'll stand out. We could take here and there a little touch of dark color and go back and add in little accents. There. See, it makes those areas deep and dark and mysterious. That's where the mountain goat goes to hide. Well, when I lived in Alaska, we saw a lot of mountain goats and doll sheep and all those beautiful, beautiful animals. There we go. Okay. You know, it's sort of sad in the way this this is the last show of the 13th series the last one but we'll be back we've already started working on the next series it's hard to believe there's my gosh there's nearly <laughs> there's nearly 170 shows now and if you if you haven't had the opportunity my knife I'm gonna take a little touch of Van Dyke Brown and just scrape in the indication of a waterline, like so. See, now we have foothills overlooking a happy little lake. Take a little liquid white, put it on the palette, and we'll pull that out as flat as I can get it. Just really pull it out, get, get strong with it. Take the knife and cut across. And with that, go up here, and you can just cut in a little waterline just a little light area under the dark. And it separates that, makes it stand out. There. Does nice things. Maybe there's a happy little ripple here. Now keep these basically straight. And if you've painted with me before, you know that. Shoot, we talk about it all the time. Now then, let me find that old fan brush. There we go. I'm gonna mix up well, let's mix up a bunch of color, black, Prussian blue, a painting like this. Right in the middle of the painting, you can change your mind. You have total and complete freedom. When I was a traditional painter, I never felt free. Here I feel free. Pull the paint out flat, cut across, and once again, we have our little roll of paint. Let's go up here, put the indication just here and there of some little tree trunks. Just wherever you want them, just brown and white. Brown and white. There. You can scratch through the paint, make the indication of all kinds of little sticks and twigs and stuff. There. People think you work for weeks putting all those in. And that's our secret. And I'd like to tell you, on behalf of the entire crew here, and it takes a lot of people, happy painting, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Now on this side, I'm going to use white with a little bit of the gray color in it. Just enough to dull it down. We don't want it too bright. And we'll just start here and pull down. Just like so. You can lay out your basic shape of your cabin and then fill it in. Now over on this side of the roof, we need a little bit of snow over there. And we can come in here and put some boards right here, just pulling straight down. Over here. There we go. Isn't that a super way to make a little cabin? And all buildings work basically the same. It's just a matter of angles and perspective. If we had shows that were a little bit longer, gosh, I'd love to show you some fantastic buildings. There we go. Now maybe we want to turn this into a, maybe like a log cabin, so we can take some brown and some white, 
Maybe we'll put a tiny bit of umber into it. Burn umber. Want to keep it quite dark. We don't want it to get too bright yet. And just touch, give it a little pull. Just to make it look like little, little logs there. There we go. Just touch and sort of pull. Get it too bright. There we go. Okay, now we can go sort of in the opposite direction and put some logs going this way. And all we do is touch, sort of give it a little downward pull this time. Just a little. Don't overdo. And just work right across in layers. And sort of give you the impression of little logs. Now, when you're at home and you have unlimited time, you could take your little liner brush and really put some detail in there. As I've said before, if we run over 30 minutes here, they, they yell at me a lot and kick me off the set. So we'll try to keep it very simple just to give you some ideas. All we want to do is give you ideas and teach you how to do this fantastic method and, and turn you loose on the world. I want this side to be a little darker over here, maybe. <clears throat> now, if the old fellow that lived here is like the rest of us, he probably, probably ran out of space very quick and had to build a little shed on his cabin. So maybe we should do that, too. I'll take a little bit more of the brown, and let's come right in here and build him a shed. We'll just put a little little roof right here, coming out like so. Maybe this is where he keeps his firewood, because undoubtedly this is cold. Now we need a little bit of snow on the roof, so we just take a little of the titanium white and just come across there. Just like so. There we are. Now, out here in the foreground, a little bit more brown. Need to put some walls on his little shed. Maybe over here. Just there. Good, good. Maybe these are boards here. Maybe these aren't logs. Maybe these are slabs. So we'll just put some indication of some boards here and there. Okay. Now, let's go right up in here and give him a couple of windows. Maybe he needs some windows. Well, we're looking at the back of his cabin. So first, we'll take out this paint that we have up here. And let's go right into a little bit of uh, cad yellow. We'll just put some light in his window. Just give him some light. Maybe he's got the old lantern on tonight if there's no electricity out here in the woods. And we'll take a little bit of the magic black on the liner brush and then just sort of outline the windows. Just a tiny bit. This is a very thin paint, it's a liquid, so it flows. Okay, now, maybe we need a little, maybe there's a little chimney right here. We'll just throw it on. Just use a little bit of the gray color and the small edge of the knife. There we are. Maybe you can see the least little amount of red on his chimney. And we won't have a fire going right now. the snow a little bit thicker on the roof. And I think we're ready to, ready to start playing with some other things. Now then, 
we can just take the knife, begin blocking some of this in. There's the back eave. We'll have an old barn that has a, a projection out there. I like those. I like those. Something about my cam. There. Comes out. Down. Don't need a backside for the whole rascal. We're just blocking in color here. Don't worry about it. I'm using that same brown that I made from the alizarin crimson and the sap green. And here, we need a front on our barn. So we'll just drop it in. There. And the side. Like that. Maybe it's got a... Maybe there's an old shed that comes out here on the side. Probably none of this makes sense yet, but I, I can sort of see it in my mind. And that's really all you have to do. If you can just sort of visualize things, then off you go. Gosh, what started out to be a little barn is going to end up being a big barn. But that's okay. We need a place to, to put the old cow. There we go. And all this would just fill in. All right, maybe today, tell you what, let's do, let's get crazy. Let's take the old filbert brush. I'm going to take some of that brown that I made. And we'll use the old filbert brown. Be right back. Get a little touch of the red. A lot of paint on there. Just really gob it on. So you just pull it through there. But don't over mix your color. There's all kinds of colors going on in there. Now, very gently, you just touch this and let's just start pulling it down. Barely touch though. Barely touch. Just enough to let the paint come off. And it'll make it look like old boards there. Old wood. Just enough just enough that it drags the paint off the brush. There, it's just, it's very gentle. It's like putting snow on the mountain. Very, very gentle. Barely touch. You could do this with a knife if you wanted to. I thought maybe they would just do it with this. Doesn't much matter, it's up to you. There. A little more of the red in there. Just so it sort of matches everything. This is a super way of making old wood. And a little bit of the dark color. I want it a little darker up here because it'd be a little shadow cast from the top. Something like that. Let's get the knife. We'll take a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre, a little bit of red, a little bit of that brown we made. But don't overmix it. Leave it sort of marbled. So when you cut off that little roll of paint, you have all these colors. They're living right here in this roll on your knife. I just want to touch now and let it just bounce. Bloop, 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 bloop. Just let it bounce. And it make it look like old, old roof on this thing. It's like me, it's had a hard life. And this one's probably seen its better day. There. There comes a little point out there on the barn. Mm. I like to paint old barns, they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And I travel, I see barns all over. Sometimes I stop and take pictures of them. It's a good way to, to make your reference library on old buildings or even trees and clouds and stuff like that. Shoot, stop and take pictures of them. Save them. I have a, I have a file, I guess you would call it, of photographs and pictures and ideas that people have sent from all over the country. And that's where a lot of these ideas come from. I go through there and look at them and, and see what kind of scenes are that people are sending in and that they want to see painted. And that's where we get a lot of it. So if you have some ideas you want done, send me a photograph. Maybe, maybe one day you'll see it on here. There. Just put a little highlight along the edge, maybe a little bit there, just so it stands out. Okay, wipe the old knife off. Now, just take a little bit of brown on the knife and just touch here and there, just to give a little division between the individual boards, slabs, whatever you want to call them. But just a little division between them. There. See how easy that is? You can really make old, old looking wood like. It's not that difficult. Over here, I want this to be almost, 
almost dark, very dark, but almost the, the color we painted it originally. Now we can come back with a knife and just do a barnectomy. We just cut the barn off so that it's where we want it. Something about like so. Now let's take some, let's take some midnight black. Come right in here, put a door in. Got to have a place for the old cow to get in there. There. Take a little bit of brown, just go around and sort of outline the door. Shoot, that's not so bad. We got us a little barn right there. That easy. Now, maybe in our barn, let's make some more of that brown. Crimson, sap green mixed together. Didn't mix up enough to start with. Okay. Let's just sort of have an idea. Maybe here, there's an old path. Got to have a way for the cow to get up to the barn. Maybe when the storm comes, he has to go up here and hide. So we'll just put a little bit of color right on here like this. There. Have a path that goes up into the barn. All right. Wipe off the knife. And so every so often, we like to put them together and show them here. So send me a photograph of what you're doing. Share it with us and, and we'll share it with the TV audience and let everybody see it. If you don't mind, if you don't want it shown on TV, if you send a picture, just, just say so. We'll respect that. There. Let's go right here. And we can just use a little bit of this brown and sort of decide where we want everything to live. Touch, through, pull. All we're doing, blocking in color. Get some dark on there so our light will show. Maybe it comes down like, maybe, it, maybe it's got a longer roof on the other side, see? Some old houses are like that, just like so. There, and while we have that brown there, we can just block in some sides and front. Maybe, the, maybe this is a, I don't know what kind of building this is. Maybe it's an old barn. You decide, you could make it a little house or a barn or whatever. Whatever. Now, we'll take some white, a little bit of that brown color, and just mix it together. There we are, something like so. Cut us off a little roll of paint about that. Touch. See, just go down like that. But you gotta make that little noise or it doesn't work. And our light's coming from here. So that'll be the brightest side. Same color, I'll add a little dark sienna and Van Dyke brown to it. Same color though, same color. There I go with that noise again. Really, for some reason, maybe it's the exhaling of air or something, but it's, it really does seem to make it work a little better. There. Very gently. Create the illusion of a old building. Now then, in our old building, let's have some boards. We'll take some Van Dyke brown here, just a small roll, and just touch. Just touch, see there? Create the illusion of some boards. Want a few on this side. There they are, there they are. Doo, 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 doo. Let them go, let them go. Well, we're gonna have one neat building here in a minute. We'll take our two inch brush and only one hair and some air. Just barely caress. Barely. Just barely. Whoa, just barely touch it. If you want to smooth it out, you may like it a little rougher. I want to smooth this one out a little bit though. So it's up to you. I'm going to take the little knife. I like that little knife. And let's put a door in here. Maybe I'll just put a big old door like that. And we'll let everybody figure out what their own building is. See a little light right there? Around two. There we are. For the roof. For the roof, we'll take some white, a little bit of brown, maybe the least little touch of black in there. Oh yeah, graze it down some more. But don't overmix it. I want a lot of things happening right there on the knife. And we touch. And this is where, if you're a little nervous, it'll pay great dividends. Just touch, let it work its way down. 
There I go with those noises again. There. See? Now just a, a tiny little bit on the other side. Just so there's a little light zinging through there. Shoot, we got a pretty nice looking little building there. We can live with that. Try to keep that a little bit higher. If you put that a little lower, which is almost a natural tendency, it'll look like your cabin is sort of, well, maybe it, the front of it fell down into a hole. I live in Florida and sometimes there's, we have sinkholes there. It almost looks like your cabin fell into a sinkhole. See there, all right, let's just put a little, we'll just use dark sienna and Van Dyke Brown, mostly Van Dyke Brown. And let's just lay in, all I'm doing is laying in some color now. Just laying in some color. There. You could do this with a cement trowel, it doesn't matter. A little something like that. See, and the bottom at this point, don't be concerned with, because you can come along here with your knife and do a cabinectomy and decide exactly where everything should live. That easy. Now maybe, we said this was gonna be a log cabin or something that gives you the impression of a log cabin. So we'll take a little brown and white, and let's just come along in here and think about this angle right here. And let's just tap in some little indications here and there. See there? All right. Okay, just drop it in. We can take that dark color we picked up earlier and go back and help create that illusion. There. Over in here. This is going to be very dark on this side. We don't want much color over here. I think I'll put a tree there. What the heck. Put the indication of the end of the logs, just using the point of the knife. That easy. Maybe we got a door in here. Let's put a little door. We gotta have a way to get in and out. That's all there is to it. Put in a little door. A little light around the door. Now we need a little, let's put a little snow up here on the roof. See there? But just pull it down. Just pull down. We said we'd have a tree in front of it, so we don't have to worry much about the back of it at this point. We do need a little bit of snow over on this side, just so there's snow on both sides. Now then, let me go back. Now then, we can start off with just titanium white. We can sort of outline this. Decide where you want it to live and do like that, and then bring your paint in. That's probably the easiest way to get a nice smooth edge there. Sometimes when you get my age, you get a little shaky and you need all the help you can get. There. Now then, we want a corresponding angle on the other side because there'd be snow on the other, on the other roof. See, about like so. Bring it right down. And then we need to put some boards in that old barn. Use some Van Dyke Brown, touch of dark sienna. Pull it out very flat, flat as you can get it. And cut you off a little roll of paint right out on the edge of the knife. Now we can go in here and we create the overhang. If a little of that white gets in there, it makes it look like little boards. And then you have to decide how tall he is. You have to make all kind of big decisions. There he goes. See there? That easy. Okay, now then. Okay, we have the other side over here. Like that. And we said there was going to be a little shed on this barn. So, just take the white and come right out like so. There he goes. And once again, we need some boards underneath there. Let me clean off my knife and we'll put some sides in the front right on the little shed. Okay, now with a knife, you can sort of 
take and clean up the bottom of it. You have to make a decision here where you want it to be. I think we're going to have a little snow bank that comes around and like that. Now then, I'll take a little dark sienna, some white, mix them together, cut off that little roll of paint again. Okay, now then, let's just go up here and just sort of touch, and give it a little pull, just a little sideways pull. Make it look like old boards and leave some cracks. This is an old barn. It's old and it's tired and winter's been rough on it. Okay, and then we can come right along here, just drop them in. Now the other side, we just add some Van Dyke Brown and make this side much darker, much darker. And then once again, you just take your knife and do a cabinectomy. You just take off whatever you don't want. Okay. Now we need a we need a way to get into this old barn. So let's build us a door. Just straight old Van Dyke Brown. Decide where the door is going to be, and just pull it down. Zoop. See there? Isn't that easy? That easy. You've got a door in there. Take a touch of white. Maybe there's a little white right around here. Just firm up your edges. A little bit of dark. This is just some Van Dyke Brown, and you can really increase the illusion of old boards here just by touching. And we'll take off all that excess paint. Now, look out and see all of God's creations. Ah, and no place did he have a better day than Alaska. Oh, God is gorgeous there. It is gorgeous. I love it. I miss it. There. All right. All I'm doing is just blocking in a little color. Now, we take a little white, a little dark sienna, maybe a little Van Dyke too, white. But mix it so it's marbled. By marbled, I mean not overmixed. has a lot of things happening in it. See there, all the little doers? Yeah, cut off our little roll of paint. Now, we said this was going to be a little cabin. So let's put the indication of some little dooders in there like that. Now then, I go back across this way. Make some little log looking things. That's all there is to it. Take a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown on the knife. And we go back and just sort of just sort of line them up a little, like so. That's all. That's all. Well, I'll make a darker brown now for the side, because in my mind, it's not dark enough. In my mind, not as much light would hit over here. Something about like that. That gives us an idea of how to make a little cabin. Now then, we need, we need some snow on the roof. This reminds me of some places I used to see in Oregon and even into Utah and etc. Beautiful places there. Beautiful. Mm. We need a door. Got to be able to get in and out of our little cabin. Our door lives right there. There we are. And we can come back with our knife. Do a little cabinectomy. There. Whoop. Maybe, maybe we'll take just the point of the knife, cut in a few little sticks and twigs. Just here and there. Now, if you want a twig that's a little wider, turn the knife sideways, and it'll make wider little sticks and trunks and stuff. If you want them real skinny, use it straight on. And I use just the point of the knife. Tell you what, let's have a little, let's have a little house right there lead back in the distance. I'll start with some Van Dyke Brown and and we'll make a decision. Maybe it lives right there. And we'll do the eaves. See, that's sort of a, a nice way just to lay it out. And here goes the roof. Goes right over like that. See, and you just lay out a basic shape. Pull it all together. There, just barely, barely touching the canvas. You need an overhang. Through here. There we go. An 
don't want this to get too big. I want it to be far away. Far away. Okay, let's take some Van Dyke brown, some white, a little burn number. And we'll put some highlight on this old building here. Barely, barely touch. Barely touch. Barely touch. Just let it whisper through. Now, we have to make a decision. What kind of roof does it have? Does it have a shingle roof? Flat roof? What do we want? Okay, let's take some permanent red. And we'll use a, the little edge of the knife. And maybe we'll just drop a few little indications of some shingles. Just touching, pulling. At the top of this one overlap. The other one, just let them overlap. And you can put all the little shingles you want on here. It's a super way to make very simple little shingle roofs. We need a door. Maybe this is an old barn type building. We'll put a big door in it. Maybe it's just an old barn. The farmer had sitting out here. A little bit of white. We can make a door stand out. And when you're painting buildings, you know, you can change your mind. Maybe, maybe, right out here, there's an old shed on this building. Maybe this old farmer here was like me. He ran out of room. So he started putting additions onto it. Need a front. A side. And we'll take just a little paint. And we'll put some boards in there. Just cut right through the paint. Got just a tiny bit of white paint on the knife. Let's put some indication of if he shingled the roof. Chances are he probably put some shingles over here on, on his little shed. There we go. Just like that. Have some fun today. I'm gonna go. I got to do this. I got it. It's fun. I like to make little cabins and little shacks in the woods. So let's do one. Pull the paint out very flat. This is Van Dyke Brown. Cut across. Get our little roll of paint. Okay. Now then, make a big decision. Where does your little house live? I think he lives right there. There. And here's the other side of the roof. There we go. Now, these are very simple little, little houses and little cabins. But if you learn to do them, then big, big buildings are just little buildings that had a shot of vitamins. The principles are all the same, no matter what size your building is. See, and it doesn't matter right here. All you're doing is blocking in color. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Learn to work with whatever happens. Whatever happens. Okay, that gives us a basic shape to work with. Now we can add some white to some dark sienna. Pull it out very flat. Once again, get that small roll of paint on the knife. Okay. Let's go right in here. And just barely touch and pull it down. Like so. Now the other side here, we'll make it by just pulling down like that. Now, some dark color. Come across. Gives us a door. We need a door for a little house. There we go. Got to have a way to get in and out. A little bit of light color around the edges. And that fixes him up. Now we can take a clean point of the knife, just go down, make it look like little little boards in this shack. Tell you what, we'll take a little bit of the, the blue color, just make the indication of a little window there. Now with a knife, you can cut this off. Just cut it off and create, create all kinds of shapes. Now then, let's come right in here, just using a little bit more of the dark sienna. And I'll just pop in the indication of some little things happening up here on the roof. That easy. That easy. I want to keep this roof quite dark. Quite dark. Now then, maybe this will help, help it stand out. We'll just take some, a little bit of light color and come right along here. And just highlight the edge a little. See, that makes it jump right out at you. Right out at you. Now then, maybe there's a happy little cabin there. 
I like doing these little cabins, and they're so simple. Cut off a little bit of brown. See, pull it out flat and get that little roll of paint. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe this little cabin lives right here in the woods. Wouldn't that be a super place to have a little, a little house to come and hide? Okay, let's give him a roof. Zoom. And need a little front on the cabin. Both sides. See there? Just, just a quick little happy cabin. And a little bit over in here. This is just Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, just mixed together. Okay, and then we can take a touch of brown and white, and then we can throw a little highlight on there. A little on this side, zoom. Just a touch, just a touch. Boy, that's a rough looking old cabin. Hunter built this one a long time ago. He was out here. Maybe there was a maybe there was a beaver lived out here, and he came out here and trapped a, trapped the animals. Maybe one day he had a couple of drinks too many and fell off in the lake here. And the old cabins just sort of went went back to nature. Okay, we'll take a little of that same brown color. Let's put some little happy things up here on the roof. Just touch and just let it sort of bounce down. Just bloop 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 bloop. I'm going to take the least little bit of white and maybe just, just sort of highlight this edge so it just stands out a little bit. Just so it stands out a tiny bit. Boy, that old cabin's seen its better day. Now, now you can cut it off. See? You can do a cabinectomy. Hmm. Just sort of zip off whatever you don't want and work out your perspective. Then we go back to our round brush. Let's have some bushes and some weeds that are growing all up around. He didn't cut his grass very good either. Okay, some more brown. Maybe there's some happy stones that just live right in here. Little path. Just all kinds of little stones. A little brown and white for some highlight. Don't cover all your dark. Just sort of hit it here and there. We'll, we'll take a video. You can do anything here. A little bit of Van Dyke Brown. We'll put the back eave in first. Just that's easy. Okay, here comes the front. Nice straight edge right along there. There it goes. And I'm pushing this paint into the fabric. Don't worry about the bottom. We'll do a cabinectomy when we get to that point, and then we'll make big decisions. There we go. Just whack it right off when we get ready. See there? And take Now we need the other side of the roof. There it is. And it comes to about there. I don't know. Wherever you want it to be. Wherever. Some sides over here. I let's, let's really get crazy. Today. Maybe this guy put a little put a little room out here on the, this little house. So we can do that too. Maybe it comes from right here. See? Got another little area. That easy. That's what's so fantastic about this. You can change your mind, do anything that you want, make up little stories. Just let these things happen. Let it come down. And all we're doing is just blocking in color. That's really all we're doing. That's all we're doing. There. Okay, now then. Let's take, let's take some bright red, bright red, some dark sienna. And let's mix those together, like so. I'm gonna put a little touch of yellow ochre in there too. It's such a beautiful day here. I hope it is where you're at. We'll just sparkle this up. Cut off our little roll of paint, just a small roll of paint. And let's begin coming right down here, barely touching, barely, barely touch, no pressure. No pressure at all, like so. Maybe even a little touch more of the yellow ochre, and shoot, we'll even put a little white in there. I want this to sparkle a little more. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's what we're looking for. Look at that, isn't that something? There we go. And over in here, 
put a little bit right in there. Maybe there's a little dark area in between these two. You can do that. Now, got to put something on the roof for that. I'm just going to take some black and titanium white and just mix it together. Put a little bit of the Van Dyke brown there just to give it, ooh, leave it marbled. Don't over mix it. And we'll come right down here. And all you do is touch and just let it bounce. Bloop, 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 bloop. Got to make that little noise so it doesn't work. Just touch it and let the knife just bounce as it works right down here. Look at that, see? That's all there is to it. On this part of the roof, since it comes this way, touch it once again. Just let it bounce. Let it bounce. Right on down. Right on down. There we go. All right. Now, this is a much darker color, and we'll come right in here, same color but darker, and put in the front of this rascal. And sometimes on these edges, it's nice to put a nice bright area so they really stand out, so the edges stand out from each other. Darken this one a little bit. There we are. Shoot, we got a heck of a little house there. That's coming along pretty nice. We'll take a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown and let's make the indication of some boards here. There we are. See how easy you can make it? Look like it's old boards. Now if you want to soften that, if you want to make it look very soft and, and smooth, you can take the large brush and lightly, barely, barely, barely caressing the canvas. Just pull gently down. Gently down. You know what we need? We need a door. Got to have a way to get in there. So that easy. We'll put us in a little door. There. Just cut right around there with a little bit of light color. Just to make that little door stand out. Shoot. Tell you what. Over here, maybe there's a window. When he put that section of the house in, maybe he wanted a way to look out. See all this beautiful scenery. There we go. Few little board indications over here. And a little touch of roof on the other side. You gotta have that there so it stands out. Shoot. That's not a bad looking little house. I sort of like. Start off with titanium white, pull it out very flat, cut across, and we get our little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Now then. Big decision time. See here? Let's start and begin laying snow right out here on the roof. Angles are very important. Very important. Just pull that rascal down. Now, out here, if you want to make this edge nice and sharp, you can come along that way, see? And then come back and smooth it out. <laughs> Sneaky, huh? And then just smooth it out like so. Go. And that's part of our roof. I'm going to go into a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, get a little roll of paint, and we'll do this back eave here. And for that, we just want to pull it over like that. Now we'll take a mixture of dark sienna and Van Dyke Brown and just sort of mix it a little bit, not much. Just don't over mix it. Cut off a little bit. Once again, that roll of paint, so important. Now then, let's take that and just begin pulling down. Remember, we have a chimney in here. We're going to put a chimney in this one. Remember that. So you can sort of save a little spot there for your chimney. We don't want this old guy that lives out here to freeze to death. Same color. Right out there. See there? That's so all there is to it. That gives us a basic shape. Now then, I'm going to take some white, a little bit of the titanium white, a touch of the dark sienna in it, and maybe the least, least little touch of bright red. Dark sienna, touch of bright red. That's so strong. And white. A little more dark sienna. I want that darker. See, you make the decision however you want it. There. Let's see, leave your paint like this. Don't over mix it. Get a little roll of paint and all those colors are right there in that roll. Let's go up here. 
Now then, you can touch. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Pull down. Pull down. Let it break. Let, let them holes in there. They'll give the illusion of age. It looks old, like me. There. See there? Now then, on the other side of this little cabin, I want it to be much darker. Much darker. So same color, I just added brown to it. See here? Same color, but it's much darker. So there's a distinct difference. Distinct difference. Now, take some brown. Let's put our little chimney up here. We'll come right up in here, and it came down like so. See? A slight angle. Down, down. Like right on across. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get my little knife. A little knife is so good for these little places. And we'll go right in here. And I want this one to sort of go upward. Upward. See? So it gives the illusion that this chimney is square. A little bit right down through there. Because most of that chimney is inside the house. We won't see it. I'll take some bright red. Some bright red. And a little bit of... Van Dyke Brown, and I'm going to mix it together. Maybe these are bricks. So, easy way to just make indications. Just touch and just sort of let the knife bounce as you work down. Blip, 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 blip. Now, if you don't make that little noise, it won't work. Gotta have that little noise. Gotta have it. And maybe just a few over here. But show the difference in angle. That way it'll, it'll make it square. And, tell you what, right along the top up here, Maybe there's a little snow laying up here. There we go. Just a touch of snow. Clean off my knife. And talking of a, speaking of a touch of snow, on this side of the roof over here, we need, we need a little bit of snow on that side of the roof. Now, now that, said we might put a porch on this one, so I think we're doing all right for time. Let's do it. Take some, a little bit of brown, and just sort of come right out here. I'm not using much brown, just a little, because I want a little bit of it to show through. Right into the white, bring the porch right out like that. See there? That easy. That easy. Now we need a floor. So, same thing under here. Bring it out. Roughly the same angle. Like so. A little touch of highlight would sneak under here. Not a whole bunch, because it's going to be pretty dark under there. Pretty dark. And then we'll give it a little distance. That easy. Boy, you know what? You know what? We need something to hold this porch up. So let's just put a, a rail or two in here. Just like so. See there? That's easy. That's easy. You got a little rail. And since our light's coming from this direction, put a little light on those. There. And we can put the indication of a board or two here, just using a dark color. That simple. If you wanted a window, you could just scrape in a couple windows. Isn't that easy? I knew you could do that. Tell you what, let's do. Let's have some fun today. Let's put a happy little house right in here. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Let me, let me show you here. Probably one of the simplest ways. I'm just gonna take a little paint so you can see it. You can just sort of scrape in a basic shape here. See, there's part of the roof. See, and then it comes down maybe like so. And the other side. And here. And then you need something there and there. You can do this just to sort of build yourself a little outline. And then you can start filling it in. And we'll take Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of the dark sienna in it, and we'll begin building us a house right here. Zoop, just like so. Really push this into the fabric. Push hard, very hard. I want this, I want this color to just grind right into the, right into the material. Brown, a little bit of dark sienna. There 
we go. There we go. Tell you what, maybe, maybe this old fellow that lives here is like me. He needs a, he needs a little shed out here. So we can go ahead and lay that in right now. Zoop. Got to make those little noises or it doesn't work. See? Right now we're just blocking in color. We could care less. We'll come back and separate all this. Yeah, I know. You're saying, Bob, you really, you've really done it this time. And you may be right. May be right. We'll see. Now, we're putting a little roof up here. Okay, there we are. Doesn't that look just like a house? Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Well, we'll work on it a little bit more and then see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to take some bright red, some Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna, a little touch of, little touch of white in there just to, just to brighten it up some. Just to brighten it up. There we go. Now then, this time, let's use the little edge of the knife. See that little roll of paint? Okay, let's go right up there. Now then, go back here on this back, and let's start like that. And it doesn't matter where you go here, because you can just cut it off when you, when you put the other building on there. Look at that. Looks like happy little shingles back here. That easy. This is an old, tired building. Now then, let's come right down in here. See? And we pick out this next eave. There it is. Comes right across there. You knew that. Now then. Take a... This is a titanium white. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of black to that and make a nice gray color. Titanium white with a little midnight black. Oh, that's much nicer. Much nicer. There we go. There we go. Now, go back with a tiniest little bit of black. And let's put some, let's put some lines in here like boards. All right. Then with a clean knife, we just grab it and pull down just a tiny bit so it picks up the least little touch. Look at there. Look at there. Makes all kinds of old-looking effects. Okay. All kinds of old things. Now then. Now then. I'll take some more. The Midnight Black and Titanium White. Make us that gray color again. Pull it out. And let's go right up in here pull this one down. Just pull him down. Pull him down. Doesn't matter if a little bit of that brown mixes in. Makes it look old. Makes it... See there? Look at there. All those pretty things happen. And I'm going to go right along this edge here and firm it up with just a little dark color. Just so it's a little bit firmer. Back to my black. And we can go right through here and put, see, just put these little rascals back in there. And don't, don't get these too perfect. You want this to be an old house. This wood is weathered. It's really caught the devil out here. Now, barely touch. Just graze the canvas. Caress the canvas. Barely, barely touch. Give it these little pull downs. Let some, ooh, there's a nice one, see? You can sit there with your one-haired brush for a week trying to get those, and, and here it just sort of happens. Okay, now then, let's do, let's do the other side. I want a darker gray. Ooh, there's a nice gray for this side of the building. So maybe, tell you what, maybe even a little darker yet. I want it distinctly different. Much darker, yes. This one's in shadow. You don't see as much. Don't see as much. But we can still see that there's little boards running up through there like that. Same thing. Grab them. Give them a little pull. Make them look old. That building, that building looks as old as me. And that's old. All right. Now then. Maybe. 
we'll take some black. Let's come right up in here and put a happy little window. Need a way to see out. Maybe the door is on the other side of this house. But I have to have a window over here so you can see what's happening. And, and we'll take a little bit of light color. It's very light gray. And just go around, sort of clean up the edges. And it just cleans up the edges. Makes your little window look good. Now, maybe, look at there. Maybe like so. I know next you want curtains in there. And that easy. We got a nice little, nice little window. Now then, gotta finish up the roof on this side over here. So let's go right up in here. And we'll take the small edge of the knife again and just pop in some, some little roof indications. Little shingles. See, do it just like you really, really lay shingles. You do the bottom one first and then work upward so they overlap. That keeps Mr. Rain from slipping up under. If you start at the top and work down, he'd be in bad trouble. And you paint them the same way. Of course, this is a lot faster than putting shingles on a roof. My father was a, was a carpenter. And when I was young, he gave me a little taste of this. And my job was carrying all this up on the roof. Boy, they were heavy. Son of a gun, worked me to death. I decided I want to be a painter. There, now we got a lot of, a lot of shingles on there. I'm gonna take a little bit of the, the white. Now then, let's come right along in here. And I'm just gonna put a little white on here just to make that stand out so you really and it just pops out at you. Maybe there's a little building or two. So I'll get out the knife, and I'm gonna use this same old brown color. Okay, pull that paint out very flat, just as flat as you can get it, and take your knife and cut across. See, it gives you that little roll of paint right out on the edge of your knife. Okay, let's go up to the canvas. Maybe there's a little, little bitty house that lives right there. We just want some indications way back here in the distance. Little house, he lives there. Little barn, little shed, whatever. And all we're doing here is just laying in the dark. We'll come back and put in a few little highlights and, and fix him all up, make him nice and pretty. Right now, you're just trying to get some dark on your canvas. Okay, good. Now, let's take a little, a little bit of the titanium white a little brown, make a color that's somewhat lighter than what we have on the canvas. And you don't want to mix this color dead. Add a little blue to it and gray it down. And I'm going to use a small edge of the knife this time. Same way, a small edge, and it's just a little bit of paint right out there on that small edge of the knife. Good, okay? Now, let a little light just bounce and play right along there. Just like so. I don't want a lot of color on this, just enough so it stands out and it's lighter than the side. I want the side to be very dark. It's in shadow. The old shadow's got it. There we go. And maybe right along this edge here, a little light plays right through there. There. Good. Just to make that little edge stand out. There we go. Now, maybe. There's some boards in there we just cut through. And I know somebody's saying, well, you got to have a door in there so you can get into the old shed. Well, okay. Give you a door. Cut around it. There we are. And then quick, we have a little building. Now we can just clean up his foots. Touch him. Bring in some grass right up around him. And maybe over here, right there, right there. I'm gonna tell you what let's do. Let's build us, let's build us a happy little barn that lives right there. We'll come this way now, and then let it drop over. Just sort of visualize these things in your mind. Put them on the canvas, put them on the canvas. And these are far away, they're small, so we're not worried about tremendous detail. Fill this in, just like we did the other one. We need that dark color so the light will show. Little edge of the knife. 
do, 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 there. Pull some of this down. And all we're doing here is just trying to cover the canvas with dark color. Yeah, I'll take a little permanent red and Van Dyke brown. I'll just mix it together real quick here, like so. We'll put some shingles up here on this roof. Just touch. Start at the bottom and work up. This is just, just the way they put shingles on the roof, too. Start at the bottom, work up. So they overlap each other. And that'll give you the indication of a few little, a few little shingles. Little highlight along the edge. And right along there. And down. Okay. Now, now then, once again, we need to put a little highlight on the front here. Okay. And, and, and then, the old barn here needs the door. Big door. This is where the cow had to go in. Smooth that out. A little bit of color around the edges. Okay, here we are. There. Now maybe this old farmer, maybe he's like me. I never have enough room. Let's give let's give him a shed out here on his barn. He needs a a little shed. Maybe this is where the chickens live. Chickens need a place to live, too. And we'll put a little board or two right there. There we go. A little bit more of this roof color. It was permanent red with a little Van Dyke brown. And just put some indications right there. Good. Mix up some more of that Van Dyke brown, permanent red, Prussian blue. Just mix it up. We need a good dark brown here. Now these are super little scenes to make on a white canvas, so they're day scenes. Good. Okay, now we pick up that small roll of paint again. Always using that small roll of paint. Okay, let's go up here. Now, remember the blade's taller or wider at the top than it is at the bottom. So you touch and sort of go bloop like that, okay? And that's how we make our little blades. And let's do like that. Look at there. Look at there, over here, there, and one here, touch, and sort of pull it around. Now, if you do these four first, then all you have to do is come back in here, and you can lay in all the rest of them, and they'll work out correctly. Isn't that sneaky? And you can make beautiful windmills. windmills. There you go. I lived in Nebraska for a long time and there was a lot of windmills there. Look at there. Look at there. Now the circle that you made up here, something has to connect all these blades. So you can cover up that line that you scratched by taking your knife, a little edge, see? And that just br brings them all together. You, need, you gotta have a connector here to hold all these together or they fall off. Come right on around, just like so, however many you want. Okay. Now then, I'm gonna put a, use some of that uh, red and brown, and let's put just a touch of highlight right here on the corner. Maybe a little more of the permanent red into it, a little brighter so it stands out and you can see it a little better. Okay, just, all you do is touch. Just touch, just so there's a little color on that edge and you can see it. Now, if you were doing this on a white canvas, you'd probably want a lot more color. There we go. Just to give you an idea. Now then, there usually is a couple of big blades that stick out here, and that's what the wind catches, and that, that guides it. So we just come right over the top here, because these old windmills had to turn into the wind. So we'll put in these. And the old windmills that I've looked at usually have two of them on it. And they sort of go to the center. And we'll put a little tiny 
highlight on that. Nope. There we are. Look at that. Wow. Okay, then we need something to bring it all together here. And there's usually a cross like so. In there. Good. A little highlight on that too, so it stands out. You can see it. Now, there's the little thing where the chain goes. And a little platform up here. Now we need some legs to hold all this up. That platform's where the bird always comes and builds his little nest and he sets up there and he watches the farmer. And when the farmer feeds the chickens and stuff, he slips down there and gets him something to eat too. Same, same brown color. And we gotta give this old windmill a leg. Don't want him to fall over. Give him a leg. And this is closer to you, so respectively, it's much bigger. There we go. And let's give him another leg here. There. See, we don't use any patterns, so nobody knows if we make a mistake or not. Sneaky. There. Another leg right here. Gotta have four foot so he'll fall over. Now, if you don't have windmills where you're at and you want to paint a windmill, there's a thousand books that have beautiful, beautiful pictures. And you can pick up one of those and, and look at it. There we go. And that gives us gives us four foots. And usually in here. There's a little platform. So we'll just make a little platform and then bring this leg over the top of the platform. And we need some supports in here to hold all this together. Like so. Maybe, 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 maybe. There's another one right here underneath the platform. Like that. And we need, we need some little steps so the, the old farmer can climb up there and shoot that bird off if he wants to that's living up there. Just drop him in. Now we can go back to our highlight color, and let's just lay the tiniest little bit of highlight here and there, just so this stands out a little better for you. Tiny little bit. There we go. A little bit over in here. This sort of, this sort of separates everything and makes it look a little better. A little touch right there. Okay, a little bit right on that. Ooh, nice. If you get one that's nice, don't touch it again. Leave it alone, because it may never come out again. And you're not committed. Now we can go in here and start with some white. Let's go in here. Watch here. Well, let me do it this way. This is the best way so you stay in the lines. So you just sort of outline it. Just sort of outline it. That'll help you keep it nice and smooth on the edges. Then pull down. See how straight that line is? Isn't that sneaky? I'll look for those easy ways to do things. Roof comes right down like that. Right on down. And over here, we need a little bit of snow. There it is. Well, I wished I could build a barn that quick. Now, with Van Dyke Brown, I'm gonna come right in here and put a little eave or an overhang. Now I'm gonna use some Van Dyke Brown and dark sienna sort of mixed together. And we'll start off by just putting some dark in here. We need dark in order for our light to show. You have to have dark for the light to show. You put light against light, you have nothing. Dark against dark, you have nothing. Painting is just continually dark against light, light against dark. Okay, clean off the old knife. Now then, let's put some color in there. Take some dark sienna, some bright red, mix it together. Let's put the least little touch of white in there. Ooh, that's nice. Don't over mix it. Leave it about like so. Cut off a little roll of paint. See how, even there, it's all mixed and marbled. Okay, let's go right up here. Now I'm going to just take the edge of the knife 
and just let it sort of bounce across. Now, if you get some down in the snow like I am, don't worry. You just take it right off. We just zip that off. Don't worry about it. See, a little bit right in there. Now we take our knife okay, and do a cabinectomy. That easy. And see, it gives the impression of a lot of little boards. That easy. Now a darker color, and we come right in here. There we go. That's a little darker, not as if light's going to hit in there. Now, I'll show you a little trick. Let's get us some brown on the knife here, and come right down here and look. See, we have that little roll of paint on the knife. That's so important that you have that little roll of paint. Now, maybe, maybe there's a little opening under here, so just put dark right here. There, just a little bit of dark. Now over in here, see, we'll put some more boards, like that. And with our dark, we'll continue that opening. Isn't that neat? Looks like there's a place under there the chickens could go at night. And as a kid, I had all kinds of little chickens. We put a post there so it don't fall down. The only problem though, I wasn't a very good chicken farmer. They turned out to be my friends <laughs> and I wouldn't kill them. Shoot, I, we ended up with a bunch of chickens and we're hungry. But I had my buddies. Okay, I'm gonna take a little brown. This is Van Dyke brown. A little of the bright red in it. And I got the little knife now, and I've cut off that little roll of paint with a little knife. And over here, I just wanna show, we'll just go in a different angle. See, now there's boards going that way. And when you're doing these old buildings, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I make it a little bit lighter, you can see it a little better. When you're doing these, you design your barn, however you want it. Barns grow all kinds of ways, however the old farmer wanted to make them. Okay, now then we can come right down. This is where the fun starts. Because this you can do any old way that you want to do. You're really just blocking it in here. Just throw it in. Just throw it in. All right. Now then. Decide where the front of this is, and we'll just do a bridgeectomy. See, it comes right across like that. That gives us a basic shape for a bridge. Now then, this is going to be the side of the bridge. We'll start filling it in. There. Okay, just pull it down. Pull it down. We go about to here. Pull that down. Now then. We need the bottom of this to be nice and straight and smooth. So for that, I'm going to touch and pull upward. Sort of have an idea of where the bottom is. Touch it and pull. There. Okay, that gives us a nice straight edge along the bottom. Then all we have to do is just sort of fill it up. Fill it in. There. Okay. Now underneath that, we had some very dark color because there's some stones and stuff under here that hold all that up. It comes under something like so. And then we had a little water. So under here, that's reflected right down into the water. So you can just continue that. This is basically just Van Dyke Brown. There. And our water's going to live right along in here somewhere. I don't know exactly yet. Somewhere right along in here. There. But whatever is going to be water, we'll just grab the big brush and pull that straight down. And that'll end up being our water area. Okay, gently go across. <laughs> and we already is beginning to have that impression of water. Now then. This hangs out a little further here. And there's a bank over on the side, and it sort of comes around. All right. Now then we can start having some real fun here. I want to darken that one area a little bit underneath. Ooh, that's much better. 
I like it better. See, now you can see that reflection. Okay, let's make this a combination of some bright red, a little dark sienna, a little touch of yellow ochre, and maybe a little bit of white. But don't overmix it. Leave it sort of marble like that. Take our little roll of paint, and let's go right up here and just touch and begin pulling down very gently, very, very gently. There. And from down here, I'm going to gently do the bottom and pull up. Once again, I need a nice straight edge at the bottom here, so I don't want to lose that. Just sort of pull it up, just like so. See? Grab it and go upward. You can go either direction, upward or downward. There. A little from here and down. Now then. Something like so. I'm going to take just a touch of the yellow ochre and just highlight it here and there. Maybe even a little touch of white here. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Look at that. It looks like old wood already. Old, old wood. But leave it sort of old looking like that. Don't overdo. Now then, on the other side, I'm going to add the same color. I'm going to add a little dark, uh, I mean, Van Dyke brown to it to dull it. I want this side to be less bright, not as bright as the other. Just pull it down, let it break, just like you're painting mountains. That's all there is to it. Now, now we had a, you gotta have an entrance way to get in here. So basically, figure out where that's at. And we can just begin scraping it. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get the little knife. I like it better, it gets in these little areas. We got a door like so, comes over and down. our doorway. Now we need to fill it up full of dark color so it looks like it's very dark inside there. Not a lot of light's going to get in. There. Okay. Isn't that neat? Now then we'll take, we'll take, let me see here, I'll add a little yellow ochre, a little touch of brown and white. We'll make the side there so you can see it. See, a little across the top there, just a little outline. Now you got an entrance way. I want a window back here. So to make a little window back here, I'm just going to take and pull. Just pull it. There's our little window right there. Just like so. You can see right through that and they have a little window. Now we take a little of our highlight color and just go around the edges. Tell you what, let's take a little of the Van Dyke Brown, and in here, I want to make this look like old boards. Just take a little brown and touch here and there. Mm. There we are. Now then, let's have some windows out here. Let's have one right here. Just pull it down, like so. Now, in my mind, in this window here, you couldn't see anything. There would be no light hardly coming through it because it's dark right in there. Now, they may well have a second window. A lot of these old covered bridges have windows in them. Maybe there's another one here. But now in these, in my mind, because you're looking through at sort of an angle there, you would see a little bit of light coming through. So we'll just put a little light in there. A little light in my window. A little light in my window. Isn't that what everybody wants? <laughs> there we are. Now then. Now then. Let's put some snow on the roof. <laughs> if it's winter time, there's going to be a little snow up here. There now. We just come right along here. See, this is the reason we didn't want to get those trees all down in, in the uh, roof area. Because when we pulled the snow down, we'd have ended up with a tremendous amount of this color. So be sort of careful there when you do that. Make you unhappy if you end up with a bright green roof on your covered bridge. Now very gently, following the angles, you can just pull that right down. This whole knife will do fantastic things for you. Just follow those angles though. There. See there? Okay. 
need a little more color. Now you can take a knife and just sort of smooth that all out. All right, good. And that easy, you can make a nice snow-covered roof on your covered bridge. But as I say, it's basically just like making a cabin, only big. Certainly is a big cabin. Now then, we could take a little bit of our dark color and just very carefully fill in these little areas here. So the tree fits right up against there. Okay, we got that. Take our knife then, and we'll put a little snow on this side of the roof. See, and that brings it all together. That easy, that easy. You have a very nice little thing. There. All right, now then over here, let's have some stones that hold all this up. For that, I'll just take some white, a little of the midnight black. There we are, a little tiny touch of phthalo blue. Not much, not much. Mostly black and white. Maybe a little touch. There, that's what I'm looking for. Something like that. Now, take the little edge of the knife, and let's just put in the indication here of a few little stones. Want them basically straight across the front. You just drop them in, like that. They make them sort of different sizes. Shoot, when these old covered bridges were built, they'd use whatever size stone they happened to be laying around. Now then, over in here, we'll just put the indication. This is in shadow underneath, so you're not going to see many stones under here, though you might get the impression here and there of one or two, maybe even the least little touch of yellow ochre, because there'd be a little light coming through the side over there. Just enough to sparkle a little. There. Mm. Very nice. Okay. Now, if you want to really make that look like stones, we take our liner brush and we'll go into a little bit of titanium white, dark sienna mixed together, and a little black. Put some black in there to gray it down real. Ooh, there we are. That's what I'm looking for. That's what we're looking for. Okay, let's go up here. Now you take a liner brush and just sort of very quickly go around each stone. And that will give you the illusion of stones that are put together. There. You know, this one's been in the opening of every show in this series with a little cartoon character. It only takes a couple of minutes to paint it, but it takes a lot of fantastic people a long time to make that beautiful little opening. So I really hope you enjoy it. Really hope you enjoy it. Hope you like that little cartoon character, too. Hope you like it. We're, th we're thinking about making maybe a full-length cartoon out of him and turn him loose on the world. If you'd like to see that, let me know. I know. Maybe. Yep. Let's get crazy. Maybe there's a little... Maybe a little shed on this cabin. You need a place to, to put your tools. Right there. Or your fishing tackle. I'd rather put my fishing tackle in there. All right, we'll take a little of that brown. Let's get some bright red. Whew. Nice color. Nice color, just makes you feel good. Bright red, white, a little of that brown we made. Don't overmix it. Leave it marbledy, if that's a word. Cut off a little roll of paint. And let's go up here and just let that bounce right down the side. Just so it looks like maybe old shingles that are falling off the roof. Times are hard out here, real hard. There, I like to make old buildings and stuff that look like they've they've had a rough life. There. Okay. Maybe I tell you what, little, take a little white, a little bit of that brown without the red in it, and with that, let's just put the indication of some. Highlights there, and a little bit more in there, making the front a little brighter so it stands out. Wipe off the old knife, and you can take a little of that brown paint on the edge of the knife and just make it look like old boards that live in there. See there? Just old boards. Now, back to our roof color, and let's put a roof right here on this little shed. See? 
Got to make those little noises or it doesn't work. Just brown and white again. Two. Need a little bit out there. We'll put some little boards in there. Like that. Shoot, that's about enough. About to give us a basic little shape there. About there. And then you can just use the, the brush to cut off wherever you want it. Like there. I'll tell you what, let's take a little brown on the small edge of the knife. Swoop. Just put a little window in there. Maybe one right there. That easy. That easy. All right. Back to all of our little colors. Just begin working it down like that. Take old two inch brush, a little bit of that brown on it. And here and there we can just tap in using a top corner. Indication of some little bushes that live in there. Wherever. Wherever. There. To go by. Let's take some Van Dyke Brown on the knife and we'll start back here with the back eave. Something about like that. And there's more. And at this point, we're not committed. We can change this any way we want. We're absolutely not committed. This is just blocking in a little color, just a basic shape. You cannot make a mistake here. The only thing that happens is maybe a barn gets a little bigger. There. But you can change it any way that you want. All right, and we'll come down. Does that begin to make sense? I sort of see things in my mind. And from there, off we go. Because this painting technique allows you to to visualize things and then to put them on canvas in a very short time. Very short time. I get letters from a lot of professional people who say they have very limited amounts of time and they love this technique because after a busy day they can come home, unwind, relax, set their easel up, and in an hour or two they can have a, a nice little painting. And that's wonderful. Mm. Now over here on this side we decided we was going to have Little thing coming out here, about to there. It doesn't matter. See, boy, this is going to be a big barn. I got carried away, but that's okay. It's our world, and we can do anything in our world that we want to do. Anything that we want to do. All right, and this barn keeps growing here. There. Now, now we can begin putting in the goodies. We've got some color blocked in. Let's take some dark sienna, some white, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow ochre. Just a little yellow ochre, I like it. Sort of a gold color. But notice the paint is very marbled. There's all kinds of colors happening in there. Pick up a little roll of paint, and we can go back up here, and very lightly touch and pull down. Just touch it and pull it down. And all those different colors that we saw on the palette are in that roll of paint, so you get a variation. It's not just one old dead color. There's a lot of things happening in there. A lot of gorgeous things, lights and darks. You couldn't do that intentionally if you tried. But we, we know how to make happy accidents happen on a regular basis here. There. Now over here, I'll put some more. We'll get a little more of the dark sienna. I want this side over here to be darker. Something about my cap. Take a little of the Van Dyke, just plain Van Dyke. And maybe here and there we can put the indication of some few old boards living there. Just touching, allowing it to pull off what it wants. There we go, see there, that easy. Good place for the old cow to live right in here. There. I grew up with a with an old cow that lived with us. She was a nice old cow, old milk cow. I miss her. We used to drink fresh milk right from the cow, unpasteurized and all that. Guess that's not considered safe anymore. But it was some of the most best tasting milk I've ever had. All right, now for the roof. Let's take, let's use those same colors and brighten them. Yellow ochre, 
some dark sienna and some white. Once again, don't over mix the color. We want all those things happening so you can just sort of pick and choose wherever you want them. A little roll of paint, go back up here, and let's just take the knife touch and just sort of let it bounce. Boop, 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 boop. Got to make those noises though. There we are. But look at all the colors that happened in there. I mean, think how long you'd have to work to try to come up with those colors, if you ever could. Don't know that you ever could. But just let it bounce. Stay there. There. See, maybe brighten this edge just a wee bit. Darker, darker, darker as it goes down. And over here, coming out in this direction, there's some more. Look at there, old, old barn. And a little right along the edge. All right. Now then we can take, let's see, what will we use here? There's a little white with a touch of phthalo blue in it. Just a touch, just enough to shade it a little bit. Very small roll of paint. And with that, I just wanna, just wanna sort of sparkle that edge so it stands out and you can see it. Just enough to sparkle it a little, maybe just an indication that it goes back there. See? There. But not much, not much. You could overdo very quickly. Just a tiny wee little bit around the barn door. Just enough to, to outline it. Now we can do a barnectomy. We can just cut it off wherever we want it. Think about perspective and all those little things. Okay. And I ain't put any little boards there. Just touch with the dark sienna or the Van Dyke brown, either one. Just enough to give some little indications right along in there. And it will help make it look like it was made out of old boards there. And that's basically all we have to do to have a little barn. Shoot, not committed, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna. You can change your mind at this point. A little roll of paint. Now let's begin picking out the little things in here. There's the, the back eave. See there, that easy. Okay, now then, the old barn comes down. Bloop, 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 bloop. Gotta make those noises. There it is, see? All we're doing here is blocking in a little color. We'll come back and do a barnectomy after a while and cut it off wherever we want it. But right now, all we're doing is putting in the dark. Putting in some dark color. There. Here we go. Bloop, bloop. See there? Sorry I make those little noises. I sort of forget because I really do make them even when I'm by myself. I make little noises. It sort of makes things work better for me. All right, and over here, there we go, see? That's really about all we're looking for to block it in. Right in here would be a little dark paint. Okay, now, let's take, let's take, let's take some white, dark sienna, a little Van Dyke in there, maybe a little crimson too, what the heck? Give it a little warm feeling. Don't overmix the paint. Cut off a little roll of paint. And then we can go up in here and just barely touch. Just let it graze, see? Let it graze. It looks like old, low wood. If you've painted barns and cabins and stuff before, you know, I, I really like to paint old things. I'm an avid collector of antique glass, for example. I like old things. When you get my age, you have a tendency to like old things. You can relate to them. <laughs> there we are. And I am old, older than dirt. Let's take a little, a little Van Dyke brown, and I want to darken that color so that it's darker over here on the side because not, maybe not as much light's going to hit over here. See, that's much darker. Now then, let's put some boards in there. For that, we'll just take some Van Dyke Brown and we'll just put the indication here and there of some little boards, some slabs that live in here. There. See there? I wish the barn was this easy to build for real. 
My father was a carpenter and I built a few barns. It's not this easy. There. It's not this easy. There we are. Something about like that. Now then, we need a roof on this barn so the cow don't get cold. Let's take some titanium white. Since we said this was winter, maybe the snow is there. Let's just outline it so that way you'll get a nice straight edge when you pull it down. Watch it. See there? There we go. Now then, a little more of the white. A little touch more. There. There we go. Isn't that neat? Looks like snow's piled up on top of the old barn. A little bit over there. Because you'd see some on that side too. You would also see some here. And, oh, we got a whole section to go here. There, let me get some more white. Same thing though. I want to outline it a little bit so you'll have a nice straight edge. And then when you pull it, some nice straight edge. Something about my cat. Okay. There. But you can just move it, pull it, work it any way that you want. All right, we need a door. Old cow's got to have a way to get in and out there. Let's take some Van Dyke. Decide where your door lives and... Once again, don't worry about the bottom. We're going to do, we're going to do a barnectomy, as I mentioned earlier. We'll cut this rascal off wherever we want it to be, which is about time to do the shape. Let me grab a little Van Dyke Brown. It will uh, do two things. It removes excess paint, which is most important. But the other thing it does is it allows you to sort of lay out your whole perspective and your whole building and everything without really being committed. There. I say we said we'd have a little shed out here, so we'll just put a little roof, pull down, and all we're doing right now is just blocking in color. That's all we're doing, just blocking in color, like so. There, a little bit on this side. <laughs> Wished it was that easy to actually build a barn. This certainly makes it easier. My father was a carpenter, so I've spent a lot of my life building things. I know how difficult it is to, to actually make a barn. That's why I say I wished it was this easy to do. Now then I'm gonna take a little, let's take a little white, a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown. We just mix them together like so. Maybe even the least little touch of blue into it, and that'll gray it. It'll, it'll give it a gray tone. Pull across, get our little roll of paint right down the edge of the knife. Then we can come back in here, and no pressure. No pressure. It's just like putting snow on the mountains. Barely touch. Barely, barely touch. I want to make this look like old weathered wood. Old weathered wood, like me. It's had a hard life. Here, shoom. See, just barely touch though. Barely, barely touch. Now I'm gonna take a little more of the Van Dyke Brown and make it make it much darker because on the other side not much light's gonna hit. So you need you need to have that quite a bit darker. See how, in comparison how dark it is. But our little roll of paint still. You come right up in here, decide where the roof line is. Just enough so it barely, barely shows up. That's all we're looking for. There would not be much light striking this side of the building. Not much light. There. And right along the edge here, maybe I'll put a nice distinct line so it shows that there's a, there's a difference there. Let's take a little bit more of the Van Dyke Brown, and I'm going to turn this into an old slab building, with, in other words, made with boards. And to do that, we'll just take the knife, a little bit of Van Dyke Brown on it, and create the illusion of a lot of little boards in here. 
something like so. Now you can smooth that by taking a two inch brush and barely touching, barely. Whew, just graze it. Whew. Now for a roof, what are we going to do? Let's just take midnight black on the roof. Midnight black, well, like that. Get our little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife again. And let's just let it bounce along here and play. Let's just touch it. Bloop, 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 bloop. Gotta make that little noise though. That's all there is to it. Just let it bounce. Let the knife touch. The canvas will pull off what it wants, give you back what's left. There we are. That easy. Now we'll take a small edge on the other side. And I want to make an indication of little shingles showing on the other side. But by using the small edge, it'll be sort of jaggedy. There. It'll look like you're looking at the edge of little, little doers there. Okay, right here. Excuse my arm a second. Make that line a little darker where they come together. There. Maybe we'll make a little doer there. Gotta make it a little more distinct. Now we need a door in there. This is an old barn, gotta have a place for the cow to go. We just take a knife and go. How's that instant door? We'll take a small edge, go up here, put a little, little place for the hay to go up. Cut around there. There we are. Shoot, we got a pretty good looking old barn there. What the heck? Shape. Now I'm gonna take the knife, pull out some Van Dyke Brown, cut off a roll of paint. See that little roll of paint right on the edge there? Good. Now then, let's begin laying in our shapes. Now this is the time to start being a little more careful. Before, it didn't matter. But now you want to start making big decisions. Maybe this old barn's a little sway back. Let's do an old barn. Years and years it's set here. The old timbers in the middle are getting weak. And it's like me, it's tired, it's ready for rest. There, now we can just begin blocking this in. All we're doing is just block it in color. Just block it in color. There we go, that easy. And this comes down like so. And we said there was gonna be some more of it came out that way. Now, you know, there's, there's just hundreds of different kinds of barns. So pick the kind of barn that you want. The principles are basically the same. Doesn't matter what kind of barn you're doing. The principles are pretty much the same. There we are. Now on this side, we need another little protrusion. See there? And this paint, I'm just pushing it right into the fabric. I need that dark color underneath. So we put some highlights on top of it. And it'll show up. There. Okay, let's keep going down. There we are. And we've got a pretty good old barn shape going there already. Not bad. Let's have some fun. Now we can begin putting color into our barn. I'm gonna take some bright red, use some dark sienna. I wanna dull it down, it's too bright, too bright unless we dull it down. Maybe even put a little Van Dyke in there. There. I don't want this painting to be bright, but once again, if you want yours to be brighter, then all you have to do is make it that way. We just wanna show you how to make it, then we're gonna turn you loose on the world, cut off our little roll of paint, let's go right up here. Now then, Let's put, some, let's put some roof up here. And I'm just gonna let that knife just bounce. Bloop, 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 bloop. It helps to make those little sounds. Maybe I'll make that a tiny bit brighter so you can see it a little better. Put a little white in it. I don't think it's showing up as well as it should. There we go, now you can see. Just let it bounce right along there. Helps if you make them little sounds. Once again, I want this to be old, so these, 
The old shingles up here, boy, they've caught the devil. Some of them are gone. Some of them blowed away in the last storm. And the looks of it, the rest of them are going to go in the next storm. There. Okay. A little bit over on this side. There we are. Shoot, oh, we got those shingles going. Let's put some out here. There you are. Okay. Boy, I wish it was that easy to actually build a barn. My father was a carpenter, and I grew up building things. I worked in houses all over Florida. In fact, if you live in Florida, you very possibly could live in a house that my dad and I worked on. There. And he was a master carpenter. Oh, he could do some beautiful things. Beautiful things. Let's take a little dark sienna, some white, pull it out very flat, and cut across, get our little roll of paint again. Now then, let's put the icing on the cake here. Look at that. This is just like you're putting snow on the mountain. If you painted with me before and done mountains and you've mastered that, this is easy for you to do. Mm. And I want to make this look like old weathered wood. There. There we go. Beautiful. Mm. Delicate touch. Does not take any pressure. The knife will literally, literally allow the paint just to come right off, just the right amount. A little dark right up here, because there'll be a shadow under that edge. A little bit of brown right under that edge. There. Now, take a little Van Dyke brown. I'll mix with that same color. I want to darken it. I want to make it darker than it was. Now, over here, it's going to be much darker on this side. Much, much darker. Just like so. Okay, let's put a door in here. Big door. It is right there. And that's all there is to it. Now we can take our knife and we can do a barnectomy. We can just cut it off wherever we think it should be. Take some straight Van Dyke Brown. You can just put the indication of boards here and there. There. Looks like a lot of old boards. Now, I tell you what, maybe years ago, an old trapper, <laughs> maybe he built him a little, little house right there. So I'll take some, some of the Van Dyke Brown, cut across, and get a little roll of paint on my knife. There you can see, right out on the edge is most important. It's right out on the edge of the knife. Let's go up here. Okay, maybe the little house lives, does now, right there. There it is. See? Paint that little back eave first. I tell you what. Zoom, we'll put a front on him. A little front. Front on the other side. See, just sort of in your mind think think what a house looks like. And he needs a little side over here too. Boy. Alright. Now then. Take a little white and a little brown. Pull it out very flat, get us a little roll of paint. And let's, let's put the least little touch of highlight on there. Barely touching, barely touching. Just caress the canvas. Okay, now. See, we can see that the light's coming from here. So this side's gonna be a brighter. This one over here, this one's gonna be almost dark. Almost pure brown. Don't worry about too much color over on that side. Boy, that <laughs> guy that lives in there is freezing because there is no roof on his house. Let's give him a roof. Let's give him a roof. There we go. Just that easy. Now he's got a half a roof. Let's feel sorry for him and give him the other half. Don't want him to freeze. Okay, a little snow on the other side. Just sort of bring all that together. Isn't that easy? We got a little cabin. Need a door. Don't want him to get locked in there and can't get out all winter. There, you got a little door. Take a little white. 
go around the edges. There, make that rascal stand down. I'm gonna take the small knife now. We'll put a little window right there, just a little blue and white, just to give the indication of a happy little window. Like that. Okay, we're on a chimney. We'll use a small edge of the small knife again. Put a little chimney, take a little, tiniest little touch of the bright red. Excuse my arm there. Maybe he don't have his fireplace lit. A little snow laying up here on his chimney. There we go, that easy. I'll tell you what, take a little bit of the liquid black. Maybe there's what remains of an old fence and it went right on off. Here, this is just straight liquid black. There it goes. There. And there's a few old rails left on it. Right on off into the distance. Isn't that neat? Doop, 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 doop. There it went. Okay, now we can go right into some Van Dyke Brown and let's go right up here and begin building our little covered bridge. There we go. You know, just recently I found out while I was here in Indiana why they built covered bridges. I always thought it was a place you could go and get out of the rain or something. And the reason they covered these bridges was to protect the structure so the weather wouldn't get to it really wasn't the reason I thought it was at all. So I learned something. Okay, here I'm gonna just lift upward with a little brown. All I'm gonna do is fill all this in with the brown, and then we can begin working on detail. Just fill in the entire thing with nothing but Van Dyke brown. There we go, make us a nice edge. Right down like that. Firm that edge up. This old bridge, he just had a hard life. He was not in the best of repair. Give him a side over here. And one here. There we go. Now we can just fill all this in. That's the beauty of using a big knife. You can just drop things right in, no problem. Okay, now we have to do this bridge in stages, and we do the part that's farthest away first and come forward. So I want to be able to see through this bridge, so we'll do the back of it first and then come forward. Down here we can just fill all that in. Just fill it in. A lot of brown. sitting at home saying, boy, he's, he's messed up this time. And you may be right. But let's just see what happens here. So, <clears throat> in the background, I want very, very little light back here. Not a great deal is going to show back here. Just some little indications. Don't overdo. Just some very faint indications. So, when we put the front of the bridge on, it'll show better. Put a little tiny highlight here. This is just a little brown and white. Just a little. Little light playing right across there. Don't want too much. Just a little. Now we can start working on the front of the bridge. And take some brown, some Van Dyke brown, some umber, and white. Make this look like old wood. Don't overmix your paint. Leave it sort of marbly here. So that way, all these colors will happen right here in your bridge. Okay, now let's, let's just take the small edge of the knife and begin making some boards. Now maybe, maybe you can just scratch a line right through here if it'll help you a little bit to give you an idea of where you want the front of the bridge to be. And that'll be our stopping point. So we take the small edge of the knife and just start making some boards. This one's made out of old slab boards, just barely touching, pulling down. and leave some space in between them. As I say, these old bridges, some of them are in bad repair. 
They've really been beat to death. Just want to make it look like old boards hanging here. Just put you some boards in. Why, that bridge has really had a rough life. Okay, and we let these come all the way down. Like so. There we go. Now don't don't cover up all the dark, because back in here. We want to give the impression that we can see in and over. Maybe a little bit there. Angles are very, very important here. We want to make it look like we can see through this bridge. Keep this very dark, because it's all in shadow here. It's all in shadow. These old nice wood things in here. Maybe there's a little beam right here that we can see. Comes right across. Okay, and now we can straighten up this edge a little, give him a little more distance, a little more depth in the in the bridge. There we are. This is just straight Van Dyke brown. Now, if you wanted to, you can take a little bit of brown and create some boards here. I've just got a little tiny bit of brown on the knife, and just touching, just to create the illusion of wooden planks. Look at that. Did you ever think that an old covered bridge would be this easy to make? And just let a little of it run down. Like so. Okay, Van Dyke Brown. Let's go right into the Van Dyke Brown and begin blocking in this basic barn. There we go. Just straight old Van Dyke Brown. Just let the knife do the work. Okay, maybe right down through here. And we just fill all this up with brown. There. It only takes you a second when you're using a big old knife. Okay. That'll give us a nice base color to work with. Maybe it comes right out here like so. One over here, one out here, and we can just fill all this in. And we're not worried about detail at this time. All we're doing is laying the, the base color in. So don't worry about detail. See, already we have a, a nice basic barn shape here. There we go. And now we can begin worrying about little details. Okay, then we'll take some Van Dyke Brown and permanent red. And maybe, maybe this old barn has shingles on it, so we'll put some shingles. There we go. It gives us a nice color to work with. Now, <clears throat> up here we're going to have some, some angles that we just see the edge of the shingle, so we really don't have to spend a great deal of time worrying about them here. All we're going to see is the edges. Okay, just drop these in. All I'm doing is just touching the canvas and following the angles that we've put into the roof here. When you're doing buildings, angles are very, very important. In this series, we've tried to show you quite a few buildings and just let you go. Now then, take a little bit of the titanium white, the little brown in it, 
just a small amount of brown. And let's begin highlighting these little edges. Maybe there's a little highlight here, and one that comes right down like so. Okay. Now, we can work on this angle right here. And I'm gonna take, let me clean up a spot here to work on. I'm gonna take and mix up some phthalo green and alizarin crimson in about equal parts. Make us a nice gray color. There we are. Very, very dark, very dark. Now we'll take a little bit of white. Maybe a touch more of the crimson into that. That's better. That's what I'm looking for. Nice gray color. Okay. Now, let's go right up in here. And angles, once again, are most, most important. Just pull it across. And you can vary that with a little bit of darker color if you want to push it back a little further, make it look old. And we need to come right down through here with a highlight. Sun would strike right there, like so. And now it's time to start figuring out where the other side of the barn is here. Before we do that, though, we can take a little bit of the light brown and make it look like little boards in here, little pieces of wood. All we're doing is just touching the canvas. Maybe there's a big door right here where they load the hay. There we go. <clears throat> then we need to highlight around the door. Just a little bit of color. Maybe there's some boards here that they made the door out of. Now, let's come right down here and put another highlight, just to give us an idea. Let's make some shingles on this roof. And just like you were laying shingles, start at the bottom using the little edge of the knife. And just start laying in some shingles. Start at the bottom. And layer them. So the bottom of the top one covers the top of the bottom one. That's hard to say. And just do one row at a time. These old shingles are all beat up and weather beaten and they've had a rough life out here. Follow the angles in your roof, most, most important. And this will give it a layered appearance. There we go. Just keep layering till you get all the way to the top. And at home, when you have all kinds of time, you can really make some little tiny shingles and put a lot of detail into this. There, that gives us a nice shingle looking roof. Now we have to make some more determinations here. Where does this come? Maybe it comes right out like that. And we'll just put this in to sort of give us a guide to follow. Get a little bit more of the brown and permanent red. And we can begin laying some shingles right here. Now these are laying down, so you don't see them at the same angle that you would see these here. So all you have to do is just touch the canvas. Just touch the canvas. And let it go. Isn't that a super way to put a roof on a barn? God, I wished it was that easy in real life. Okay. Now. Let's take a little blue Van Dyke brown. And a little touch of white. Don't just mix it up till it's marbled. 
and we can begin putting some boards here. Maybe from here right down. Just let them come down. I guess so. And we want this to be all weather beaten, so let the paint break. Let all these little things happen. Maybe there's a little touch of this color right up here, just so it follows through. some little boards here just by dragging the knife right down through the paint like so wherever you think they should be now this side over here we want to keep it very very dark very dark so just some little indications can just put a few little indications of a board here and there. We don't want a lot of detail over here. Okay, now, we need a door to get in that barn. We gotta have a way to put the horse in there. So let's just come right here and maybe, maybe there's a big door on this barn. Just like so. Just pull it across. This is just straight Van Dyke Brown. There we go. And we can take a little bit of the light color and highlight it so that door stands out. There. Son of a gun, we got a pretty good looking old barn going here. Okay, now we can just take the Van Dyke Brown and just go right up here and begin building us a house. And all we're doing is putting the brown in so we don't have to worry about detail or shape right now. Just drop it in. We'll come back and begin adding all the little highlights. Okay, there we go, right over here. Put that little back eave on that building. And we need some, some long boards. Just drop them in. Let them fall right off the knife. There they go. We need a tall building here so our wheel we want a big wheel, big wheel. I think my son used to ride one of those when he was very small. Okay. There, that gives us a basic shape for our building. Okay, now, now we can begin putting in some highlights. Let's use a little bit of the umber, Van Dyke. Touch of, touch of titanium white. Maybe a little more of the umber. Want it a little more into the reddish hue. There we go. That's a nice color. And mix your paint marbly so that all kinds of colors happen when you come down here. Old building. I like old buildings. They're so much more fun to paint than bright, shiny new ones. And we can add a little more there. Just brighten that rascal up a little bit. Some right down this side over here. Now, let's add a little bit more of the Van Dyke Brown, darken this color up a little bit, and we'll do the dark side of the building first. Touch, and just go down. Let the paint break so it looks like old wood here. Just touch, and go down. Isn't that something? Okay, now, the front of the, the old mill here, we need to have a little bit lighter because the light's gonna be striking in this direction. So I've just added a little bit of white to the same color. And just drop it right down like that. Makes nice looking old wood. And we can take a little bit of color on the knife, a dark color, and we can put some boards in here. So, a lot of times when they built these, they'd put a little, maybe there's right up here, just a little tiny little projection right there. 
just drop that right in and fill that up full of dark paint. Then we can come back and highlight it. Just put a little highlight right there. A little bit right there. And maybe we'll make this one right here quite bright. Just come across. There we go. And now, just come straight down and cut that off. And that'll get you the right angle in there. And put some little board indications. And we got a little roof. It's on there to it. Okay, you ready to build the wheel? Probably the same thing as before. It's easier if you sort of scrape off some of this loose paint. So let's start right here and make part of the wheel. And then right here, ooh, there goes the building. Now one of the big things here, I want this to show through. It's very important to me that this part show through so you can see depth inside of this wheel. So we just scrape that right off like that. Go right into the Van Dyke Brown, touch, and sort of fill it up. Shoop. Touch, come around, just come right on around. Now how do you make a round circle with a square knife? That's your challenge for the day. see the back of the wheel back here, so we'll just do that. Now let's just take a little bit of paint thinner, a little bit of yellow ochre, and let's just highlight this little rascal here a little bit. There we go. Just to highlight it. And we can work that paint right in. Maybe, maybe we'll take the fan brush. It's a little faster. There. That's better. Pull that right around like there. Now we need a little bit of water on this wheel. So let's start right up in here somewhere. Maybe there's just the littlest indication of water, and as it comes down, more and more and more. Now you could go real slow and put the water in between each one of these little pegs, but this is much easier. Then we go back and put the pegs over the water. Sneaky, huh? Then we just drop that right in, come right on up like that. Back to our little fan brush. We'll bring this right on around. Just like that. So there we go. We've got a basic water wheel already. Okay. <clears throat> now, got to have something to hold the wheel up. So let's just do this. Come all the way through that way, all the way through that way. Maybe all the way through that way, and that way. Just to have all kind of fun. Now we need a rod that goes through here, a big shaft to hold it up. So we'll put that in. Now, let's put some spokes on the other side. From there, there. Let's bring this one right on down like that. Right over here. Right about there. And maybe there. Now on these, we need a little bit of highlight on the ones on the outside. So just touch. Just put a little bit of highlight out here. Don't overdo, just enough to make them stand out. Create a little depth in there. And we can take our liner brush and smooth all this up. There. And by golly, we got a pretty good wheel going here. And at home, you have a lot of time, so you can really put some detail into this if you'd like. Here, we're just trying to show you how to do it. Okay, got us a wheel. Maybe, maybe there's another little projection that comes right out through here, just like this. That easy. Just drop it in. Okay, we'll put a little bit of highlight on that. And we need 
need some boards to hold a, that little shed up. Some right out here. Here. Let's brighten it to there. That's what we're looking for. A little dark area right there. There's always a little shadow there. A little tiny shadow in this one, too. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now we gotta have something to hold this wheel up. We don't want it just to float out there in space. So we'll take some Van Dyke Brown. And we'll put a little block right there that holds it up. And then we have, maybe there's a little stone thing here. There. That's got to have a place to sit. We'll just put it right there. Bring it down. Maybe it comes right on over like this. Big stone thing. That's holding up a lot of weight. A lot of weight. Let's take a little permanent red here. Make that look like maybe old bricks or something and just give you a little indication. That's permanent red with a little brown and a little white in it. And there's some little things on the side here. Yeah, something like so. Just a basic idea. Okay. Uh, welcome back. Certainly glad to see you today. I thought today we'd do a painting. It's just, it's a lot of fun, very simple, and I think you'll enjoy it. But right here's a nice place for a little cabin. We'll do a quick little cabin. Just scrape out a basic shape with a knife. See, that's all you have to do. Take some Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna mixed in it. See, make the far side of the roof. Then we'll come right down here. Shoom. Put in this side of the roof, and we'll put in the front, the other side of the front, and we need a little side here. And that easy. You got your cabin blocked in. We we'll take some brown and white, and just barely touch it. Whisper light. Just let this float right down. This is an old cabin. Boy, it's seen its better day. Okay, then we can do a cabinectomy, cut it off wherever we want it. Take a little brown, gives us a door. Just sort of highlight that. Cutting through and make the indication of little boards. This old cabin's been deserted out here by the trapper for many years. But maybe there's still a little path. Quit white, put us in a little water line around these. So don't want a lot of water line, just a little. Just to sort of bring it. Let me let me show you here. Probably one of the simplest ways. I'm just gonna take a little paint so you can see it. You can just sort of scrape in a basic shape here. See, there's part of the roof. See, and then it comes down maybe like so. And the other side. And here. And then you need something there and there. You can do this just to sort of build yourself a little outline. And then you can start filling it in. And we'll take Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of the dark sienna in it, and we'll begin building us a house right here. Zoop, just like so. Really push this into the fabric. Push hard, very hard. I want this, I want this color to just grind right into the, right into the material. Brown, a little bit of dark sienna. There we go. There we go. Tell you what, maybe, maybe this old fellow that lives here is like me. He needs a needs a little shed out here, so we can go ahead and lay that in right now. Zoop. Got to make those little noises, or it doesn't work. See? Right now we're just blocking in color. We could care less. We'll come back and separate all this. Yeah, I know. You're saying, Bob, you really, you really done it this time. And you may be right. May be right. We'll see. Now we're putting a little roof up here. 
Yeah, there we are. Doesn't that look just like a house? Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Well, we'll work on it a little bit more and then see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to take some bright red, some Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna, a little touch of, little touch of white in there just to, just to brighten it up some. Just to brighten it up. There we go. Now then, this time, let's use the little edge of the knife. See that little roll of paint? Okay, let's go right up there. Now then, go back here on this back, and let's start like that. And it doesn't matter where you go here, because you can just cut it off when you, when you put the other building on there. Look at that. Looks like happy little shingles back here. That easy. This is an old, tired building. Now then, let's come right down in here. See? And we pick out this next eave. There it is. Comes right across there. You knew that. Now then. Take a... This is a titanium white. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of black to that and make a nice gray color. Titanium white with a little midnight black. Oh, that's much nicer. Much nicer. There we go. There we go. Now, go back with a tiniest little bit of black. And let's put some, let's put some lines in here like boards. All right. Then with a clean knife, we just grab it and pull down just a tiny bit so it picks up the least little touch. Look at there, look at there. It makes all kinds of old looking effects. Okay. All kinds of old things. Now then, now then. I'll take some more the midnight black and titanium white, make us that gray color again. Pull it out and let's go right up in here and pull this one down. Just pull him down, pull him down. Doesn't matter if a little bit of that brown mixes in, makes it look old, makes it, see there? Look at there, all those pretty things happen. And I'm gonna go right along this edge here and firm it up with just a little dark color, just so it's a little bit firmer. Back to my black. And we can go right through here and put, see, just put these little rascals back in there. And don't, don't get these too perfect. You want this to be an old house. This wood is weathered. And it's really caught the devil out here. Now, barely touch. Just graze the canvas. Caress the canvas. Barely, barely touch. Give it these little pull downs. Let some, ooh, there's a nice one, see? You can sit there with your one-haired brush for a week trying to get those, and, and here it just sort of happens. Okay, now then, let's do, let's do the other side. I want a darker gray. Ooh, there's a nice gray for this side of the building. So maybe, tell you what, maybe even a little darker yet. I want it distinctly different. Much darker, yes. This one's in shadow. You don't see as much. Don't see as much. But we can still see that there's little boards running up through there like that. Same thing. Grab them. Give them a little pull. Make them look old. That building, that building looks as old as me. And that's old. All right. Now then. Maybe. We'll take some black. Let's come right up in here and put a happy little window. Need a way to see out. Maybe the door is on the other side of this house. But have to have a window over here so you can see what's happening. And, and we'll take a little bit of light color. It's very light gray. And just go around, sort of clean up the edges. And it just cleans up the edges. Makes your little window look good. Now, maybe, look at there. Maybe like so. I know next year I want curtains in there. And 
that easy. We got a nice little, nice little window. Now then, got to finish up the roof on this side over here. So let's go right up in here. And we'll take the small edge of the knife again and just pop in some, some little roof indications, little shingles. See, do it just like you really, really lay shingles. You do the bottom one first and then work upward so they overlap. That keeps Mr. Rain from slipping up under. If you start at the top and work down, he'd be in bad trouble. And you paint them the same way. Of course, this is a lot faster than putting shingles on a roof. My father was a, was a carpenter, and when I was young, he gave me a little taste of this. My job was carrying all this up on the roof. Boy, they were heavy. Son of a gun, worked me to death. I decided I want to be a painter. There, now we got a lot of, a lot of shingles on there. I'm gonna take a little bit of the, the white. Now then, let's come right along in here. And I'm just gonna put a little white on here, just to make that stand out so you really, really just pops out at you. We'll take a little brown and white and give him just a little touch of highlight. Make him look like little stones and rocks playing through here. Okay. Well, let's put a few little sticks here and there. Here we're just cutting through the paint using the point of the knife. But it shows distance. It shows all these different planes. Okay. We'll put just a little bit of magic quite under here. Give us a little water line. Go. And a few little sticks over here. Okay, but you see what you can do in just a few minutes with an almighty brush and an almighty knife and a beautiful painting in your heart. All you have to do is let it out. A few more sticks. Maybe one of the easiest ways that I've found to do barns and buildings of any kind is take your knife and scrape out a basic shape where you want him to live. This removes excess paint and allows you to lay it out without really being committed. Maybe we'll do a weird shaped one today. What the heck? You can do any shape barn in your painting that you want. Okay, now come over here, do something like that. And down here, down here, whatever. But see how easy it is to lay that whole thing out and you're not committed. Now we can go in here and start with some white. Let's go in here, watch here. Well, let me do it this way. This is the best way so you stay in the lines. So you just sort of outline it, just sort of outline it. That'll help you keep it nice and smooth on the edges, then pull down. See how straight that line is? Isn't that sneaky? I'll look for those easy ways to do things. Roof comes right down like that. Right on down, and over here, we need a little bit of snow. There it is. Boy, I wished I could build a barn that quick. Now, with Van Dyke Brown, I'm gonna come right in here and put a little eave or an overhang. Now I'm gonna use some Van Dyke Brown and dark sienna sort of mixed together. And we'll start off by just putting some dark in here. We need dark in order for our light to show have to have dark for the light to show. You put light against light, you have nothing. Dark against dark, you have nothing. Painting is just continually dark against light, light against dark. Okay, clean off the old knife. Now then, let's put some color in there. I'll take some dark sienna, some bright red, mix it together. Let's put the least little touch of white in there. Ooh, that's nice. Don't overmix it. Leave it about like so. Cut off a little roll of paint. See how even there it's all mixed and marbled. Okay, let's go right up here. Now I'm going to just take the edge of the knife and just let it sort of bounce across. Now if you get some down the snow like I am here, don't worry. You just take it right off. We just zip that off. Don't worry about it. See, a little bit right in there. Now we take our knife 
and do a cabinectomy. That easy. And see, it gives the impression of a lot of little boards. That easy. Now a darker color, and we come right in here. There we go. That's a little darker, not as enough light's going to hit in there. Now, I'll show you a little trick. Let's get us some brown on the knife here, and come right down here and look. See, we have that little roll of paint on the knife. That's so important that you have that little roll of paint. Now, maybe, maybe there's a little opening under here, so just put dark right here. There, just a little bit of dark. Now over in here, see, we'll put some more boards, like that. And with our dark, we'll continue that opening. Isn't that neat? Looks like there's a place under there the chickens could go at night. When I was a kid, I had all kinds of little chickens. We put a post there so it don't fall down. The only problem, though, I wasn't a very good chicken farmer. They turned out to be my friends, <laughs> and I wouldn't kill them. Shoot, I, we ended up with a bunch of chickens, and we're hungry. But I had my buddies. Okay, I'm going to take a little brown. This is Van Dyke brown. A little of the bright red in it, and I got the little knife now, and I've cut off that little roll of paint with a little knife. And over here, I just want to show, we we'll just go in a different angle. See, now this board's going that way. And when you're doing these old buildings, I don't know if you can see that, maybe if I make it a little bit lighter, you can see it a little better. There, see. When you're doing these, you design your barn. However you want it. Barns grow all kinds of ways, however the old farmer wanted to make them. All right, now then, let's put some snow around the edges here. To do that, I'm going to dip the fan brush right in. paint on the knife, right out here on the edge. There we go. And figure out where you want the roof for your little cabin to be. And let's say, let's say maybe the cabin's going to be right here, right about here. So you touch and pull. Just touch it and pull. It gives you gives you the roof for your cabin. Touch and pull. Just let that paint slide right off your knife. There we go. Now we need to do the other side of the cabin, the other side of the eave up here, so we'll use the small edge of the knife, and we can just, that easy, put the other side on. Okay, now let's go into some Van Dyke Brown and we can begin working on some detail here. Now maybe there's an eave right there. One stroke going across. And we need a front on this little cabin. Zoop, there we are. Other side. And this is where you begin to straighten him up and get him like you want him. And the side here, a little bit. Okay, now we can straighten out the front. And we'll take a little bit of, little bit of brown and white, and we'll make the front of the cabin a little bit lighter. Barely, barely touch. Barely, barely touch. Just to make it look like old wood, and we'll go back with a little bit of the dark, put some shadows in. Make it look very old. And we need a door in that cabin, so I'll take just a tiny bit of the Van Dyke brown on the knife, and we'll put a little door. Just pull across, that's all there is to it. And we need some highlight around the door. So, that easy. We'll highlight around the door. Maybe this is an old slab cabin, so we'll just cut some slabs in here. That simple. All right, and we got a pretty good looking little cabin going there. Now we can straighten the bottom out by just scraping off this excess paint. This is sort of how you shape your cabin can check your angles, make sure they're just right. And you can take and add a little bit of paint just to make nice firm edges here. This is just a little bit of the titanium white. There. And maybe we'll have a snow bank coming down the side here. So let's get rid of some of this brown. Like that. I'll take some Van Dyke brown. Maybe there's a happy little bridge here. And I tell you what, maybe it's behind these bushes and all you can see is the part that goes over the water. So let's have it come up and then maybe 
like this. We'll put some character in it. And then it has a little bend in it. There. Let me get the small knife. The small knife will do a little better for that. I'll put some little post on here. See, there's a little post. There's one. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that cute? There we go. That one goes over behind the bush. Then, take the big knife. I we'll have to put a little rail up here. We don't, we don't want anybody to fall off this bridge and get wet. See there? I knew you could do that. A little brown and white. Tiniest little bit of paint. Now I want to go along here and just show the indication of a little highlight here and there. Just to brighten him up, make him sing in the sunshine. Used to be a song about singing in the sunshine. Okay, back to my small knife. And I'll put a little indication here on these posts. Little knife gets right in there and does these little things. There. Yeah, maybe here and there the light really hits it. You could add a little, just a little sparkle of white. Just don't overdo. Just here and there. Maybe the light's zinging through there and hits right there too. Little bitty house that lives right there. And we just want some indications way back here in the distance. Little house, he lives there. Little barn, little shed, whatever. And all we're doing here is just laying in the dark. We'll come back and put in a few little highlights and, and fix him all up, make him nice and pretty. Right now you're just trying to get some dark on your canvas. Okay, good. Now let's take a little a bit of the titanium white a little brown, make a color that's somewhat lighter than what we have on the canvas. And you don't want to mix this color dead. Add a little blue to it and gray it down. And I'm going to use a small edge of the knife this time. Same way, a small edge, and it's just a little bit of paint right out there on that small edge of the knife. Good, okay? Now, let a little light just bounce and play right along there. Just like so. I don't want a lot of color on this, just enough so it stands out and it's lighter than the side. I want the side to be very dark. It's in shadow. The old shadow's got it. There we go. And maybe right along this edge here, a little light plays right through there. There. Good. Just to make that little edge stand out. There we go. Now, maybe. There's some boards in there, we just cut through. And I know somebody's saying, well, you got to have a door in there so you can get into the old shed. Well, okay, give you a door, cut around it. There we are, and then quick we have, and maybe over here, right there, right there. I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's build us, let's build us a happy little barn that lives right there. We'll come this way now, and then Drop over. Just sort of visualize these things in your mind. Put them on the canvas. Put them on the canvas. And these are far away. They're small, so we're not worried about tremendous detail. Fill this in, just like we did the other one. We need that dark color so the light will show. Little edge of the knife. Do -do. There some of this down and all we're doing here is just trying to cover the canvas with dark color now I'll take a little permanent red and Van Dyke brown I'll just mix it together real quick here like so we'll put some shingles up here on this roof just touch start at the bottom and work up this is just just the way they put shingles on the roof too start at the bottom work up so they overlap each other. And that'll give you the indication of a few little, a few little shingles. A little highlight along the edge. Right along there. And down. Okay. Now, now then, once again, we need to put a little highlight on the front here. And, 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 
the old barn here needs a door, big door. This is where the cow had to go in. Let's move that out. A little bit of color around the edges. Maybe this old farmer, maybe he's like me. I never have enough room. Let's give, let's give him a shed out here on his barn. He needs a, a little shed. Maybe this is where the chickens live. Chickens need a place to live, too. And we'll put a little board or two right there. There we go. A little bit more of this roof color. It was permanent red with a little Van Dyke brown. And just put some indications right there. Good. And that quick we get a, we have an indication of a happy little barn back here. And let's put some more dark. Now this, this part of the can down in the snow, right out there. Let's see. We decided we was gonna have some buildings out here. Maybe one of the easiest ways that I've found to make a building is take the knife and just firmly scrape out a basic shape does two things. Most important, it removes excess paint. Secondly, though, it allows you to lay out your buildings. Let's put a shed on this one. What the heck? Maybe that's an old barn with a shed on it. Like that. But you can lay out a whole series of buildings. Maybe there's more than one. Right there. We don't care. Without being committed. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to say. You're not committed at this point. Let's take a little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna, and mix it together. Van Dyke and dark sienna, just use them together. And now we can figure out here where the dark part is. And in my world, I think it's right here. And you don't have to stay in the lines that you scraped out. You can go anywhere you want with this. There are no rules here other than it should make you happy. And whatever works is good. Whatever works. Painting is such an individual thing. Every person who's ever painted has a different opinion of why it works and how it should work. But I believe that it's an individual thing. And if you're happy with your painting, then the world's happy with it. What's the old saying about if you smile, the world smiles with you and all that? Same thing here. We were going to have a shed here. I forgot. There. Now we can come back, still using a knife, take a little bit of paint. Maybe, maybe this building here is straight on. Let me get a little more paint there. Straight on toward us. And sort of allow that to break sometime. It makes it look like the snow sort of sliding down. Straight down. Oops, got a little doer hanging off there. here for the little shed. There he is. Well, it looks like icicles right there already. There. Something about like that. And that's quick enough to give us an idea of a little building. We take a little brown, a little white, mix them together. A little brown, a little white. Oh, that's nice. Don't over mix. Touch. Just pull gently down. In my mind, I think this little shed's not going to get as much light, so it's going to be a little darker back here. So I'll make it a little darker so he's pushed back a little more. I think, in my mind, this side of the house will be a little lighter than the front or the barn, whatever this is. I don't know what it is. Whatever you want it to be. A little more brown in there. This side over here now is very dark in comparison. It's sort of, this is sort of like a three-quarter view. Knife. Let's use a little edge. And maybe there's a few little windows in here. Just doop, doop, zing, oh, there. See, whole line of little windows so that maybe the cows live in here and they need a place to look out. <laughs> they want to see what's happening out here, too. There. We'll put a couple little windows in there. It's your world. You decide what's in there and what's not. As I've mentioned many times before, I sort of make up little stories in my mind. 
I'm just pulling a little brown through there to make it look like old boards that are living in there. But these little stories, they really help me. I don't know if they'll help you, but I believe they will. Make up little stories about your world. Boy, that's some rough looking snow there. Old snow laying up there. We need some on this other building. There we are, a little bit there. All right. Now sometimes when you have the clear there, this doesn't want to stick too good. If that's the case, add a little liquid white to make your paint a little thinner, then it'll stick. That's all you have to do. And over here on this side, put a little snow out there. A little touch of brown and for the E with the overhang. Like that. Shoot, we're about to have an old build in there. And I want these to look like they've, they've had a rough life, real rough life. We'll take our big brush, a little bit of snow right there. Maybe there's a little shadow in the snow. All we have to do is put a little blue in there for that, a little darker blue. All right, over here, cut that off like that. This side like that, and we're in business. So we have two little buildings out here. A little bit more of the blue color. I put some blue down here, but it's not as dark as I want it to be. I want it to be a little bit. The fact in it, look at that, it's setting down in the snow. Right out there. Let's see. We decided we was going to have some buildings out here. Maybe one of the easiest ways that I've found to make a building is take the knife and just firmly scrape out a basic shape. It does two things. Most important, it removes excess paint. Secondly, though, it allows you to lay out your buildings. Let's put a shed on this one. What the heck? Maybe that's an old barn with a shed on it. Like that. But you can lay out a whole series of buildings. Maybe there's more than one. Right there. We don't care. Without being committed anyway. That's what I'm trying to say. You're not committed at this point. There. Let's take a little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna, mix it together. Van Dyke and dark sienna. Just use them together. And now we can figure out here where the dark part is, and in my world, I think it's right here. And you don't have to stay in the lines that you scraped out. You can go anywhere you want for this. There are no rules here other than it should make you happy, and whatever works is good. Whatever works. Painting is such an individual thing. Every person who's ever painted has a different opinion of why it works and how it should work. But I believe that it's an individual thing. And if you're happy with your painting, then the world's happy with it. What's the old saying about if you smile, the world smiles with you and all that? Same thing here. We were gonna have a shed here, I forgot. There. Now we can come back, still using a knife, take a little bit of paint. Now maybe, maybe this building here is straight on. Let me get a little more paint there. Straight on toward us. And sort of allow that to break sometime. It makes it look like the snow sort of sliding down. Straight down. Oops, got a little doer hanging off there. There. All right, a little bit more here for the little shed. There he is. Well, it looks like icicles right there already. Something about like that. And that's quick enough to give us an idea of a little building. We take a little brown, a little white. Mix them together. A little brown, a little white. Oh, that's nice. Don't over mix. Touch. Just pull gently down. Now in my mind, I think this little shed's not going to get as much light, so it's going to be a little darker back here. So I'll make it a little darker so he's pushed back a little more. 
I think in my mind this side of the house will be a little lighter than the front or the barn, whatever this is. I don't know what it is. Whatever you want it to be. There's a little more brown in there. This side over here now is very dark in comparison. It's sort of, this is sort of like a three quarter view. All right, clean off the knife. She was a little edge, and maybe there's a few little windows in here. Just doop, doop, three, four, there. See, whole line of little windows, so that maybe the cows live in here and they need a place to look out. <laughs> they want to see what's happening out here too. There. We'll put a couple little windows in there. It's your world. You decide what's in there and what's not. As I've mentioned many times before, I sort of make up little stories in my mind. I'm just pulling a little brown through there to make it look like old boards that are living in there. But these little stories, they really help me. I don't know if they'll help you, but I believe they will. Make up little stories about your world. Boy, that's some rough looking snow there. Old snow laying up there. We need some on this other building. There we are, a little bit there. All right. Now sometimes when you have the clear there, this doesn't want to stick too good. If that's the case, add a little liquid white to make your paint a little thinner, then it'll stick. That's all you have to do. And over here on this side, put a little snow out there. A little touch of brown. And for the eave or the overhang, like that. Shoot, we're about to have an old build in there. And I want these to look like they've, they've had a rough life, real rough life. Here we'll take our big brush. A little bit of snow right there. Maybe there's a little shadow in the snow. All we'd have to do is put a little blue in there for that. A little darker blue. All right, over here. Cut that off like that. This side like that. And we're in business. So we have two little buildings out here. So let's begin thinking about our barn. Let's start out with, we just use plain old Van Dyke Brown. Pull the paint out as flat as you can get it. Take the knife, just cut across, and get that small roll of paint right out on the edge of the knife. Now then, we have to start off and make some big decisions here. Where does our barn live? Maybe? Shoot, just make a decision, maybe right in here. Maybe there'll be like an old silo thing out here. Right about here. We'll just make a, a basic line where we want this to go. Maybe it's about this wide. And all we're looking for here is just basic shape. Just really push in some color. Add a little dark sienna to that. Van Dyke Brown, dark sienna. Now then, I want to take the small knife and just begin rubbing this. Rubbing it, it'll become very soft and very smooth. It looks almost like it was done with a brush. There, we wipe off the excess paint, but rub it. There we go. Okay, now then maybe let's put some, maybe there's some snow up on this little thing. Let's go back up here. Let's go right up in here. Maybe let's touch right here, pull down. Soon, just sort of decide where that's going to be and just drop it in. A little bit right over in here, pull it. Tell you what, maybe, maybe this one's got a little doer, it comes out here, wherever you want it. All kinds of little things. Go back with our brown and let's just fill this in. There we go. Just straight brown. And all we're doing right now is just blocking in some basic color. You could do this with a, shoot, you could do this with a paint roller. Any old way. Well, firm up that edge a little. There we go. Just pull it down, straighten it out a little. I'm gonna take a, a one inch brush and very lightly just pull right over the top of this where we've taken the knife and rubbed it. So make it very smooth and very interesting. 
Now then, let's take and get the indication here and there of a few old boards back here. All we're doing is taking a small roll of the Van Dyke brush, just barely touching, barely touching. Now lightly, lightly, one here and some air. There we go. Now, let's decide where the rest of our old barn is going to live. Maybe, let's go right up in here. Maybe it comes down right here and then turns right over all of our work, just wherever you want it. And the other side over here, maybe this one comes down like so, right down to about there. Okay, let's put a little, maybe there's a little doer right out here. We'll just sketch that in with our knife. Now, we want to block all this in with color. And I'm just using just basically Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna here and there in it. And all we're doing is just blocking in color, blocking in color. Okay, tell you what, maybe here and there, add a little touch of phthalo blue right there. That's pretty. Doesn't look so hot right now, but when we go back and begin blending all this together, you'll be surprised. Those little things will make it look like shadows in there and stuff. Experiment with different colors. Maybe over here we'll have something come out like that. We'll have a roof. See there? Just sort of lay it out. Lock in the color. Boy, I know at home you're saying, Bob, you really made a mess this time. You may be right as rain, too. There we go. Okay. Now, once you get this basic color blocked in here, now all I'm going to do is take the small knife and just like we did before, begin rubbing it. Continually wiping the knife on paper towel. Can you pick up some colors like the yellow ochre? Put a little yellow ochre in here. Rub very firmly. Wipe the knife. Continually wiping the knife, removing that excess paint. There we go. And at home, you have all kind of time. You can make this look so unreal. It's beautiful what you can do. Just taking this knife and rubbing it, making tiny little circles. People will think you've worked for long periods of time with a very delicate little brush. There. And the more you rub it, the smoother it becomes. Just makes some beautiful effects. Beautiful effects. There. You know, one of the questions I'm asked repeatedly is, where do I get all the ideas for these paintings that we do? People send me ideas from all over the country. This one came from an idea that a lady sent me. And if there's things that you want to see painted that we're not painting here, drop me a line. Let me know what it is. I'd love to hear from you. And that's where we get most of these ideas, as I said before. It's from people writing in and telling us what they want to see. There we are. Now then, just removing excess paint. But at the same time, we're pushing that color right into the fabric. There. Okay, a little bit over here. And play with colors, like we can take a little dark sienna and add here and there. A little lizard and crimson. Shoot, just put some of these nice colors. Wherever you think they should be, just break it up a little. It makes it so much more interesting. Continually wiping the knife. Already we have a pretty good basic shape of a bar in there. If you want a light spot here and there, take a little bit of the titanium white and it'll lighten up an area. Just rub it in. And the small knife seems to work much better than the big knife for this rubbing. It does just beautiful things. And I'm pushing hard enough that I'm actually bending the blade a little bit. But it's very flat. Okay. Now 
Now then, let's take, let me find a two inch brush here. We'll just use it. Now very lightly, just grab this and just pull it. Gently, gently, smooths it right out. Makes a beautiful effect. Isn't that neat? And you can use this to do all kinds of buildings and wooden structures. Anything that you want to do with it. Man, tell you what, let's put, let's put, pull that Van Dyke brown out as flat as we can get it and cut off the tiniest little roll of paint. Just right out on the end of the blade. Now then, begin thinking, begin thinking about all the boards that's in this barn and just sort of let the knife touch and bounce just just let it play on there very very little paint is coming off the knife we just want the indication of a lot of little boards there we are okay and just wherever you want them wherever you want them I like to do paintings like this. We travel all over the country and do shows for PBS stations and et cetera all over, help them with their fundraising activities. But we do a lot of paintings like this and they are very, very popular. And when we travel and do these shows, we meet some of the most fantastic people in the country. So if we get to your area, come out and see us. I'd love to spend some time with you and talk to you, see some photographs of what you're painting. It's a good time for us to get together and just, just chew the fat for a while. There. And I tell you what, if you want to know when we're going to be in your area, drop me a line. Just give me a name and address and we have a little mailing list that we maintain. We'll send you a card when we're going to be in your area. You can come out and see us. You can just drop it and carry the address at the end of the station. They'll send it to me. Okay. Now then, very lightly, touch and pull down. I just want to sort of bring that together. Just barely, barely touching it. Shoot, that looks like my house about to fall down. Mm. Okay, now, same little line of paint. Come right up in here. Maybe right in here, there's just a little doer, little board right across there, see? Just sort of break it up. Now, while we're up there, take the knife and we'll put a little little window up there, a little, little something up there. Maybe down here. Let's, let's come right down in here and maybe there's a big door down here. Zoom. Just like so. Just straight Van Dyke brown. And this needs to be a big old door so they can get the cow in and out. Big cow lives here. Maybe over in here. It's a little window. See? It's just straight brown. Maybe there's a smaller one right here. Just sort of make up little, little ideas in your mind, drop them on. Here's, a, there's another door. Old barns, they have a lot of doors and windows on them. So just put them in wherever you want them. Shoot, maybe over here there's one. There he is. That easy. Okay, maybe, maybe a window here. So we have a whole line of openings now in this thing. We can take just a little bit of the titanium white and just sort of highlight that. Just highlight it so they stand out. Just cut across a little white with your knife. Just run right over there. Just make some little rascals jump out at you. There. Can't tell you what. You know, if you were if you were walking in and out of here and taking the cow in and out and it was raining, you'd probably get wet. So let's put a maybe there's a maybe there was a porch over this old barn or some type of roof up here to keep the rain off. So we'll just put that on right like that. Just straight, straight Van Dyke brown. Okay, now maybe we need an old rail to hold it up here, an old post. Well, that one's sort of crooked. Maybe that old barn's about to fall over. We'll give him another one right there, wherever you want him. Take a little touch of white, give him a little highlight so he stands out. Maybe there's some snow up here. Just some titanium white on the knife. This is gonna be a winter scene. Maybe, maybe Jack Frost has dropped a lot of snow up here. Just like so. Okay, I'm gonna straighten that up a little bit. Don't look too straight. 
not happy with it. There we go. That's better. Now, I tell you what, maybe in the background back here, maybe there was a tree or two. Shoot, let's put a tree. We'll sneak right in there before we put the snow on the roof. We we'll use a little black, a little crimson. Let's go right up in here. Maybe, there we are. Let's have a little evergreen that lives back here behind this barn. There. He comes right down to the roof. We'll give him a little friend. Shoot, right there. Take another fan brush. I'm gonna dip it into a little bit of liquid white. The liquid white's only to thin the titanium white. Then I'll go up here and get a little bit of the thalo blue. Thalo blue, liquid white, titanium white. Let's put some highlights on these. So pretty. Thalo blue and white will just make those little rascals just really stand out. Beautiful little tree up there. There we go. We can come back now. Let's put some snow up here on the roof. Shoot. A little titanium white, just that little roll of paint. And let's just bring it right down, just following the roof line. There it comes. Just touch it. By loading that little roll of paint on your knife, it'll come right off there, just like so. Maybe over here. Oop. There we go, right down this side. And over here, tell you what let's do here. Let's just make this all covered with snow. This is a, another part of the roof over here. Maybe it comes out down. There. Now then, let's take, I have a little tiny bit of that halo blue and white left here. I'm gonna take a least little roll of that on the knife, tiny little bit. And right along the edges here, we're just going to put a little bit of that blue and white. Just to make it look like the snow's thick. A little under here, just a little shadow under here. Makes him sparkle. There we go. Okay. We can even add a little of that blue and white right under there. Wherever you want it. Just think about where there'd be some little shadows and some little things happening in there, and that's where you put it. Okay, now let's have some snow in the background. Right on the ground. But isn't that a super nice, easy little way to make a fantastic barn? Shoot, it works too. Just take a little of the white on the fan brush. Let's go back here and decide where our snow is going to be. Maybe there's some wire still left in there. We'll just go right through the Van Dyke Brown with a knife. And let's just decide where our wire lives. There we go. That easy. Just use the heel of the knife or the, the back point of the knife. Press very firm. And just literally put your wire wherever you want it. Just cut it in there. Isn't that fantastic? Well, we have three strands. Got to keep that. Maybe there's a little sheep that lives in there. We got to keep him in there. The little rascal will get away on you. I'm going to take a little dark sienna on the fan brush. Let's have some fun here. Little dark sienna. Okay, maybe there's some little grassy things that grow out here. Just take the brush, push, make it bend upward. Just push it firmly. Maybe there's all kinds of little grassy things. This guy didn't cut his yard. He's like me. I'm the world's worst yard keeper. A little bit over here, too. There. Maybe there's a little bump. There, wherever you want them. Just, just sort of make a big decision, drop them in. Off you go, have some fun. Take the fan brush. Allow it to pick up a tiny bit of that color and pull it out. That way it looks like shadows coming down. Just automatically. There. Okay. Now our liner brush, a little paint thinner. And go right back into that dark sienna. And let's just pop up a few little, few little sticks and twigs and all those things, wherever you want them. A little more white so we can see what we got. Good, good. Very nice. Now let's do, let's take a little brown. This is just straight Van Dyke brown. 
I'm gonna start making some decisions. Maybe there's some land that lives back here. Just, all I'm doing here, just pushing in some color. Just like so. Just a little color. No big deal right now. No big deal. We'll take a little white, a little white, a little, little dark sienna. Pull it out, cut us off a little bit. Then barely touch. I just put the indication of a little highlight here and there. I don't want too much. This is too far back. It's too dark back in here. It's too dark. I need to get over this little stream. So let's do that. Let's have some fun. I'll take some Van Dyke Brown. Maybe there's a happy little bridge here. And I tell you what, maybe it's behind these bushes and all you can see is the part that goes over the water. So let's have it come up. And then maybe like this. We'll put some character in it. And then it has a little bend in it. There. Let me get the small knife. The small knife will do a little better for that. I'll put some little post on here. See, there's a little post. There's one. Look at that. Isn't that cute? There we go. That one goes over behind the bush. Then, take the big knife. I we'll have to put a little rail up here. We don't, we don't want anybody to fall off this bridge and get wet. See there? I knew you could do that. A little brown and white. Tiniest little bit of paint. Now I want to go along here and just show the indication of a little highlight here and there. Just to brighten him up, make him sing in the sunshine. There used to be a song about singing in the sunshine. Okay, back to my small knife. And I'll put a little indication here on these posts. Little knife gets right in there and does these little things. There. Yeah, maybe here and there the light really hits it. You could add a little, just a little sparkle of white. Just don't overdo. Just here and there. Maybe the light's zinging through there and hits right there too. Gives it a little sparkle. Makes that in rocks. You use some dark sienna here, and a little bit of white. And maybe, maybe right along in here, we're beginning to see some, some nice rocky areas. Still want this to stay quite dark. Quite dark. Just all kinds of things happening. I'll tell you what, let's do that up here. Now watch here, watch here. This is so much fun because now you can make a decision that there's a big cliff or a sheer drop off right here, a bank. That's the word I'm looking for. And you can just bring that around and leave this right in front. You can make all kinds of little things that go up in there, like so. Let's have some fun. Now sometimes some of these stones get... Let's get the small knife and we can take some dark brown, come right in here and just begin adding all kinds of little little foots on these stones. Just bring them straight down. If you get a little that in the water, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's, can fix easy. See, just all kinds of little, little things, a little bit of detail. Take a little Van Dyke brown, a tiny bit of umber in it, and we'll just put, we'll put a happy little tree trunk right here. And like so. And there, I'll give him a little arm out here. And most of this is gonna disappear. We're really not worried too much about it. Some of it will show through the leaves when we put them on. And we'll take a little bit of white and add the same color to it. And we'll make us a little highlight. This is just white with a little bit of brown, a little bit of umber in it. Just put some little indications here and there. Maybe there's a few more little things that live back here. Just indications. Maybe over here is a nice little tree. Give him a little trunk too. Don't want him to be left out. Okay, now we can go in here and we'll take a little bit of cad yellow, 
sap green. And we can begin laying some highlights on these. Touch, push the brush upward, make it bend a little bit. Brush needs to bend. Very quiet. Don't want it to get too bright yet. We'll brighten it up in the foreground. Back here in the background, maybe there's a little road. Maybe it just goes right around the corner back here. It just comes right out like this. Straight Van Dyke Brown to start with. Gotta put the dark on so the light will show. <clears throat> okay, now we can take some brown and white. I'm gonna put a touch of blue into it. Just a touch, just a touch. And then lay a little bit of highlight on here. The old road it goes through the woods. Now with a little tiny bit more of the yellow and green, I wanna set that road down into the painting. Let some of the bushes come up over the road. That helps create the illusion of distance like it's going back around the corner. We don't know where it's going, don't care. Just let it go. All righty. Now, I'm going to go back into some good dark color here. Sap green, Van Dyke brown. Maybe this time we'll even add a little bit of Prussian blue to it to really darken it up. And right in here, we'll throw some very, very dark color. Mostly green, though. Very dark. And some on this side. Dyke brown, sap green, tiny little bit of Prussian blue. I want this to be very, very dark. Okay. I think it's time we started playing a little bit with the bridge. This is where the fun starts. And probably one of the easiest ways for you to learn how to, to do these fantastic little buildings and bridges and stuff. Let's go in here and very gently Let's just scrape out a basic shape, and maybe we're looking at a covered bridge and we're looking right through it so we can see the road behind it. So let's go right up in here and just take and lay in a very basic shape. <laughs> and I know this is gonna, this is gonna drive you up the wall when you start scraping out all your beautiful painting. And I don't wanna kill all this. I wanna be able to see it through the bridge. So we'll just take that and try to save quite a bit of it here. I want to be able to see through it. So just scrape out your basic shape, like so. This gets rid of some of the loose, thin paint and makes the next layer of paint stick much easier. This will help you. It's also a nice way to sort of lay out your perspective a little bit. Okay, now we can go right into some Van Dyke Brown and let's go right up here and begin building our little covered bridge. Just recently, I found out while I was here in Indiana why they built covered bridges. I always thought it was a place you could go and get out of the rain or something. And the reason they covered these bridges was to protect the structure so the weather wouldn't get to it. It really wasn't the reason I thought it was at all. So I learned something. Okay, here I'm going to just lift upward with a little brown. All I'm going to do is fill all this in with the brown, and then we can begin working on detail. Just fill in the entire thing with nothing but Van Dyke Brown. There we go. Make us a nice edge. Right down like that. Firm that edge up. Now this old bridge, he just had a hard life. He was not in the best of repair. Give him a side over here. And one here. There we go. Now we can just fill all this in. That's the beauty of using a big knife. You can just drop things right in, no problem. 
Okay, now we have to do this bridge in stages, and we do the part that's farthest away first and come forward. So I want to be able to see through this bridge. So we'll do the back of it first and then come forward. Down here we can just fill all that in. Just fill it in. A lot of brown. There we go. A lot of brown paint. There. I know you're you're sitting at home saying, boy, he's he's messed up this time. And you may be right. But let's just see what happens here. So <clears throat> in the background want very, very little light back here. Not a great deal is going to show back here. Just some little indications. Don't overdo. Just some very faint indications. So when we put the front of the bridge on, it'll show better. Okay, now let's put a little tiny highlight here. This is just a little brown and white. Just a little. Little light playing right across there. Don't want too much. Just a little. Now we can start working on the front of the bridge. I take some brown, some Van Dyke brown, some umber, and white. Make this look like old wood. Don't overmix your paint. Leave it sort of marbly here. So that way all these colors will happen right here in your bridge. Okay, now let's let's just take the small edge of the knife and begin making some boards. Now maybe maybe you can just scratch a line right through here if it'll help you a little bit to give you an idea of where you want the front of the bridge to be. And that'll be our stopping point. So we take the small edge of the knife and just start making some boards. This one's made out of old slab boards, just barely touching, pulling down. There we are. And leave some space in between them. As I say, these old bridges, some of them are in bad repair. They've really been beat to death. Just want to make it look like old boards hanging here. There we go. Now then. Let it come all the way down here. Just put you some boards in. Why, that bridge has really had a rough life. Maybe there's a little beam right here that we can see. Comes right across. Okay, and now we can straighten up this edge a little, give him a little more distance, a little more depth in the in the bridge. There we are. This is just straight Van Dyke brown. Now, if you wanted to, you can take a little bit of brown and create some boards here. I've just got a little tiny bit of brown on the knife, and just touching, just to create the illusion of wooden planks. Look at that. Did you ever think that an old covered bridge would be this easy to make? And just let a little of it run down. So, now then, I want to leave this area right in here, very, very dark, to make it look like there's a recessed area and water down there. Might even take and add 
a little bit of brown right down here at the bottom. Really, really very dark. Very, very dark. And you can just fill the rest of the canvas up here with a little bit of sap green. Like so. Take the little liner brush and we'll take a little paint thinner and mix a little bit of this brown till it's just like water, very, very thin. And maybe, maybe there's some little cattails that live right here. So we'll just put in some little stems, like so, and then put the little cattail in there. And we just push real hard with a brush, bloop, and drop them in. See how easy that is? just to give some little indications. Make it look like there's water here without actually seeing any. There we go, just a few little indications. That's a nice one. Bloop, put a little, little fuzzy thing up on him. Okay, now, let's take the old fan brush and I'm gonna add a little of the thinner to the fan brush to make his paint a little bit thinner load up some cad yellow, yellow ochre, and we'll put some sap green into it. There we are. And now we can begin deciding where everything's at. Maybe there's some little grassy areas right here that just come right down. Right out in the front. Just like so. So bridge didn't use too much anymore, so the grass is beginning to take the road back. Nature has a way of reclaiming things. There we are. Okay, now, let's go over here and do basically the same thing. Put in a few little highlights. Leave this dark area. It'll make it look like water back in there, or like there's a recessed area where water could be. This is where you sort of clean up all the edges and bring it together. No cover bridge painting would be complete unless we had a big tree in it. So let's put a big old tree in it. To start with Van Dyke Brown. And maybe the big tree lives right about here. Big tree, a lot of brown. And we can just drop him right in. It's your world, so you put a tree where you want him. And when you're doing this at home, don't worry about copying exactly what I'm doing here. These are only guides. They're only to give you ideas and to stir your imagination and to show you how to make the equipment work. These are only guides because everyone sees nature differently. Put your dreams on canvas. Okay, let's give him a happy little limb right out here. There he goes. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe there's a big limit. There it is. Just comes right out. Sort of shadows the bridge. Keeps it nice and cool in the summer. Just recently I had the pleasure of doing some demonstrations at a covered bridge festival here in Indiana. And I met some of the most super people. Fantastic people. Yeah, some limbs. Now then, we can use a little brown and white, and I'm gonna put a touch of permanent red in it just to brighten it up a tiny little bit. And we'll come right in here and just put some highlights right on this big tree. There, just let it go. Like so.
Now next week, if you're going to paint along with us, we'll be doing a white canvas. So have the easel set up. Big old glass of tea right there beside you. I'm an iced tea freak. I was raised in the South, and everybody there likes iced tea. One habit I never got over when I moved to Alaska. While we got this brown going here, I'm going to put a couple little... Maybe there's a little fence right here. There. We'll put a little post there. Maybe there's another one right there. A little fence, you know. Sometimes maybe back in the horse and buggy day, maybe they'd had a little too much to drink and they didn't go through here too straight, so this was sort of to guide them through, maybe. There. Maybe there's, we'll put one more post out here with nothing on it. This one's already lost all of its boards. And we'll add a tiny little bit of highlight here to make these posts look right. There we go. Just drop it on. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, now, let's go up here and put some leaves on this tree. We'll just use the old big brush, and I'll just use some sap green and Van Dyke brown. First, we'll put the dark in, just to give us some indications. Just some indications. And then we'll come back and lay some highlights on all these. There we go. Let's build us a mountain. Let's build us a mountain. Today, I'm going to use just black, Van, Van Dyke brown, a little Prussian blue, We'll throw some alizarin crimson in there, too. What the heck? Looking for a color that looks very dark. It looks black. Okay. Cut off a little roll of paint. Have it right on the edge of the knife. Now then, you have to make a major decision. Where does your mountain live in your world? I think he's going to live over here. So let's go right up in here. And let's just drop us in. A nice big mountain. Nice big mountain. I like, I like to do mountains because it gives you, gives you a lot of experience with a knife. Once you learn how to do mountains with this knife, oh, it's your friend, you can do anything. Maybe this comes over here, and there's another peak that lives right there. Wherever we want them. There. If you can do mountains with this knife, you can do them. Just, or you can do rocks and stones and roads and buildings. In some of the past series, we've done entire paintings using nothing but the knife. Absolutely nothing but the knife. There. Make all kinds of beautiful effects. Okay, let's put some snow on that mountain. For that, I'm going to use titanium white. I'm going to put a little bit of black with it just to dull it down just a dollar so it's not pure white. Pull the paint out firmly. Just really get in there and, and raise the devil with it. And then cut us off that little roll of paint again. You want that to be right on the edge of the knife, okay? Now then, no pressure. Just let it touch the canvas and graze. All this touching is that roll of paint. It just grazes the canvas. Graze it, caress it. Make good friends with it. Look at that. Let that paint break and work for you. We have a very firm paint. And it's designed specifically for this technique. And it works so well. But you need a very firm, dry paint. It's most, most important. Now you have to make some big decisions. Where does these peaks live? Are they in the background, in the foreground? We'll put this one in the foreground. So, there we are. Just let them go wherever you want them. Think about where the light would strike. Okay, I'm going to take some white, use some Prussian blue, Prussian blue, some black. Looking for a gray blue color, sort of a grayish blue. 
That's not bad, something like so. Once again, our little roll of paint. Now we can come back in here and we can begin laying in all kinds of little shadows. Just follow the lay of the mountain here. See, here comes one. And to me, it looks like there's a valley right in there, so just pull it. Create that illusion. Create the illusion. There. Now then, see that peak right there? I want to push it back. Watch here. Watch here. You might have seen me do this before, but it's always fun. Just come directly, distinctly through that, and it pushes that son of a gun right on the back. And here I want to leave that dark so it looks like a nice recessed area. Leave some dark in there at times. There we go. See, here's a nice one. And here and there, there's one. You can put the indication of shadows and it causes like little ridges and all kinds of beautiful little effects, very simply. There we go, change that. Let that go wherever you want it to. But practice these mountains. It will open whole new worlds for you once you learn to, to make friends with this knife. Get a little more of the titanium white with a touch of black in it. Pull it out flat. Once again, our little roll of paint. I want to put a few highlights over here on this little mountain. Mm. This reminds me of my home in Alaska, where God was having a good day when he made Alaska. So beautiful. If you've never been there, you ought to, to go see it while it's still wild. You can see more creatures there in one day. Mm. So beautiful. My favorite uncle sent me there. Uncle Sam, you know, he, he asked me if I'd like to go up there for a while. <laughs> and if you don't go, you're going to jail. You know how Uncle Sam asked you to go. But I went up there and I fell in love with the crazy place. It is so spectacular. I was born and raised in Florida. I didn't know that things like that even existed. Never dreamed of them. There. Mm. No pressure. You want that paint to, to break. It creates all of those beautiful little effects. Just sort of bring that together right in there. Make like a little. All right. Let's use the same old dark color here. We had some black, some Prussian blue, some Van Dyke brown, lizard and crimson. Doesn't matter. Shoot. There's some dark sienna. We can throw that in there. Whatever you have. Whatever. Let me clean my knife. Boy, we got a whole mess of trees going there. Now they're just going to take a knife. Just here and there. I know those are hard to see, but there's little lines in there. Shoot, we need to brighten this picture up. I'll put some snow in it. There, a little building. Let's have, maybe, right back here against these trees. Come right up here so we can. I'm going to scrape out a basic shape. Just take the knife, scrape out a basic idea of what it is that you want here. Just scrape it out. There we go. See? Still not committed at that point. All you're doing is just scraping it out. Okay, I'll take some white. Let's put a roof on there. Need a roof. Now here's a little trick. So you can come down that edge, get all your lines nice and straight, and then when you pull this down, then you'll have a beautiful straight edge. Sneaky, huh? There we go. Now we need a little bit of snow on the other side of the roof over here, just like that. Get into some Van Dyke Brown. There we are. See there, we're putting in, all we're doing is blocking in some color. There, just blocking it in. Now we'll take some dark sienna, and some white. Very gently, very gently. Just pull straight down. Make us a nice 
boards there. Add a little Van Dyke brown to that and darken it down a little more. There. Now we can just whack off the bottom, get it the way we want it. You know what? Maybe, I'll tell you what. Let's go right up in here. Excuse my arm just a second. Hope you can see that. I'm gonna put some little things like that. And we go right up here on the top, a little, little bit of white. Maybe we'll just take and turn this into a little church that lives out here. Put a little steeple right up there. And it's all covered with snow. Boy, it's really cold out here. There, the snow laying all up around there. Now, maybe, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Maybe they're getting ready for a service and they've turned, they've turned the lights on here. They've got the lights burning in the windows. So let's just scrape out the indication of some happy little windows. I'm gonna take a little bit of cad yellow. Just put in the indication of a little light coming through those windows. There. People are gonna be arriving pretty soon. Cold day, cold day. Mm. Put on the knife. I'm just gonna pull it out very flat and then cut across. Get a little bit of paint right out here on the end of the knife. Okay, let's go up here. Let's put some, let's put some happy little clouds playing up here in the sky. And follow angles here. Angles are very important. I'm gonna take a little phthalo blue and alizarin crimson, mix it together, and we'll make a little purplish color. A little blue, alizarin crimson. The blue's many, many times stronger than the crimson. Okay, let's go right up here and we'll add a little bit of a little bit of shadow here and there. Don't want a great deal. You know, just drop this in. Go right into the white and begin just letting all these colors just sort of play together. We'll make some great big, great big fluffy soft clouds just floating around out here. And allow these colors to mix. Don't fight it. Let it happen. Let it happen. Maybe this big old cloud just runs right on off the canvas. This is your cloud, so you let it go wherever you want it to. And you can paint this entire painting with a knife if you want to. And it's super, super good practice to learn how to control the knife. Or you can do part of it with a knife, part with a brush, whatever makes you happy. And we just go right over these purplish colors and some of them will bleed through and make some beautiful things happen. There. Okay, let's go right up here. Now, if you want the color to be darker, you continue to rub it. If you want it to be nice and bright and shiny, put it on, leave it alone, get away from it. See, just don't keep working it. If you keep working it, it'll get very, very dull and go away and leave you. It'll pick up all the undercolor. So you have to make these big decisions. Okay, maybe, yeah, there it is. I love to do paintings with a knife. It really, really teaches you how to use a knife. Tell you what, I'm gonna take the least little amount of yellow ochre. I mean, tiniest, tiniest little bit. Add a little bit of color just to break it up. Now you don't want to get much of this yellow ochre because it'll touch the blue and you'll have a nice green sky. We don't want that. But a little bit of the gold color in the sky is very pretty. It just adds a little flavor to it. There we go. Hmm. Some almighty clouds. And they're very simple to do and a great deal of fun. Okay. Let 
And that easy, that easy. We got a fantastic little sky. It's very, very effective. Don't want to kill all this blue wash that you put on here. Leave some of that showing. So you have areas that are very thick, areas that are thin. Really makes your painting interesting. Okay. Now you could even take a brush and, and go back over this and really blend it if you wanted to. I want to leave it a little bit rough. I like, I like paintings that have texture to them. Okay. Maybe, maybe back in here there's a, maybe there's a happy little hill. I'll just use the same purplish color. That was thalo blue and a lizard and crimson. There we go. Now this color will look black to you. So if you wanna if you wanna test it, take a little white and put over here. There. And then you can see what color it is. Otherwise it's just gonna look black. And that's pretty good color. That's about what I'm looking for. Okay, let's go right up here and maybe maybe there lives a nice little hill. Just a little soft, gentle hill. And I'm really, really pushing that paint into the canvas. very gently rub it to make it smooth. You know, when we look at knife paintings, a lot of times knife paintings are so rough that you have to be a long way off to even recognize what it is. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can make very delicate, soft, soothe, smooth paintings just using the knife. Practice with it. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little permanent red, a little white, and maybe we'll put at least a little bit of highlight here and there. I don't want a great deal. We'll have our light coming from the left today. A little permanent red, tiny bit of white. Just enough to put a small amount of highlight up here. There we go. And just blend it together. Okay. Now this is just a little titanium white right on the bottom because I want the bottom of my little hills to be a little bit lighter than the top. Mm. Okay, maybe, I'll tell you what, let's play a little here. I'm going to use the same purplish color, but I've added white to it so it's a little bit lighter in value. And maybe over here there's a Maybe there's a hill that's farther away. We'll put it behind there. So it should be a little lighter in value. As things get closer to you, in the landscape, they should get darker. So we'll just drop this one in. That's far, far away. And it's very soft and very quiet back here. And we can bring this one right down in front of it. Now see, this one's darker. So it stands out against the lighter one. And that easy, you can make a beautiful little hill back here. Take a little bit of the light color on the bottom. And this is just titanium white added right down to the bottom. Blend it all together. and we'll put a little highlight right up there so there's a little on this hill we don't want it to be left out and follow your angles always follow these angles okay now then let's begin playing with some some little grassy areas that are way back in the back. So I'll take some cad yellow, a little yellow ochre in it, and some sap green. Looking for quite a dark green color here, just about like so. Okay, let's go right up to the canvas here. And maybe there's some little background trees that just live right along here. And all I'm doing is just barely, barely touching the canvas. Let these little trees just fall right off your knife. 
We had a little burn umber to that color. So it's not the same all over and to darken it down right here on the bottom. Just barely touching the canvas. There we go, a little more paint. Just let these happen. There. A little bit over in here. But it's unbelievable what you can do just using a big old knife. And try some of these. I think you'll find them very, very enjoyable. And they do good things to your heart. Make you happy. Make you happy. Okay. That give us some little indication of some trees a little far, far away. And at least a little bit of white down here and begin bringing this over. So I'm just using that same color. And I've just added a little white to it. And then begin pulling it. Angles are very, very important when you're doing this. Pay close attention to your angles. There we go. Let's go right up here. Okay. As it goes farther away, let it get lighter and lighter in value. And I want this part here to look like it's far away, and this over on the other side is getting closer to you. Then I'm going to take a little permanent red and just very gently add a little of that here and there. Just to break it up. A little Indian yellow. It's very transparent. Just sort of work some of these colors back and forth, make all these pretty little things happen. Okay, now over here, this is closer to you, so I'm going to add more sap green. I want this side over here to be darker. It's closer, so it should be darker. But you still need to follow those basic angles, they're very, very important. up some black and to make that we'll use some thalo green and alizarin crimson. Thalo green, alizarin crimson in about equal parts. Just mix them together and this color needs to be mixed together very well. Normally we don't worry much about mixing color. Mix this one very good. When you're mixing pick it completely up off your palette and turn it over. Okay. Now then let's go right back up in here and we can start making some, some big decisions. And maybe, maybe we'll just start touching right in here. There we go. Put some water in here, so we need to define where water and land meet. This will be our little bank when it's done. Need a nice dark color to set it off. Let's take a little of that color and just work it right down into the canvas here. Just pull it down. Just like so. Okay. Then we'll take the two and a half inch brush and just grab some of this and pull. Just enough to pull it down. 
this will end up being some reflections in the water. And pick up some of that dark green color, all the colors, pick them up, because they all reflect into the water, and just pull it straight down. And this canvas is dry, it won't pull as well as you normally, normally would do with the magic white. But we're just looking for some dark color in the water here. white and a little thalo blue in it. White and a little thalo blue. Pull it out very flat and just cut across. Get that little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. And let's go right up here. Now we can begin making some decisions here where our water is. And we just lay a little bit of this bluish color right over the top of the reflections. You don't want to cover them all up though. You don't want to lose them all. You just want to make it look like water without killing everything. There we go. Just sort of work it back and forth and play with it. Okay. Keep these lines basically straight. Water's always looking for a place to be nice and level. So keep these lines straight. And you can put as many of these in your water as you want, or as few. Either way. Step back and look at your painting ever so often. It gives you, gives you a whole different view of it. Sometimes when you're painting, you, you stay too close to it and you really can't see it. Step back. Okay, now we can... I'm going to firm up these little edges here a little. Just a touch. This is just the black color. Thalo green, lesbian crimson. There we go. Okay, let me clean my knife. And we can just very lightly bring this color right down on top of it and smooth everything out, bring it together. There we go. Allow these colors just sort of to mix and to blend and all kinds of nice things happen. Don't fight it. And the more you rub this with a knife, the softer and more, more gentle it becomes and all the colors blend together very smoothly. And you can make paintings that kind of people almost won't believe you've done them with a knife. They'll think you've done them with a very, very soft brush. Okay, maybe, tell you what, maybe go right into some sap green. Maybe there's a little tree that lives right here. This is just sap green. I'm using the little edge of the knife. Both edges work. There we go. Maybe he's got a friend that lives right over here. And once again, you have to make these big decisions. How many trees live in your world? I'm going to take just a tiny bit of cad yellow now. And just put a little highlight on this tree so he stands out and sparkles. Sun's shining on him. Why well, would be a big, strong, happy tree out here? There we go. Little shadow area right behind the tree. Remember where your light's coming from. And just put a little indication of a shadow. Okay. Now we got to do something over here on the on the other side and make some big decisions. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Tell you what, let's just take some more of this black color that we have. It's going so well. And maybe, maybe, maybe. Comes right down here. Maybe there's a little projection. It's, there it is. Comes right out in the water like that. some color underneath that and once again I'll take this whole big brush and you could do this with a knife I'm doing it with a brush because it's a little bit faster but you could certainly certainly do it using a knife and we'll add a little bit
bit of the water right over the top of that. This is Thalo Blue, titanium white. And back to our dark color, and we can continue this. There it is, it comes right down through there. You knew it all the time, didn't you? There. And I'm just putting the dark in so the light will show. You need the dark in order to show the light. A lot of paint here. There we go. Just fill all this up. And now we can go right into some sap green. Begin pulling a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre. Just sort of mix these colors right on your knife. And you can make them as bright or as dull as you want them. If you want them duller because there's black underneath, just keep rubbing. It will get duller because it'll pick up that color that's underneath. And automatically that happens. If you put yellow on top of this black color, because yellow and black make green, automatically you'll get a nice green color. Automatically. edge. Just let your knife bounce around and play. Okay. Okay, maybe, tell you what, let's have some fun. Maybe there's a big old tree here. Let's use some Van Dyke Brown. I'll put a little burn umber into it. Pull it out very flat, get that little roll of paint. And maybe, 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 yep, right there. It's a big old tree that lives right here. It goes right on off the canvas, maybe. Okay, put some, some tree trunks right up through the sky. This is where we check and see if you're brave and go right through your sky with these big brown trunks. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's give him, let's give him another arm. And you can put as many arms in your tree as you want. It's your tree. Your world. Let it go. Maybe, maybe there's another little arm lives right there. And just some indications. And we can put a few little limbs here and there. There might even be a little one right here. Trees just grow however makes them happy. So that's what they should do when you're painting them. They should grow when you're painting any way that makes you happy. It's your tree. There. Now we need a little bit of highlight on there. I'll use, I'll use a little permanent red, a little burn umber. I'm going to add a little yellow ochre into that too. There, that'll brighten it up. A little bit of paint, and we said our light's coming from the left. So let's just highlight this tree on the left side. And all I'm doing is just touching. Just touch. Canvas will pull off what it wants. And give you back what's left. Just some little highlights. And if you wanted to do this painting with a brush, you could certainly do all this with a little liner brush or even a fan brush. It would work very well. Okay, now then, we need... Let's put some leaves on this tree, huh? I'll go right into some sap green and I'll add some... I'll add some Van Dyke Brown to my sap green just to dull it down, very dark. And maybe, maybe, we'll just use a knife. We've done so much with a knife. Heck, 
we'll just drop in some basic little things here and there. And once again, you could do all this with a with your brush. It would work just as well. Just to keep it together, we'll use a knife. And you could put as many leaves as you want in your tree. Just let them go. See, there they are. As thick as you want them, as thin as you want them. And we're going to take a little bit of a light color, a little yellow with green. You can drop a little highlight on here, and we think we've about got to finish painting. The old clock on the wall says, Bob, you got to go. Got to go. So we'll... Hi, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me again today. Today I thought we'd do something that's a lot of fun, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Bring your two. So I'll get out the knife, and I'm going to use this same old brown color. Okay, pull that paint out very flat, just as flat as you can get it, and take your knife and cut across. See, it gives you that little roll of paint right out on the edge of your knife. Okay, let's go up to the canvas. Maybe there's a little, little bitty house that lives right there. And we just want some indications way back here in the distance. Little house, he lives there. Little barn, little shed, whatever. And... All we're doing here is just laying in the dark. We'll come back and put in a few little highlights and, and fix him all up, make him nice and pretty. Right now, you're just trying to get some dark on your canvas. Okay, good. Now, let's take a little, a bit of the titanium white, a little brown, make a color that's somewhat lighter than what we have on the canvas. And you don't want to mix this color dead. Add a little blue to it and gray it down. I'm going to use a small edge of the knife this time. Same way, a small edge, and it's just a little bit of paint right out there on that small edge of the knife. Good, okay? Now, let a little light just bounce and play right along there. Just like so. I don't want a lot of color on this, just enough so it stands out and it's lighter than the side. I want the side to be very dark. It's in shadow. The old shadow's got it. There we go. And maybe right along this edge here, a little light plays right through there. There. Good. Just to make that little edge stand out. There we go. Now, maybe there's some boards in there we just cut through. And I know somebody's saying, well, you got to have a door in there so you can get into the old shed. Well, okay. Give you a door around it. There we are. And then quick, we have a little building. Now we can just clean up his foots. Touch him. Bring in some grass right up around him. And maybe over here, right there, right there. I'm going to tell you what let's do. Let's build us. Let's build us a happy little barn that lives right there. We'll come this way now. And then let it drop over. Just sort of visualize these things in your mind. Put them on the canvas. Put them on the canvas. And these are far away. They're small, so we're not worried about tremendous detail. Fill this in, just like we did the other one. We need that dark color so the light will show. Little edge of the knife. Doo -doo. There. Pull some of this down. And all we're doing here is just trying to cover the canvas with dark color. Now, I'll take a little permanent red and Van Dyke brown. I'll just mix it together real quick here, like so. We'll put some shingles up here on this roof. Just touch. Start at the bottom and work up. This is just, just the way they put shingles on a roof, too. Start at the bottom, work up. So they overlap each other. And that'll give you the indication of a few little a few little shingles. A little highlight along the edge. And right along there. And down. Okay. Now, now then, once again we need to put a little highlight on the front here. And, 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 and 
The old barn here needs a door. Big door. This is where the cow had to go in. Let's move that out. A little bit of color around the edges. Okay, there we are. There. Now maybe this old farmer, maybe he's like me. I never have enough room. Let's give, let's give him a shed out here on his barn. He needs a, a little shed. Maybe this is where the chickens live. Chickens need a place to live, too. And we'll put a little board or two right there. There we go. A little bit more of this roof color. It was permanent red with a little Van Dyke brown. And just put some indications right there. Good. And that quick we get a, we have an indication of a happy little barn back here. And let's put some more dark. Now this, this part of the canvas down here is dry. I only put color on the top. Now we can begin going into a little bit of the titanium white here and there. And we'll put a little highlight here. Just let these little things happen. Wherever you think they should be. begin creating the lay of the land. Now, maybe up in here, we'll just do this, make it look like an old path. Went around through there, same color. This whole foreground will be done with just about the same, same colors all the way through it. A little highlight on that. And with a large brush, and very quickly, just drop in some happy little things here. All we're worried about now is just putting some paint on the canvas. A little bit over here. There we go. And just let him go. You want know, one thing we've mentioned over and over again. If you enjoy the show, if uh, call your PBS station or drop them a line. Let them know. They want to know what you like. If you want to see reruns, if you want to see these paintings again, once again, they need to know. And when they need some help, help them out. They, they bring you some fantastic programming, some beautiful shows about the animals and nature. And, and they need some help once in a while. Now that's just got the whole bottom covered. We can put in a little path. This is still just that brown color. There we go. Now we have a little path. Pushes everything. Need to put some blades on there. So let me take, mix up some more of that Van Dyke brown, permanent red, Prussian blue. Just mix it up. We need a good dark brown here. Now these are super little scenes to make on a white canvas so they're day scenes. Good. Okay, now we pick up that small roll of paint again. Always using that small roll of paint. Okay, let's go up here. Now, remember the blade's taller or wider at the top is at the bottom. So you touch and sort of go bloop like that, okay? And that's how we make our little blades. And let's do like that. Look at there. Look at there. Over here, there, and one here, touch, and sort of pull it around. Now, if you do these four first, then all you have to do is come back in here, and you can lay in all the rest of them, and they'll work out correctly. Isn't that sneaky? And you can make beautiful windmills. windmills. There you go. I lived in Nebraska for a long time and there was a lot of windmills there. Look at there. Look at there. Now the circle that you made up here, something has to connect all these blades. So you can cover up that line that you scratched by taking your knife, a little edge, see? And that just brings them all together. You, need, you gotta have a connector here to hold all these together or they fall off. Come right on around. 
Just like so. However many you want. Okay. Now then, I'm gonna put a, use some of that uh, red and brown, and let's put just a touch of highlight right here on the corner. Maybe a little more of the permanent red into it. A little brighter so it stands out and you can see it a little better. Okay, just, all you do is touch. Just touch, just so there's a little color on that edge and you can see it. Now, if you were doing this on a white canvas, you'd probably want a lot more color. There we go. Just to give you an idea. Now then, there usually is a couple of big blades that stick out here, and that's what the wind catches, and that, that guides it. So we just come right over the top here because these old windmills had to turn into the wind. So we'll put in these. And the old windmills that I've looked at usually have two of them on it. And they sort of go to the center. And we'll put a little tiny highlight on that. Oop, there we are. Look at that. Wow. Okay, then we need something to bring it all together here. And there's usually a cross like so. In there. Good. A little highlight on that too, so it stands out. You can see it. Now, there's the little thing where the chain goes. And a little platform up here. Now we need some legs to hold all this up. That platform's where the bird always comes and builds his little nest and he sits up there and he watches the farmer. And when the farmer feeds the chickens and stuff, he slips down there and gets him something to eat too. Same, same brown color. And we gotta give this old windmill a leg. Don't want him to fall over. Give him a leg. And this is closer to you, so prospectively, it's much bigger. There we go. And let's give him another leg here. There. See, we don't use any patterns, so nobody knows we make a mistake or not. Sneaky. There. Another leg right here. Got to have four foot so he'll fall over. Now, if you don't have windmills where you're at and you want to paint a windmill, there's a thousand books that have beautiful, beautiful pictures. And you can pick up one of those and, and look at it. And that gives us, gives us four foots. And usually in here, there's a little platform. So we'll just make a little platform and then bring this leg over the top of the platform. And we need some supports in here to hold all this together. Like so. Maybe, 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 maybe there's another one right here underneath the platform. Yeah. And we need we need some little steps so the, the old farmer can climb up there and shoot that bird off if he wants to that's living up there. Just drop him in. Now we can go back to our highlight color and let's just lay the tiniest little bit of highlight here and there just so this stands out a little better for you. Tiny little bit. Here, this sort of this sort of separates everything and makes it look a little better. A little touch right there. Okay, a little bit right on that. Ooh, nice. If you get one that's nice, don't touch it again. Leave it alone because it may never come out again. Now let's take let's take the liner brush. I'll use the liner brush right now. And to that paint thinner, to thin the paint, I'm going to go right into the same old brown color. Turn that brush, bring it to a nice sharp point. See, turn it. Bring it right up till it's nice and sharp. Liner brush has very long bristles. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, we need some support brackets in here, so we'll just come right down. There. This reminds me, 
the way the teacher used to grade my paper in school. I needed a lot of support brackets, I guess, because... Tell you what. Let's have... We're going to have a little scene. Maybe we want to have a little... I'm just going to scrape out a basic shape here. I'm going to have a little barn back here. It's just a nice place to have a little barn. Scrape out a basic shape with a knife. Just so you have an idea where you're going. But more important, it removes that loose excess paint. I'll go right into that brown color I made from the... Brown was made from the sap green. And... Lizard and crimson. See, think about the basic shape of the old barn. Got to have a place for the cow to go at night. He may get scared out here. Might be an old hoot owl out here that makes noises. And scared. Shoot, when I was a kid, I used to camp out in the, late at night, and the old owl would make a big old noise. I was ready to call my mother and go home. But as I got older, I had the opportunity to learn what, what those creatures were and why those noises were made. I tell you what. Before the series is over, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a big old owl. I like owls. I'm going to show you a great horned owl that I had the pleasure of meeting. I think we have some video with him on there. I'm just going to get him up here for you. Take a little bright red, a little of that brown we made, a little bit of white into it. Don't overmix it. See that color? It's not overmixed. Now we cut our little roll of paint off. All those little designs are still in the paint. Now we can go up here. Doop, doop and just begin putting some color in. I'm going to make that a little bit brighter, a little more white into it so it shows up for you. That's better. Now I'm just going to let the knife sort of bounce. I don't want this just to be solid. I like old buildings in my paintings, but it's up to you. If you want them to look newer, be a little more careful with them. I like it to look like about half of it's blowed away and it's about to fall down. The old farmer that lived out here, he didn't, he didn't take too good a care of it. He, he had some bad days. There. See there? Now over here, almost nothing. Almost nothing. Tell you what, we'll get a little more of that brown. This farmer is like me. He needs more room. Let's give him a shed out here. There. Give him a little shed. Put some sides on it. Back to our little roof color. See how easy it is? Wished it was that easy to actually build a shed. I, I used to be a carpenter years ago. My father was a carpenter, and he, and he taught me that trade. And I tell you what, it isn't that easy to make a shed on, on a barn. Now then, we can come right in here and just do a barnectomy. Sort of figure out where we think everything should live. Work on our perspective. Stay there. Now we need a door. We're going to have old cow living in there. We need a door. There it is. Now Bossy can get in and go out. We can take and make just the indication of a few old boards that live right along here. There, just by touching, come across a little bit of light color on the knife. Let's sort of outline that door a little bit so it stands out and you can see it better. But that's a pretty good looking old radar. We need a little path. We'll take a little of that brown and white. Let's just put a little path in here. There little path so so there's a way to get in and out just a little path comes right out a little highlight on it not much not much I'll keep it pretty dark and maybe in our world shoot if we got a cow here we need to con contain her somehow there we'll put a little fence right up here maybe the fence goes right about there Maybe it comes right up here. I don't know. Okay, if our light's coming from this direction and the old barn indicates it is, we'll highlight a little bit on that side of the fence. See there? Just a little highlight. I can take just the heel or the back of the knife and just cut right through there, either direction, and make the indication of some wire on there. It'll scratch through and just let a little canvas show. We'll put three strands of wire on our fence. We got a big cow in here. We don't want her getting out. Sometimes it's neat to take a little bit of, I use a little bright red. Put just a little top on those little devils. Because normally when you cut fence posts, I mean, 
cut the tree down to make a fence post, you paint the ends of it to keep it from deteriorating. There, so we did that. And you could take and just fill in a few little grassy areas to bring it all together. Put your stick and a twig here and there with a knife. Shoot, we got a finished painting. There, hope you try this one because I think you'll enjoy it and you'll find it to be a lot of fun. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless. Come back. Certainly glad you... And this is very dark. It'll look black on the palette. So take a little bit of white and then check it out and see if it's what you want. Maybe we'll add a little bit more crimson to that. I want a lavender color, but I want it to the blue side. Pull it out flat. Cut off our little roll of paint. Lives right out on the edge of the knife. Let's go up in here. Now you have to make your first major decision. Where does, where does your mountain live? Let's come right up in here. Maybe our mountain starts right here. And all you do is take the knife and firmly, you can probably hear how firm is it, firmly push in a basic shape. And the only thing we're interested in at this point is just the top up here. We could care less what's happening with the bottom. Don't worry about it at all. Don't worry about it at all. I said big mountain. I wasn't kidding, was I? This is, this is going to be a big mountain. Maybe it'll come all the way over here. Now we're scraping off all the excess paint. There. And scrape it hard. This old canvas is tough. You're, you're not going to hurt it. Don't worry about hurting it. Just really get in there and scrape it. Now we take a clean, dry, be sure it's dry, two inch brush, and I want to pull that out. That'll do two things. First of all, it'll make the mountain lighter at the base than it is at the top, which is exactly what we're looking for. Secondly, it removes excess paint. It makes the next layers much, much easier to apply. Much easier. If you have a lot of loose paint on there, then it's difficult to make the next layer stick on top of that. There we go. We just let it just blend right off into nothing over here. There we go. Now one thing that's very nice when you do your painting, this little bit of pink that's left down here at the bottom, if everything works just right, That'll look like mist. So try to save that. It can be your very good friend. There we go. Maybe it sort of looks like a natural place to... Maybe the light's coming from the left side today. So let's just take a little titanium white. Let's make a mountain that's very easy to make. We'll take a little white with a little, little touch of blue in it, but very little, just enough to cool it down a little. Maybe even a little bit of black into it also. There, it makes a nice bluish gray color. Ooh, that's nice. And don't over mix it, leave it sort of marble. And I've got the small knife, thought I'd use it today. But once again, our little roll of paint. And let's go up in here and begin making some decisions. Think about, think about where the light's coming through here and just zinging and playing and having a good time. And maybe it comes right along in here. There. Just begin applying all your little basic shapes. Just think if you were a sunbeam and you were zinging down the valley down through here, where would you hit? There. So this is a very simple way of making some nice mountains. There we go. This little knife, I like it because it sort of gets into all the little places here and you can make, you can make all these little doers. Just all kinds of little things. Wherever you want them. Once again, just think about where light would strike and lay it in. But there's not a lot of paint here. Not a lot of paint. There we go. See, and if you don't like one, you just rub it and it goes away. There. And down at the bottom here, I want it to just disappear. So here I'm applying quite a bit of pressure up on the top no pressure, but as you work down, I want it to disappear. So there I'm adding more and more pressure. So just sort of experiment a little and, and see what works well for you. Think about where these little, all these little shapes and highlights would live. There. And you can put as many or as few as you want on your mountain. There we are. In Alaska, there's a lot of mountains that look like this. 
and they're so beautiful. As I mentioned earlier, I'm sure God was having a good day when he made Alaska. There, maybe, maybe there's a little, little bump there. You can do that just by taking the basic shape of the knife and putting it in. Let it just sort of disappear back here. And then once again, more pressure down here. And you begin to see how that little pink area is showing through. And that's what's going to create that illusion of mist down at the base. You could do this with a large knife if you wanted to. It works just as well. I just sort of like this little one for things like this where you want a lot of detail. And you want to create shapes. You can paint entire paintings with these knives. There. Okay, see, and just sort of think about it. Think about it, let it go. There. More and more pressure down here. Mm. But see, it's, it's really very simple. It's a, it's a matter of angles when you're working on these mountains. That's really all it is. It's just a matter of angles. Maybe there's, look at that. See, maybe there's a little thing in, right there. Wherever you think they should live, that's exactly, exactly where they should live. Right. Maybe over in here. A few more little, little doors in there. Just wherever. Wherever. And you can put all kinds of little details. It's up to you. Up to you. Painting is as individual as painters are. There's as many different ways to paint the same scene as there are painters, as many different ideas. It's really an individual thing. See, you can add a little dark here and there, not a great deal, just enough to, just enough to give some little indications of some shadows in those deep areas. Don't want a lot in there, though. Just rub it a little, and you can just blend it together, just using the edge of the knife. There. Now, if you've never painted mountains before, this is one of the easiest ways that I've ever came up with to make to make very effective mountains. Very easy. Let a little bit of that light color just pull back here and there. And here I'm using the small edge of the knife. Use both edges. That's why that's why it has two edges on it. That way you can create all kinds of effects. All right. And that's basically all I'm looking for. I want that mountain to be far away and, and distant. Let's have another one right here. Shoot, that works so nice. Or let me show you something here. You could take the brush. If you wanted to create more mist in this area, you could take a brush and tap it and then gently lift it. But always follow those angles that you've created. There. Okay, now then, same color. Come right over on this side over here. Let's have us a nice mountain. It lives right there. Okay, let it come right on down. Wherever, wherever. Maybe it comes down here. Maybe, bloop, there's a big drop off right there. Like so. Just sort of let your imagination go. Mountains grow in every kind of shape. Just whatever, whatever happens that day, let it happen. Maybe it comes right on down in there somewhere. Now, if you want this mountain to look closer, it needs to be darker. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little more paint on this one than I did that one back here. So I want it to be darker, stronger. There we go. Maybe it'll go like that. And there, all we're trying to do is just put color on the canvas. You could. You could put this on with your shoe, it doesn't matter. Just, just apply the color. Now we'll take this brush and begin blending it out. Grab it and blend it. There. Think about the, the angle though that you want it to flow, how you want it to flow. And just by using brush strokes, you can create all kinds of little things happening in here. There we go. But by using this angle it gives you that impression that the mountain, the lay of this land on this mountain flows in that direction. 
And that's exactly what we're looking for today. I want those mountains to look like they just flow right down the side there. Okay. Good. Very gently, very gently. Just bring it all together. Okay, shoot, let's wash the brush. And we wash our brush with odorless thinner. Shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Tell you what, let's do. Maybe take a little of that titanium white that I had here. Maybe right in here. Let's just lay a little white. That has the least, least little touch of the thalo blue in it. Maybe there's a little... A little snow or a glacier or something that lives in there. There. But I don't want it to be pure white all over. I want it to be like shadows. I don't want it to be too bright. Put this in first. Then we can add a few highlights here and there if we want them. There we go. And then we could take a little bit of the pure white and just highlight this. Let it just bounce. Very gentle, barely caressing the canvas. Allow the paint to break. It'll create all those little things in there. There. And just let it follow those angles, like so. Okay, we can take our large brush in and build. I'm, I'm sort of hung up on mountains, so let's build a let's build a fantastic little mountain here. I'm going to take some phthalo blue, some Van Dyke brown, and, and we'll use a little bit of alizarin crimson. So we have phthalo blue, Van Dyke brown, and a small amount of alizarin crimson. Now the more crimson you put in, the more purplish your mountain's going to be. Pull this paint out very flat and just cut across it so you have a small roll of paint. There, right out on the edge of the knife. Let's go up here. Now you have to make you have to make some decisions in your world. Where is the mountain going to live? I'm going to have my mountain live right there. And you're really, really pushing this paint into the canvas. Really push it into the canvas. And anywhere you decide there's a bump or a hill or big stone, put it in. Put it in. This, this, is, this is where you exert your fantastic power. It's right here. Now, see, you scrape off the excess paint, and the canvas will keep what it wants. The value is in the material. Okay, now, I want to remove more excess paint and blend this out. Because the canvas is wet, this paint will move, it'll slide, you move it all over the canvas. There we go, just pull it out. And when you're painting mountains, always remember, if you can see the entire mountain, it's always more distinct at the top than it is at the bottom. At the bottom of the mountain, we have mist, and now we have pollution. All these things have a tendency to break up and diffuse light. And you can see from that, the top of the mountain is very dark. It's very strong. And down at the bottom of the mountain, then it's very soft and quiet and peaceful. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, now I'm going to go right into my titanium white. We'll put a little snow on this mountain. A little bit of snow. Pull it out very flat. Very, very flat, just like we did before. And then cut across it. Get that small roll of paint. Okay, let's go up here. Now, you have to make some decisions. Which one of these peaks is the farthest away? The one that's farthest away? Let's do it first. There, just follow right down the mountain. No pressure. Absolutely no pressure. No pressure. All that's touching the canvas is a little roll of paint that's on the knife. And then you begin thinking about where the light would strike as it just comes through here. Now some people find it easier to put the shadow on first. Personally, I like to, I like to put the highlight on first and then put the shadow in later. But either way, it works for you. There are no set firm rules in painting. You find what works for you, and that's what you do. There we go. And you can bring this down to wherever you want. 
you can end up covering your whole canvas with mountains, which is a super way to practice. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue and titanium white, and we'll mix that together. And to that, I'm gonna add a small amount of Van Dyke brown. The brown is there just to dull it down. And I'm not worried about over-mixing that. Just leave that paint marbled. Okay, and once again, we'll take that little roll of paint. Let's go up here. And we'll go in the opposite direction. The opposing direction, whatever you want to call it. And put in some shadows. And every shadow needs his own little private highlight, or he won't play. He'll just disappear on you. Look at that, look at that. I've painted for over 20 years, and it, it still excites me to see these things happen. It's unbelievable. I was a traditional painter for many years, and I suffered, and oh my gosh, would spend weeks and weeks and weeks on a painting. And when I got finished, I had turned it to mud, or I was, I was so tired of looking at it, I didn't want to paint on it anymore. And this, this offers you unlimited freedom. Unlimited freedom. And that's what we're all looking for. A little bit of highlight right there. Now, let's just sort of bring these together. Maybe it comes from right here, and just let it, just let it sort of work together. I guess so. Come right down. Like that. And you can keep adding just wherever you think there should be a almighty peak. That's where it should be. There. And on this series, we're gonna try to I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in a couple of friends. I think I'll bring in a couple of friends and let them show you some fantastic things that can be done. The more people that you see that can do this the more you'll understand it, that you can do it too. There's no big secret to it. Anybody can do it if they're willing to practice a little bit. Now then, maybe there's some stones back here. So let's take some burnt umber, and I'll use yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and burnt umber. Put a little titanium white in there too. What the heck? That'll be our highlight color. And then we can start with just straight Van Dyke Brown and put in our base color. We'll just drop in some happy little things. Do -do 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 there you go. Just let them happen. And painting, painting should make you happy. Should bring a song to your heart. Make you appreciate life, all the beautiful things that are happening around you. Take time to, take time to look at nature, to appreciate it. Sometimes we, we look at it every day and we we have a tendency to overlook it. Okay, this is that highlight color. It's yellow ochre, burn umber, and a little titanium white. See, and you get all these things because you don't overmix your paint. Let it, let it happen. Don't fight it. That's what it's all about. Just relax, be calm, peaceful, and let it go. Okay, now then, we'll take and let's just drop in some, some little grassy areas coming right down through there, wherever you want them. Over here, a few. And that sort of just ties it all together. And now I'll use a little of the Magic White, very thin, and we'll drop in a happy little water line back here. Just like so. And the beauty of this, the beauty of this technique is right in the middle of it, you can you can change your mind, you can redesign paintings, because this is your world, and you can do anything that you want to do in this world. Anything that you want to do. Wash that brush real quick. Okay, a little of the magic white, a little titanium white. Maybe, who knows, who knows. Maybe back here, there's just a little indication. There it is, look at that. Look at that, a little stream lives right there. And just, it drops right in here and puts some water right into our painting. Right into our painting. A few little happy grassy things. And that easy. That easy, you can just put you a happy little stream. Little foam here where it's coming out into this river or lake or pond or whatever you want it to be. Okay, now we can, we can get over here into the foreground and, and really have some fun most fantastic and easy paintings you've ever seen and they're very effective they'll make you happy 
Your, fr your friends will never believe you've done them. Okay, now, with just a clean knife here, we can drop in a few little sticks and twigs, that easy, wherever you think they should be. Just drop them in. And I think we have a finished painting. And with that, we'll stop here. I'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting. I look forward to seeing you next week. Goodbye. Shoot, let's take some Prussian blue, some black, a lizard crimson, Van Dyke brown. Just mix them together. Mix them together. Make a nice dark, dark color. Huh? Put a little more crimson in it. There. Okay. Now, the first thing we have to do is decide where our mountain lives. We'll cut off a little roll of paint. There you can see it. And let's go. Maybe there's a mountain. It's right here. Now, the only thing we're concerned about is the nice outside edge. We could care less what's going on anywhere except the top, right in there. So don't worry about it. Don't let a mountain scare you. They're really one of the neatest things to paint in this technique. And still probably the most popular thing we paint. All right, I'm gonna take a two inch brush, grab it and pull. Because there's liquid white and liquid black underneath, the color will move. It'll, it'll allow you to blend the color right on the canvas. And it also removes excess paint. So the next layer will be much easier to apply. And we'll just let it fade right into that, like it. See there? That's all there is to it. Let's take white. White. Uh, grab some midnight black a little bit and put in there. I want to I want to gray this a little bit. So we'll put a little bit of maybe even a touch of bright red. It's our world. We can do anything that we want here. Pull the paint out as flat as you can get it. Once again, our little roll of paint. Let's go up here. Now then, just decide where the light's coming from. And if you're right-handed, you'll find it's usually easier to have it coming from the right side. If you're left-handed, try both ways. Left-handed people have been forced to do right-handed things their entire life. So some left-handed people will find it easier to highlight on the right, some on the left. It's a very individual thing. There we are. Little, little dooters in there. Now, I'm just going to pull a little bit of that color down to make the shadows. I don't want distinct shadows in here. Just going to pull a little bit of it down. Maybe right over in here, there's a little, little bump right there. See there? You decide. You decide where all these little things live. There. And you can just play some darks and lights back and forth to create all kinds of illusions. There you go. Okay. Now, as I say, it's your world. You decide where you want all these little rascals to live. Okay, we'll take a clean, be sure it's good and dry. Clean, dry, two inch brush. If it's not dry, it will dilute the paint and make it too soft. So be sure it's dry. Follow the basic angles in these mountains and tap. All we're doing is trying to take out the little tap marks and blend everything together. And then lift upward. See, smooths it right out. And it creates that illusion of mist right down at the base. Sometimes that's a little too straight for me. I wanna put a little duder right there, see? That's all you got to do. You can change your mind. And it just makes it a little more interesting. Ready to get brave? <laughs> Let's do it. That little mountain went so well. <laughs> this really is your bravery test. Let's have a big mountain that lives right up here. Right up here. Maybe there's a little bump right there. Don't be afraid of these mountains. Shoot. Once you make friends with this knife, they're one of the neatest things you can make. And you do need to make friends with a knife. It takes a little time. It takes a little time. It's like anything else when you do it at first. It's a little foreign to you. It takes a little while to make friends with it. All right. But very quickly, with a little practice, you'll be doing things with a knife you just you can't believe. Okay. There. 
here in the studio. We just had a couple of, of my young friends come in. And they were only about, oh, one was six and one was younger than that. And they brought me some paintings that they're doing. It, it's unreal what young people can do with this, too. They were fantastic. Okay, now, we're just going to blend that. Just let it go right on off. Whew. Well, we said we was going to make a big mountain. We weren't kidding. Once again, our little roll of paint. Touch, no pressure. Whew. Absolutely no pressure. Just let the paint glide right along on there. Just let it glide. You want it to break. In other words, have all these holes in it. That's what makes it look interesting. There maybe there's a little light zinging right on there. Wherever. It's up to you. Painting gives you freedom. It gives you creative freedom. Let's take some Prussian blue with some white. A little black in it, just to dull it down some. There. We'll make us a little shadow color. Small roll of paint. And once again, just let it just glide right along there. I can. Maybe out here, it's a little highlight right in there. We just sort of let them come together. Just let your imagination take you to any place that you want to go. Look at there. See there? But just let it go. Let it just slide right down through there. No pressure. I know you get tired of hearing that, but it's so important. And it's probably the single biggest mistake that people make, is they apply too much pressure. No pressure. I want to put some little bumps and stuff in here. And we can do that. Put them anywhere that we want them. There. Just some little, maybe there's a little do it lives over here. Mountains grow every which way. Just let them grow. Let them go. Wherever they want to be. There. Just a few little things down in here. Take a little more of our shadow color. There. See? But that creates the illusion of all kinds of little duders. And when you're at home and have unlimited time, shoot, you can do much better than this. Much, much better. I know you can. There we are. Wherever. Wherever. Okay. Something about like that. Now, let's get... Okay. Shoot. We have a happy little sky. Let's devote most of our time today into doing a fantastic mountain. I get so many letters from people, and mountains are just about the favorite thing going right now. So let's try that. Let's try that. We'll take a little phthalo blue, a little lizard and crimson, and mix it together. And this is very dark. It'll look black on the palette. So take a little bit of white and then check it out and see if it's what you want. Maybe we'll add a little bit more crimson to that. I want a lavender color, but I want it to the blue side. Pull it out flat. Cut off our little roll of paint. Lives right out on the edge of the knife. Let's go up in here. Now you have to make your first major decision. Where does where does your mountain live? Let's come right up in here. Maybe our mountain starts right here. And all you do is take the knife and firmly, you can probably hear how firm is it, firmly push in a basic shape. And the only thing we're interested in at this point is just the top up here. We could care less what's happening with the bottom. Don't worry about it at all. Don't worry about it at all. I said big mountain. I wasn't kidding, was I? This is, this is going to be a big mountain. Maybe it'll come all the way over here. Now we're scraping off all the excess paint. There. And scrape it hard. This old canvas is tough. You're, you're not going to hurt it. Don't worry about hurting it. Just really get in there and scrape it. Now we take a clean, dry, be sure it's dry, two inch brush, and I want to pull that out. That'll do two things. First of all, it'll make the mountain lighter at the base than it is at the top, which is exactly what we're looking for. Secondly, it removes excess paint. It makes the next layers much, much easier to apply. Much easier. You have a lot of 
loose paint on there, then it's difficult to make the next layer stick on top of that. There we go. We just let it just blend right off into nothing over here. There we go. Now one thing that's very nice when you do your painting, this little bit of pink that's left down here at the bottom, if everything works just right, that'll look like mist. So try to save that. It can be your very good friend. There we go. Maybe it sort of looks like a natural place to... Maybe the light's coming from the left side today. So let's just take a little titanium white. Let's make a mountain that's very easy to make. We'll take a little white with a little, little touch of blue in it, but very little, just enough to cool it down a little. Maybe even a little bit of black into it also. There, it makes a nice bluish gray color. Ooh, that's nice. And don't over mix it. Leave it sort of marble. I've got the small knife. I thought I'd use it today. But once again, our little roll of paint. And let's go up in here and begin making some decisions. Think about, think about where the light's coming through here and just zinging and playing and having a good time. And maybe it comes right along in here. There. Just begin applying all your little basic shapes. Just think if you were sunbeam and you were zinging down the valley down through here, where would you hit? There. So this is a very simple way of making some nice mountains. There we go. This little knife, I like it because it sort of gets into all the little places here and you can make you can make all these little doers. Just all kinds of little things. Wherever you want them. Once again, just think about where light would strike and lay it in. But there's not a lot of paint here. Not a lot of paint. There we go. See, and if you don't like one, you just rub it and it goes away. There. And down at the bottom here, I want it to just disappear. So here I'm applying quite a bit of pressure up on the top. No pressure, but as you work down, I want it to disappear. So there I'm adding more and more pressure. So just sort of experiment a little and, and see what works well for you. Think about where these little, all these little shapes and highlights would live. There. And you can put as many or as few as you want on your mountain. There we are. In Alaska, there's a lot of mountains that look like this. And they're so beautiful. As I mentioned earlier, I'm sure God was having a good day when he made Alaska. There, maybe, maybe there's a little, little bump there. You can do that just by taking the basic shape of the knife, putting it in. Let it just sort of disappear back here. And then once again, more pressure down here. And you begin to see how that little pink area is showing through. And that's what's going to Create that illusion of mist down at the base. You could do this with a large knife if you wanted to. It works just as well. I just sort of like this little one for things like this where you want a lot of detail and you want to create shapes. You can paint entire paintings with these knives. There. Okay, see, and just sort of think about it. Think about it, let it go. There. More and more pressure down here. Mm. But see, it's it's really very simple. It's a it's a matter of angles when you're working on these mountains. That's really all it is. It's just a matter of angles. Maybe there's look at that. See, maybe there's a little thing right there. Wherever you think they should live, that's exactly exactly where they should live. Right. Maybe over in here, a few more little little doers in there. Just wherever, wherever. And you can put all kinds of little details. It's up to you, up to you. Painting is as individual as painters are. There's as many different ways to paint the same scene as there are painters, as many different ideas. It's really an individual thing. So you can add a little dark here and there, not a great deal, just enough to just enough to give some little indications of some shadows in those deep areas. Don't want a lot.
hot in there, y'all. Okay, maybe right in here. Just rub it a little, and you can just blend it together, just using the edge of the knife. There. Now, if you've never painted mountains before, this is one of the easiest ways that I've ever came up with to make to make very effective mountains. Very easy. Let a little bit of that light color just pull back here and there. And here I'm using the small edge of the knife. Use both edges. That's why that's why it has two edges on it. And that way you can create all kinds of effects. All right. And that's basically all I'm looking for. I want that mountain to be far away and, and distant. Let's have another one right here. Shoot, that works so nice. Or let me show you something here. You could take the brush. If you wanted to create more mist in this area, you could take a brush and tap it and then gently lift it. But always follow those angles that you've created. There. Okay, now the same color. Come right over on this side over here. Let's have us a nice mountain. It lives right there. Okay, let it come right on down. Wherever, wherever. Maybe it comes down here. Maybe, bloop, there's a big drop off right there. Like so. Just sort of let your imagination go. Mountains grow in every kind of shape. Just whatever, whatever happens that day, let it happen. There. Maybe it comes right on down in there somewhere. Now, if you want this mountain to look closer, it needs to be darker. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little more paint on this one than I did that one back here. So I want it to be darker stronger. There we go. Maybe it'll go like that. And there, all we're trying to do is just put color on the canvas. You could, you could put this on with your shoe. It doesn't matter. Just, just apply the color. Now we'll take this brush and begin blending it out. Grab it and blend it. There. Think about the the angle, though, that you want it to flow, how you want it to flow. And just by using brush strokes, you can create all kinds of little things happening in here. There we go. But by using this angle, it gives you that impression that the mountain, the lay of this land on this mountain flows in that direction. That's exactly what we're looking for today. I want those mountains to look like they just Low right down the side there. Okay. Good. Very gently, very gently. Just bring it all together. Okay, shoot, let's wash the brush. And we wash our brush with odorless thinner. Shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Tell you what, let's do. Maybe take a little of that titanium white that I had here. Maybe right in here. Let's just lay a little white. That has the least, least little touch of the phthalo blue in it. Maybe there's a little, maybe a little snow or a glacier or something that lives in there. There. But I don't want it to be pure white all over. I want it to be like shadows. I don't want it to be too bright. Put this in first, then we can add a few highlights here and there if we want them. There we go. And then we could take a little bit of the pure white and just highlight this. Let it just bounce. Very gentle. Barely caressing the canvas. Allow the paint to break. It'll create all those little things in there. Just let it follow those angles, like so. Okay, we can now then take the knife. We use a little Van Dyke brown. Maybe there's a little bank in here. Just bring it wherever you want it here, like so. Here and there, maybe it runs up into there. Okay, and then we take the fan brush with some of those same yellows and etc pop in a few little grassy areas right at the bank. Right there at the bank. 
if you want to reflect a little of that in there, grab the least little amount of it and pull it down. Least little amount. Not much, not much. And very lightly, once again, just go across like so. It will have a tiniest little bit of water. I don't want much in this. I want to keep it dark as possible. A little liquid white on the knife and drop it in. There. As I say, we travel all over the country and get to talk to people and do shows for PBS. And if we ever get to your area, shoot, come and see us. I'd love to have the opportunity to meet you and talk with you and see photographs of what you're painting. And so, if we do get to your area, stop in and see us. There. Let's have a little bush lives on this side of the water. Maybe he lives right there. Right there. Create a little reflection, <laughs> like that. Go across. A little bit of highlight on this bush. The yellows and the greens. Like that. And that quick you can create a little bush. Put a little bit of land under it. And we're about to finish painting. There we go. I think we'll put a little water line under there. Call this one finished. A few little sticks and twigs. That's all there is to it. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope to see you soon also. From all as crazy as it sounds, a lot of times I'll start with just a blank canvas and sit and stare at it and begin visualizing things. And as you put each little thing on there, step back and look at it and think about it. And you learn to compose that way. There, tell you what, let's have some fun. I'm gonna take some black, some black, alizarin crimson mixed together. Just black and alizarin. And that'll make a nice lavender-like color. There. Pull it out very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across and get that little roll of paint and it should live right at the edge of your blade. I mean, it's right out on the very edge, okay? Maybe in our world, come right up in here. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a little, way back in there, there's a little hill or a little mountain that lives way back right there. And all we're looking for is a nice shape on top. There, we're really not concerned with the bottom of it at this point. Something maybe like it. This one's gonna be far, far away. So we're not looking for a lot of detail. We're looking for a basic shape, and that's all. And underneath it, since this is water, there's gonna be some reflections. So you can just reflect it right into the water while you have that color on your knife. Okay. And I'm really, as you can probably hear, I'm rubbing quite hard with a knife. I wanna literally push this paint right into the fabric. Just as my son Steve says, just sort of mush it in there. That's probably not a word, but everybody understands what, he's, what he means when he says that. Just mush it in there. All right. Now then, with the old two-inch brush here, just sort of blend that out. Just blend it out. And you can actually make it look like highlights and shadows just by using brush strokes in here. There we go. There. Brush strokes, that's the name of our newsletter. There. We do a lot of interesting articles in that. I, mean, I really enjoy writing for it. Now then, where our reflections are, just pull that straight down. Straight down. See there? And instantly, we have reflections. Go across, and that's all there is to it. Reflections used to drive me crazy when I was a traditional painter. And in this style of painting, it may very well be one of the easiest things that we do. And you can take a little of the dark paint, and here and there, maybe just put in the indication of some little shadows and highlights without really doing a great deal. If you put too much detail in here, it's going to destroy that illusion of distance in your painting. And we want it to look like it's far, far away back here. But just rub it with a knife. There. See? And you can just let that just blend anywhere that you want it. And it gives the indication without without a lot of detail. Sometimes it's neat to take just a little touch of the dark sienna, white, not much white, and right down here at the bottom, just really scrub in a little bit of that. Make it look like there's a little dirt down at the bottom of it. 
But that's up to you. You may not want to put that in. Strictly up to you. I sort of like it. It changes the flavor a little bit. There. All right. Now we can take a little bit of the liquid white and put it out here on the palette and pull it out very flat. Just as flat as we can get it. And then cut across just like that. And we can go up in here and just begin cutting in the indication of a little water line. There we go. Now, if you make these and they're too thick or you don't like them, if you just take the knife and rub them, just rub them very hard, they'll just basically disappear right into the color that's on the canvas. And I'll tell you little things like that in case you ever make it. A lot of people get worried that they've made a mistake. That's not a mistake. All you do is just, just rub it a little more. Don't worry about it. There's nothing to fear on this piece of canvas. The absolute worst thing can happen is that you enjoy it. It's fun. Painting should be fun. If you painting doesn't make you happy, then you're doing the wrong thing. And if you're fortunate enough, as I have been, to take something that you love as much as this and learn how to do it for a living and be fortunate enough to be successful at it, my God, the other. There. Okay, something about like so for right now. Yeah, and then we can take our liquid white. I'll put a least little touch of, we'll use a little blue, not much blue, tiniest little bit of Prussian blue and black. I want a gray color. Maybe, I'll tell you what, a little dark sand in there. Too. Oh, that's nice. That's what I'm looking for. Tiniest little bit of color on there. And we'll just make the indication of land using nothing but that. Allow it to pick up some of that color that's already on the canvas and just let them blend together. And it's a very simple way of making a nice little area that looks like land without doing a whole bunch. And with a clean knife, you can just take and scrape in some little trunks and sticks and stems and just all kinds of little things that live in the woods. There they are. Something like so, wherever you want them. And then, tell you what, I'm going to take a little bit of the liquid clear. Get a little liquid clear to that. I'm going to add titanium white and midnight black. I want to make a nice thin, that's the key word, thin gray color. But it's very thin. Okay, let me lay that up there. Clean off the old knife. Now, today let's use, let's use a filbert brush. Let's take a little Van Dyke Brown and just using the side of the knife, you can drop in a nice little trunk that easy. That easy. Firm up the other side. He needs a friend. <laughs> you know me. I'm fanatical about people having friends and even trees need a friend. And painting has allowed me to meet so many people and make so many friends. That's probably the most rewarding part of this whole thing, is all the friends that we've made traveling all over the country and people watching the shows. All right, let's take a little white, a little dark sienna, not much, pull it out flat. I'm gonna cut off a little roll of paint. Now I'm gonna to touch and just give it a little, little round pull. And let me exaggerate, I'm going Very, very gently. There, we'll do the other one. Something like that. And just let it go right on up. Okay, let me go back to our brush that, that has the, uh, yeah, has some nice grassy colors on it. We were working on the other side. And let's put some highlights on this tree. This would be a fantastic tree for one of my little creatures to live in. I gotta show you one of my creatures. Here recently, my son Steve, who I'm just hang every which way and change the flavor of the paint, the color, every so often. Then you can just put all kinds of little things in there and put as many or as few as you want in your world. 
sometimes. It's fun. Watch here. We'll take a little brown, a little Van Dyke, a little dark sand mixed together. Do something like this. Then we'll come back with a little touch of the brown and white. Barely grazing. Just let it graze. See? And you can just, we'll turn it into a nice little path that comes through there. Back to our brush. It has the greens and stuff on it. We come back and we tap in some little grassy areas that live right down here at the bottom of these bushes. Just tapping. Once again, change your flavor every so often. You can add at least a little touch of titanium white. That'll brighten it up. There. And if you have trouble making this stick, add the least little touch of liquid white or paint thinner. If you don't want to change the color, use paint thinner, but very, very little of it. I can't say that enough. Very little of it. Work in layers, just like you did with the bushes. Other side, we'll put some over here. There we go. All kinds of little things. If you do this in your living room, you can redecorate your living room in a matter of minutes, so be very careful. Learn to control it. Have you a box you can shake your brush in, and, and that way you don't have to worry about covering everything. <clears throat> okay, let's take a little bit of brown and blue, a little touch of alizarin crimson, and some white. There we go. And don't mix your paint dead. Mix it marbly and leave it alone. Okay, now let's do, since we're going to do McKinley today, let's do the basic shape here. Kenley comes down like so, has another peak running right off through here. I got just a little more rounded. There. And we let this side drop right down and over. All you're looking for here is the basic outline, the basic shape of this mountain. You're not worried at all what happens in here. Okay. Take the big brush and we'll pull that down. This takes off the excess paint and makes the next layer stick better. And also when you're doing mountains, if you can see the entire mountain, the top of the mountain is always more distinct than the bottom. The bottom of the mountain we have mist and now we have pollution. We have a multitude of things that, that break up and diffuse light. We'll put some snow on that old mighty mountain. Pull that paint out real flat. Just pull it out and get us a little roll of paint. And we'll just lay this on and let it travel right on down. And you want the paint to break like this to make all the little things that happen in there. The little shadows, the light and dark areas. And there's a little bump that comes out right there. And works his way down. And over here, let this drop. Just like so. There we go. Now for the shadow color, we'll use a little Prussian blue and white. And once again, don't mix it dead. You want it to, to be sort of marbledy. Okay, now we'll start with the shadows. And we'll just lay these in here. We want to bring these two areas here together. So we just sort of work it back and forth and let it come, there you go. Let it just come together. And maybe this shadow comes right down through here. Every highlight needs its own private shadow. So you put a little shadow right there. And see how that protrudes that up? Makes it just jump right out at you. Little ridges here and there. All kind of little things happening in this mountain. And we need a shadow back here behind this almighty peak. There it is. 
Just let him go. Okay, and we want a peak. It comes right up through here and just begins working its way back down. through here and we can bring these together a few little shadows in here just here and there okay and as we said we want this to be more distinct at the top than the bottom, so we're going to fuse the bottom of it, and only the bottom. And here we're just tapping the canvas. We're trying not to destroy, only to fuse. And this is where you really depend on a firm paint. If you have a loose, oily, thin paint, you become a mud mixer here. So when you try this at home, if you find that you're making a lot of mud, check your paint. It should be very, very firm. Squeeze that tube, it should stand up maybe about three quarters of an inch above the tube. Then you have a nice firm paint. Okay, I'm gonna make the same color and make it darker. Blue, brown, and a lizard added to it. Because I want this mountain to be in front. This is a beautiful study of how to make one mountain look very, very big. We'll put some little smaller mountains here in the foreground. Here. And we'll take the big brush and pull that out. Son of a gun. Just comes right out. That's the beauty of painting wet on wet. You can move paint on the canvas. And we'll put some little happy little snow here. Just let that run. There we go. Okay. Our light is still coming from the same direction here, so don't let that fool you. shadows here. Let's push that one into the background. Just come right on through and that'll push him back. Scary to have this much power that you can move mountains. this around and bring these two right together. Just make a nice little ridge out of that. Okay. Now we've got an almighty mountain. Okay, delicate touch again. Very, very light. Just enough to, to move it a little bit on the wet canvas. And we'll put some land out here so these bushes have a place to sit. Don't want them to fall off in the river here. So we'll give him something to set on here. There we go. This is straight Van Dyke brown. And on to that, we'll take a little brown and white and give him just a little touch of highlight. Make him look like little stones and rocks playing through here. Let's put a few 